Sayori Hi, whispered, guys. her voice trembling slightly. To join the Patreon where Natsuki you will get some nodded, benefits as her expression well as serious. That will not be uploaded I trust your instincts, Hikari. We should keep an eye on MC and see if anything unusual happens, she replied in a hushed tone. Alastor looks at the group as he then says, So, what weapons did you bring to the party, may I ask? His eyes scan each member, curious about their armaments. Natsuki confidently adjusts the strap of her raven bow. I brought this, she says, a hint of pride in her voice. Hikari steps forward, his hand resting on the hilt of the blazing sun sword at his side. I have the sun sword, he states, his gaze steady. Monica steps up next, her expression serious as she draws a slender rapier from its sheath. This is my weapon, she declares, its blade catching the light in a glint of steel. Yuri nods, her gaze flickering to the glowing entity hovering beside her. I have my light essence, she explains calmly, her tone measured. Sayori holds up her fox-shaped pendant with a smile. And I brought Sunny, she says cheerfully, scratching the animal behind its ears. Alastor nods, taking in their responses. Impressive arsenal, he remarks. Let's make good use of them in the tournament. These are my weapons, twin fangs, MC declares, presenting two short swords one black and one white. He looks around at the group, seeking their opinion. What do you guys think? I mean, Sayori sees me practice with them every day. Okay are we done showing out weapon our people are looking at us? Hikari says to everyone. We should get moving already the tournament is going to start. With a collective nod, the group agrees to move on, eager to begin the tournament. They head towards the entrance of the arena, anticipation building with each step. As they enter the bustling venue, the energy is palpable, with teams from various schools milling about, preparing for the competition ahead. The Doki Doki Club, along with Alastor, take their places among the competitors, ready to showcase their skills and strategies in the upcoming matches. Chapter 19 As the Doki Doki Club members and their allies made their way to the tournament grounds, the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. Excited murmurs filled the air as students from various schools gathered for the competition. All right, everyone, let's focus on the task at hand, Monica said, her voice calm but determined. We're here to show what we're capable of and represent our school with pride. Yeah, let's give it our all. Sayori exclaimed, her usual cheerful demeanor shining through. The group found their designated area among the teams, each member mentally preparing themselves for the challenges ahead. So, what's the first event? Natsuki asked, eager to get started. It looks like it's the team relay race, Hikari replied, checking the schedule. We'll need to strategize and coordinate our efforts to come out on top. As they waited for their turn, the team observed the other participants, sizing up the competition and noting their strengths and weaknesses. We'll need to stay focused and work together, MC said, his eyes scanning the field. Communication will be key. The announcer's voice echoed across the grounds, signaling the start of the relay race. The Doki Doki Club members and their allies sprang into action, each member poised and ready to give their best. The race began, with teams dashing off one after another, the excitement palpable in the air. The Doki Doki Club's team, consisting of Hikari, Natsuki, MC, Sayori, Yuri, Alastor, and Monika, took their positions, determined to showcase their abilities. Hikari led the team off with a burst of speed, his agility and athleticism propelling him forward. Natsuki followed suit, her determination driving her to push herself to the limit. As Hikari handed off the baton to MC, the crowd erupted into cheers, energizing the team even more. MC's swift movements and strategic maneuvers helped maintain their lead, setting a strong pace for the rest of the race. Sayori took the baton next, her nimbleness and agility allowing her to navigate the obstacles with ease. Yuri followed, her focus unwavering as she powered through the course, her magical abilities proving to be a valuable asset. Alastor and Monica brought up the rear, their teamwork and coordination ensuring a seamless transition as they approached the final stretch of the race. With a final burst of speed, the team crossed the finish line in victory, their efforts rewarded with cheers and applause from the crowd. They exchanged congratulatory smiles, proud of their accomplishment. Well done, everyone! Monica exclaimed, her eyes shining with pride. 
That was an incredible team effort. Yeah, we did it. Sayori cheered, her excitement contagious as they basked in their success. As they celebrated their victory, the team knew that more challenges awaited them in the tournament, but they were ready to face them head-on, united as a formidable force. As then the big board said, now that we have done our starting up I say everyone go and wear your official sport uniform. The announcer said. After all having a sport tournament in school uniform is a nightmare. The team headed to the designated area to change into their official sport uniforms, eager to represent their school in style. As they donned their uniforms, excitement buzzed through the air, anticipation building for the next event. Hikari adjusted his uniform, feeling a sense of pride as he prepared to showcase his skills once again. Natsuki double-checked her gear, a determined glint in her eyes as she mentally prepared for the challenges ahead. MC straightened his uniform, a confident smile playing on his lips as he looked forward to demonstrating his abilities on the field. Sayori twirled in her uniform, her enthusiasm infectious as she encouraged her teammates to give it their all. Yuri smoothed down her uniform, a calm resolve in her demeanor as she focused on the tasks ahead. Alastair and Monica exchanged nods, their determination evident as they prepared to face whatever challenges awaited them. With their uniforms in place and their spirits high, the team was ready to continue their journey through the tournament, united in their goal to emerge victorious. The team suited up in their sleek, all-black bodysuits, the fabric snugly contouring to their bodies for maximum mobility. Elbow and knee pads provided added protection, ensuring they could perform at their best without fear of injury. Their school emblem proudly displayed on the back of their uniforms, a symbol of unity and pride as they represented their institution on the field. With their gear secured and their determination unwavering, they were prepared to face whatever challenges awaited them in the tournament ahead. Dose anyone else fell too tight. Yuri says. It hugs my chest of well too much. The uniform seems to be hugging and showing up her curves very well. Yuri's comment about the tightness of the uniform draws a few chuckles from the team, but she brings up a valid point about the snug fit. As the team adjusts to the snugness of their uniforms, they make their way to the designated area for their first match, exchanging nervous glances and excited chatter along the way. I hope everyone is ready. As team leader it is my Joe. As he was cut off. Who made you team leader? I am better for that. Oh really? Wanna try me? As they both started to argue as the rest of the, the group just looked at them. The rest of the group exchanged uneasy glances as Hikari and Monika's argument escalated. Natsuki stepped forward, attempting to defuse the tension. Come on, guys, let's focus on the tournament, Natsuki interjected, trying to ease the tension. We're a team, remember? Yeah, we need to work together if we want to win, Sayori added, attempting to defuse the situation. Let's put our differences aside and show them what we're made of. Exactly, Yuri chimed in, trying to steer the conversation in a positive direction. We're a team, and we have to support each other. Let's focus on our strengths and give it our all out there. As the tension eased, the team nodded in agreement. Yuri's right, MC added. Let's put our differences aside and work together to win this tournament. With renewed determination, they headed towards the arena, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Hikari and Monika exchanged a glance before Hikari spoke up, I'll take the lead for this one. But we'll all contribute equally and listen to each other's ideas. The group nodded in agreement, satisfied with the decision. As they finalized their roles and preparations, the announcer's voice boomed across the arena, signaling the start of the first match. The Doki Doki team gathered their resolve, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With determination in their hearts, they stepped onto the arena floor, united and prepared to give their all in the upcoming battles. As they entered the arena, the cheers of the crowd filled the air, energizing the team with a newfound sense of excitement. Each member took their positions, their eyes fixed on the opponents across the arena. The tension was palpable as the first match began, the clash of magic and skill echoing throughout the arena. With each move, the Doki Doki team showed their prowess, their coordination and strategy shining through as they faced off against their opponents. The intensity of the battle only grew as the match progressed, with both teams pushing themselves to the limit in pursuit of victory. Amidst the chaos of the arena, the Doki Doki team stood tall, 
their determination unwavering as they fought with all their might. The air crackled with magic as the opposing teams clashed in a spectacular display of power. Hikari, with his hydra prism by his side, unleashed torrents of water, dousing their opponents in a deluge of liquid fury. Natsuki, wielding her raven bow, fired arrows of shadow that pierced through the enemy's defenses with deadly accuracy. Meanwhile, MC and Sayori worked in perfect harmony, their movements fluid and synchronized. MC's twin fangs sliced through the air, leaving trails of light and shadow in their wake, while Sayori's fox companion darted around the battlefield, striking with swift and precise attacks. Yuri, with her newfound confidence, summoned ethereal constructs of light that dazzled and disoriented their adversaries. Her creations danced and weaved around their opponents, leaving them vulnerable to the onslaught of her teammates. Monica, the strategist of the group, directed their movements with precision, analyzing the battlefield and orchestrating their attacks with calculated efficiency. Her commands were like poetry in motion, guiding the team to victory with her keen intellect and unwavering resolve. As the battle raged on, the Doki Doki team faced increasingly fierce opposition, but they refused to yield. With every strike, every spell cast, they drew closer to victory, their determination shining brighter than ever before. And when the dust settled and the final blow was dealt, it was the Doki Doki team who emerged triumphant, their bond stronger than ever, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The opportunistic student grinned maliciously as he locked eyes with Alastor. Found you, he declared, his voice dripping with disdain. Let's end this. Alastor's expression remained stoic as he regarded his adversary, unfazed by the ominous tone. I am going to make you regret facing me, the student continued, his voice taking on a demonic quality. Your screams will be heard by everyone. Alastor's resolve only strengthened in the face of the student's threats. With a calm demeanor, he prepared to confront the challenge head-on, his determination unwavering. The opportunistic student's laughter faltered as Alastor swiftly closed the distance between them. With a sudden burst of movement, Alastor's dragon wings unfurled from his back, casting a shadow over the startled student. The once-human voice of Alastor now took on a draconic tone, sending shivers down the spine of his opponent. You are the one who will be screaming at the top of your lungs, Alastor declared, his words carrying the weight of an ancient power. The student's bravado crumbled in the face of Alastor's overwhelming presence, realizing too late the gravity of the situation. The student stumbled backward, his confidence waning with each step as Alastor advanced, his eyes ablaze with an otherworldly intensity. With a swift motion, Alastor reached out, his hand closing around the student's throat with an iron grip. No, please. The student gasped, his voice choked by Alastor's grasp. But Alastor's expression remained stoic, his grip unyielding. With a flicker of dark energy, he cast the student aside, sending him crashing to the ground with a resounding thud. As the defeated student lay sprawled on the floor, Alastor turned away, his gaze piercing through the chaos of the arena. Anyone else care to challenge me? Alastor's voice reverberated through the air, a warning to any who dared to oppose him. With that, he stood tall, a silent sentinel amidst the tumult of the tournament grounds. Meanwhile the Doki Doki didn't see the match but they all heard the sound of Crash and Alastor voice. We'll talk about happy he is on our side. MC says to Sayori. I men's just imagine. Sayori nodded, her eyes wide with a mix of awe and apprehension. Yeah, it's definitely reassuring to have someone like Alastor on our team, she replied, her voice tinged with uncertainty. But let's hope we don't have to face off against him any time soon. Monica, who had been listening intently, interjected with a thoughtful expression. Indeed, Alastor's strength is undeniable, she remarked, her gaze focused on the distant figure of their teammate. But we must remember to rely on our own skills and strategy as well. We each have our strengths, and together, we can overcome any challenge. As they are jumped by three students from the object team they are fighting. With a swift motion, MC unsheathed his twin fangs, the blades gleaming in the sunlight. Looks like we've got some unwanted guests, he said, his voice calm but determined. Sayori stepped back slightly, her hands trembling as she summoned her fox companion, Sunny. We can handle this, right, Sunny? She murmured, her eyes meeting the creature's fiery gaze for reassurance. Monica took a deep breath, 
focusing her energy as she prepared to unleash her hidden power. Let's show them what we're made of, she declared, her voice steady as she readied herself for the impending clash. Together, the members of the Doki Doki Club braced themselves, ready to defend against their assailants and prove their strength in the heat of battle. Meanwhile, in a different place, Hikari was surrounded by the Opaject team leader he was using shadow magic and clone magic as he looked at Hikari. Hikari stood his ground, his eyes narrowed as he assessed the situation. The leader of the opposing team was skilled, that much was clear. But Hikari was determined not to let them get the upper hand. Impressive, Hikari remarked, his voice calm despite the tension in the air. But you'll find that I'm not so easily defeated. With a flick of his wrist, Hikari summoned Prism, his baby Hydra, to his side. The creature let out a low growl, its multiple heads snapping in anticipation of the coming battle. As the leader's clones closed in, Hikari focused his energy, channeling his magic into a powerful attack. Shadows twisted and writhed around him, forming into tendrils that lashed out at his opponents with deadly precision. The leader gritted their teeth, their expression determined as they countered Hikari's assault with their own barrage of attacks. But Hikari was unfazed, his movements fluid as he danced between their strikes, his Hydra companion providing backup with its own ferocious attacks. The battle raged on, each side pushing themselves to their limits in their quest for victory. But in the end, only one would emerge triumphant. And Hikari was determined to ensure that it would be him. Also too bad for you, you faced me. Hikari said activating Void Sphere. Deal with this also don't expect me to explain what it does like anime characters. As the Void Sphere surged forward, the leader of the opposing team realized the imminent danger and desperately attempted to counter with their own magic. With swift movements, they summoned a barrier of shadowy energy to shield themselves from the oncoming attack. The clash between Hikari's Void Sphere and the opponent's barrier created a deafening explosion of magical energy, sending shockwaves rippling through the arena. Spectators gasped as they watched the intense confrontation unfold before them. After a tense moment, the dust settled, revealing the opposing team leader panting heavily but still standing. Hikari observed them with a determined expression, his resolve unshaken despite the close call. It seems you're more skilled than I anticipated, Hikari remarked coolly, his eyes locking with the opponents. But this match is far from over. With renewed determination, Hikari prepared to continue the battle, fully aware of the challenges that lay ahead. Hikari raised his hand, channeling his magic into a potent lightning bolt aimed directly at his opponent. The crackling energy surged through the air, illuminating the arena with its dazzling brightness. The opponent's eyes widened in surprise as they attempted to evade the incoming attack. However, the lightning bolt struck with unerring accuracy, enveloping them in a brilliant cascade of electrical energy. As the lightning subsided, the opponent staggered backward, their movements slowed by the residual effects of the powerful spell. Hikari maintained his focus, ready to press his advantage and seize victory in the intense battle unfolding before him. As then the opponent team leader fell being teleported away to safety by the teacher, as Hikari just looked. Hikari stood in the aftermath of the intense magical clash, his gaze fixed on the spot where his opponent had stood just moments before. The sudden disappearance of the opposing team leader left a palpable tension in the air, as the reality of the tournament's high stakes weighed heavily on everyone present. Despite the victory, Hikari's expression remained stoic, his mind already turning to the next challenge that awaited him and his teammates. With a deep breath, he refocused his energy, preparing himself for whatever trials lay ahead in the fierce competition of the sport tournament. Meanwhile, Natsuki was in her fight with the same team all of them were fighting as she had taken this one down, after all her magic was something not to count out. Natsuki stood her ground amidst the chaotic flurry of combat, her determination shining through as she faced off against the opposing team. With each precise movement, she wielded her magic with skill and finesse, swiftly incapacitating her opponents one by one. Her adversaries, caught off guard by the sheer force of her abilities, struggled to keep pace with her relentless onslaught. Yet Natsuki remained unfazed, her focus unwavering as she pressed forward, determined to secure victory for her team. As the dust settled and her opponents lay defeated at her feet, Natsuki stood tall, a testament to her strength and resilience in the heat of battle. With a confident smile, she rejoined her teammates, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them next. 
Wow that was great. Alastor said waking in. That was a good show you put on. Thanks, Alastor, Natsuki replied, a hint of pride in her voice. I couldn't have done it without the support of the team. We make a pretty formidable group, don't we? Yeah, we sure do, Alastor agreed, nodding. But don't let your guard down just yet. There are still more challenges ahead, and we need to be ready for anything. As MC, Sayori, and Monica continued their fights, they found themselves facing tough opponents. MC deftly wielded his twin fangs, swiftly striking down his adversaries with precise movements. Sayori used her agility and quick thinking to outmaneuver her opponents, delivering swift strikes with her daggers. Monica, with her newfound weapon, the Seraphic Staff, unleashed powerful magic, creating barriers and launching devastating spells at her foes. Despite the challenges, they fought with determination, knowing that victory was within their reach. As the fight ended leaving the three of them. Congratulations, this round is over and the team to win is the let me get this right you guys name is the Doki Doki. The announcer said. What a weird name. Thank you. MC replied with a grin. Doki Doki might sound unusual, but it represents our unique spirit and camaraderie. We're proud of our name and what it stands for. As then then the whole group is teleport back to the main arena as they wait for their next match. As they gathered in the main arena, the adrenaline from their recent victory still coursing through their veins, the Doki Doki team exchanged excited glances. That was amazing. Natsuki exclaimed, her eyes shining with excitement. We really showed them what we're made of. Yeah, we did great out there, Hikari chimed in, a satisfied grin spreading across his face. But we can't let our guard down now. We've got to stay focused for the next round. I couldn't agree more, Monica added, her voice calm but determined. We need to keep our momentum going and stay united as a team. That's how we'll come out on top. As they discussed their strategies for the upcoming matches, the atmosphere buzzed with anticipation. They were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead and prove themselves as the strongest team in the tournament. Meanwhile, MC was looking at his system seeing that his first quest was complete. Sayori look at this, I fished the first of many quests for this tournament. MC says loud enough only she can hear. I wonder what my rewards will be. Sayori leaned in closer to get a better look at the screen. Wow, that's awesome. She exclaimed, her eyes widening in excitement. I wonder what rewards you'll get. Hopefully something really cool. MC nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. Yeah, I'm curious. Meanwhile Monica looked at MC and Sayori feeling jealous of Sayori, as Hikari noticed this. Hikari observed the tension between Monica and Sayori, feeling a sense of deja vu wash over him. I hope this doesn't turn into a repeat of what happened in a game, he muttered to himself, silently hoping to avoid any drama within the group. He knew that maintaining harmony among them would be crucial, especially during the intense competition of the tournament. Um Hikari. Yuri said looking at Hikari as she was blushing. You look good in your uniform. As Yuri can see his uniform was hugging his body showing of his muscles, as she was looking at him. Hikari blushed slightly at Yuri's compliment, feeling a bit self-conscious under her gaze. Thank you, Yuri, he replied, a shy smile forming on his lips. You look great too in your uniform. He tried to deflect the attention away from himself, feeling a bit flustered by the unexpected compliment. As then he was pinched in back by Natsuki, as he saw she had jealous face at Hikari. Hikari winced slightly at the pinch, realizing Natsuki's jealousy. Ouch, he muttered softly, shooting her a sheepish grin. Sorry, Natsuki. Yuri was just giving a compliment, that's all. He hoped to ease her jealousy with a reassuring smile, though he couldn't shake off the feeling of guilt for unintentionally drawing Yuri's attention. You better not cheat on me. Or else will we live in the same house so yeah your family will learn of it. Hikari nodded, understanding Natsuki's concern. I won't, Natsuki. You're the only one for me, he reassured her, giving her a gentle squeeze on the hand. I promise. Chapter 20 as from a different place in a building Lucifer was drinking as he was watching the sport festival more specifically Hikari match. Lucifer watched intently, 
his crimson eyes glinting with interest as he observed the unfolding events of the sport festival. With a subtle smirk, he muttered to himself, so, this is the one they call Hikari. Intriguing. As he took another sip of his drink, Lucifer's gaze remained fixed on the screen displaying Hikari's match. He could sense the power emanating from Hikari, and it piqued his curiosity further. Such potential, he murmured, his lips curling into a knowing smile. I wonder how he will fare in the challenges to come. With a flick of his wrist, he summoned a small flame, watching it dance and flicker as he contemplated his next move. I gotta say mostly it is gods who watch me. Lucifer said looking at the screen. But this time the devil is watching this god o' oh the turntable. Lucifer chuckled softly, his eyes glinting with amusement. Indeed, the tables have turned, he remarked, taking another sip of his drink. It seems this god has piqued my interest. Let's see what you're capable of, Hikari. With a subtle gesture, he enhanced the screen's resolution, keen on observing every detail of the unfolding events. Meanwhile back with Hikari he felt a chill down his spine. As the chill crept down his spine, Hikari couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. Instinctively, he scanned the surroundings, but everything appeared normal. Did someone just walk over my grave? He muttered under his breath, a sense of unease settling in. Feeling a bit unsettled, Hikari decided to focus on the upcoming match rather than dwell on the eerie sensation. All right, team, he said, gathering his teammates around him. Let's stay sharp and give it our all in the next round. We've got this. With renewed determination, they prepared to face whatever challenges awaited them in the tournament. As the team heard what Hikari said as they all just looked at him. Hikari, sensing the weight of their stares, cleared his throat. Uh, sorry guys, I was just thinking out loud. He offered a sheepish smile, hoping to diffuse the tension. Natsuki stepped forward, breaking the silence. Well, regardless of what Hikari was thinking, we're here to win this tournament, right? She glanced around at the rest of the team, seeking affirmation. Yeah, she's right, MC chimed in, stepping up beside Natsuki. Let's focus on the next match. We've got this. The rest of the team nodded in agreement, the tension easing as they redirected their attention to the upcoming challenges. OS what is the next match? Is it the Quidditch match or is it going to save for last? The next match is the capture the flag event, Monica replied, consulting her schedule. It's one of the main events of the tournament, so they're saving it for later. Looks like we have some time to prepare. The team nodded, mentally gearing up for the next challenge. May I ask how you know? Alastair said looking at Monica. None of us know about and no announcements was made. I've been keeping track of the schedule, Monica explained with a smile. Just trying to stay ahead of things, you know. God almost gave away my future sight. Monica though to herself. Should I tell them no definitely not? Monica chuckled nervously, hoping her slip-up went unnoticed. Just a lucky guess, I suppose. As they waited for the next match, Hikari's mind wandered. He couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. I have a bad feeling about this, he muttered under his breath, causing Natsuki to glance at him with concern. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the arena, announcing the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for an electrifying battle. It's time for the lightning showdown. The crowd erupted into cheers as lightning crackled across the arena, signaling the start of the intense match. As the teams prepared for the lightning showdown, Hikari felt a surge of anticipation coursing through him. He glanced at his teammates, seeing determination in their eyes. All right, team, let's show them what we're made of, he declared, his voice brimming with confidence. Natsuki nodded, her fists clenched tightly as she exuded an aura of fierce determination. We've trained for this moment, and we won't let anything stand in our way, she affirmed, her voice resolute. MC cracked his knuckles, a grin spreading across his face. Time to unleash some thunder and lightning, he quipped, his excitement palpable as he readied himself for the upcoming battle. Sayori took a deep breath, steadying her nerves as she focused on the task ahead. We've got this, guys. Together, we're unstoppable, she declared, her optimism shining through despite the tension in the air. Yuri adjusted her glasses, her expression calm and composed as she surveyed the arena. 
Let's harness the power of the storm and reign supreme, she stated, her voice cool and collected as she prepared to unleash her magic. Alastair cracked a confident grin, his eyes gleaming with excitement. Time to put on a show they'll never forget, he remarked, his voice tinged with anticipation as he flexed his muscles, ready for action. With their resolve steeled and their determination unwavering, the Doki Doki team braced themselves for the lightning showdown, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead and emerge victorious. As the team received the surprising news about the lightning showdown, they exchanged glances, processing the information. So, it's basically capture the flag, but with a lightning crystal instead, Hikari mused, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. Natsuki nodded, a determined gleam in her eyes. Well, that changes things a bit, but it's nothing we can't handle, she declared, her confidence unwavering as she adjusted her stance. MC cracked a grin, his excitement mounting at the prospect of a new challenge. Sounds electrifying. Let's shock the competition and claim that crystal, he exclaimed, his enthusiasm infectious as he pumped his fist in the air. Sayori's eyes sparkled with excitement as she imagined the thrill of the upcoming battle. I can already feel the adrenaline pumping. Let's go show them what we're made of, she enthused, her eagerness palpable as she bounced on the balls of her feet. Yuri adjusted her glasses, her analytical mind already strategizing their approach. We'll need to coordinate our efforts and stay vigilant. With teamwork and precision, we can secure victory, she stated, her voice steady and determined as she prepared to put her intellect to the test. Alastair cracked his knuckles, a smirk playing on his lips. Time to light up the battlefield and make our opponent see stars, he quipped, his excitement building as he flexed his muscles in anticipation of the upcoming clash. With their strategy in place and their spirits high, the Doki Doki team set off towards the lightning showdown arena, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them and emerge triumphant. So which magic academy are we fighting for this match? I hope we can win this one as well. We're representing Havencrest Academy, Hikari replied, his gaze scanning the arena ahead. And don't worry, Yuri, with our skills and teamwork, we've got a good shot at coming out on top once again, he assured her his confidence unwavering as he led the team forward. Natsuki nodded in agreement, a determined glint in her eyes. Yeah, we've been training hard for this. Let's show them what we're made of, she declared, her voice brimming with determination as she tightened her grip on her weapon. MC grinned, his excitement palpable as he visualized their victory. We're not just representing Havencrest, we're gonna make them proud, he proclaimed, his enthusiasm infectious as he pumped his fist in the air. Sayori's eyes sparkled with anticipation as she imagined the thrill of the upcoming battle. I know we can do it. Let's give it our all and bring home another win for Havencrest, she exclaimed, her optimism shining through as she smiled at her teammates. Yuri adjusted her glasses, her analytical mind already formulating strategies. We have the skills and the determination to succeed. Let's stay focused and coordinated, and we'll emerge victorious, she stated, her voice steady and resolute. With their resolve strengthened and their spirits united, the Doki Doki team entered the lightning showdown arena, ready to give their all and prove themselves as formidable competitors. And there is Phoenix Academy. Monica said looking the opposite team. I hope everyone is ready take your position everyone. As Monica's voice resonated with authority, the team swiftly assumed their positions on the field, their focus honed and their determination unwavering. Hikari positioned himself at the forefront, his eyes scanning the terrain for any signs of movement. Natsuki readied her weapon, her stance poised and ready for action. MC stood tall, his muscles tense with anticipation as he surveyed the battlefield. Sayori kept a watchful eye on their surroundings, her senses attuned to the slightest shift in the air. And Yuri maintained her composure, her mind sharp and analytical as she prepared for the challenge ahead. With their positions secured and their strategies in place, the Doki Doki team awaited the signal to commence the lightning showdown. As the tension mounted and the anticipation grew, they braced themselves for the electrifying battle that lay ahead, united in their goal to emerge victorious for Havencrest Academy. Let the battle start. The announcer says. Let it all thunder. The air crackled with energy as the lightning showdown began, each team poised for action as they vied for control of the lightning crystal. With a surge of determination, the Doki Doki team sprang into action, 
their movements swift and coordinated. Hikari dashed forward, his agility unmatched as he weaved through the opposing team's defenses, his eyes locked on the glowing crystal at the center of the field. Natsuki followed close behind, her weapon at the ready as she provided cover fire, her aim true and unwavering. MC unleashed his formidable strength, charging headfirst into the fray as he engaged the enemy with brute force, his sword slicing through the air with precision and power. Sayori utilized her agility to outmaneuver their opponents, darting between obstacles with grace and finesse, her presence a whirlwind of movement and strategy. Yuri stood her ground, her magic ablaze as she conjured barriers of light to shield her teammates from harm, her spells a dazzling display of power and prowess. Together, they fought as one, their determination unwavering as they pressed forward, inching closer to victory with each passing moment. As the battle raged on, the arena erupted in a cacophony of thunderous clashes and crackling energy, the lightning showdown living up to its name in every sense. And amidst the chaos, the Doki Doki team remained steadfast, their resolve unshaken as they fought with all their might to emerge triumphant in the face of adversity. As Lucifer was watching this from his house he had a grin on his face as he saw the match. Lucifer reclined in his chair, a sly grin tugging at the corners of his lips as he watched the lightning showdown unfold on the screen before him. His eyes gleamed with amusement as he observed the fierce competition, each team battling for supremacy with unmatched determination. Ah, how entertaining, Lucifer mused, his voice dripping with satisfaction. To think that such mortal endeavors could provide such amusement. As the clash of magic and strategy played out on the screen, Lucifer leaned back, his gaze fixated on the unfolding spectacle. There was a certain satisfaction in witnessing the chaos and competition, a reminder of his own influence over the mortal realm. And so the game begins, Lucifer whispered to himself, a glint of anticipation in his eyes. Let the mortals vie for victory, while I bask in the enjoyment of their struggles. With a flick of his wrist, he summoned a glass of wine, savoring the taste as he settled in to watch the drama unfold. But really is it safe for children to fight in this? A woman voice spoke. What do you say my dear? Lucifer, knew this voice as he looked at her, she had two devil horns, blue eyes and white skin she was wearing a beautiful dress as she moved to him. You have always been like this Lilith. Lucifer said address the woman. Then again I just being the first woman made to sew. Lucifer regarded Lilith with a knowing smile, his eyes twinkling with amusement at her inquiry. My dear Lilith, he began, his voice smooth and composed, safety is a relative concept in the realm of mortals. They are but pawns in a grand game, subject to the whims of fate and circumstance. Lilith arched an eyebrow, her gaze piercing as she regarded Lucifer with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. And yet, you find amusement in their struggles, she remarked, her voice tinged with a hint of reproach. Of course, Lucifer replied, his smile widening. Their struggles, their triumphs, their defeats each moment adds to the tapestry of mortal existence. It is a spectacle unlike any other, and one that I find endlessly entertaining. Lilith shook her head, her expression softened by a faint smile. You never change, do you? She said, a note of fondness creeping into her voice. Why should I? Lucifer replied, his gaze never leaving the screen. After all, where's the fun in that? With a chuckle, he leaned back in his chair, his attention once again drawn to the unfolding drama before him. And then again after out of all the creation of father they are his favorite. Lucifer said with a smirk. Just like how I was his favorite little lightbringer. Lilith's lips curved into a wry smile at Lucifer's remark. Ah, yes, the favored son, she mused, her voice tinged with a mixture of amusement and irony. But perhaps it is the nature of fathers to favor some children over others. Lucifer's smirk deepened as he regarded Lilith with a knowing glint in his eyes. Indeed, he replied, his tone conspiratorial. And yet, it is often the ones deemed least favored who possess the most potential for greatness. Lilith chuckled softly, a musical sound that echoed through the room. Perhaps, she conceded, her gaze turning back to the screen where the mortal drama played out. But regardless of favoritism, they are all his creations, and thus worthy of our attention. Indeed, Lucifer agreed, his gaze following hers to the unfolding spectacle below. And what a show they put on. 
With a flick of his hand, he conjured a glass of wine, raising it in a silent toast to the ongoing drama of mortal existence. And is that boy using demonic power how? Lilith said looking at the screen as she sees Alastor. How did he get powers from this earth hell? Lucifer chuckled softly at Lilith's observation, swirling the wine in his glass thoughtfully. Ah, uh, young Alastor, he mused, his gaze fixed on the screen where Alastor displayed his formidable abilities. He's a fascinating one, isn't he? Lilith nodded, her expression thoughtful as she watched the display of power. Indeed, she agreed, her blue eyes reflecting the flickering light of the scene below. But the source of his power intrigues me. It seems to resonate with the energies of the underworld. Indeed it does, Lucifer concurred, a gleam of amusement in his eyes. It seems our young mortal has found a way to tap into the darker currents of this world. He took a sip of his wine, savoring the rich flavor before continuing. But whether he fully comprehends the extent of those powers remains to be seen. Lilith nodded, her gaze returning to the screen where Alastor continued to demonstrate his prowess. It will be interesting to see how he develops, she remarked, her voice tinged with curiosity. Perhaps he will prove to be a valuable asset in the grand scheme of things. Perhaps, Lucifer agreed, his lips curving into a knowing smile. Or perhaps he will become something even more. Intriguing. With a flick of his wrist, he gestured towards the screen, the image of Alastor shimmering in the dim light of the room. Only time will tell. But seat down. Lucifer said to his wife. Let's watch Hikari this world new god. Lilith nodded, gracefully taking a seat beside Lucifer as they turned their attention back to the screen, where Hikari was now engaged in a fierce battle. The air crackled with energy as spells and incantations filled the arena, and the two watched in silent fascination. He certainly made quite a name for himself, Lilith remarked, her eyes fixed on Hikari as he deftly navigated the chaos of the battlefield. It's impressive to see a mortal wield such power. Indeed, Lucifer agreed, his gaze unwavering as he observed Hikari's every move. But power alone does not make a god. It is how one wields that power that truly defines them. As they watched, Hikari unleashed a devastating spell, sending shockwaves rippling through the arena. The crowd erupted into cheers, and even from their vantage point, Lucifer and Lilith could feel the raw energy coursing through the air. He certainly knows how to make an entrance, Lilith observed with a hint of amusement. Indeed, Lucifer agreed, a faint smile playing at the corners of his lips. But let us see how he handles the challenges that lie ahead. That will truly test his mettle. With that, they settled in to watch the rest of the match, eager to see what the future held for this new god of the world. As then Hikari sent a glare at the screen as lost like he knew that they were watching him as he was saying try me. Hikari's gaze seemed to pierce through the screen, as if he could sense the eyes of those watching him from afar. His expression was resolute, a silent challenge to anyone who dared to test him. In that moment, he exuded a confidence that belied his mortal form, a confidence that spoke of his newfound power and authority. Interesting, Lucifer mused, his eyes narrowing slightly as he observed Hikari's defiant glare. He's certainly not lacking in confidence. No, he's not, Lilith agreed, her gaze fixed on the screen as she watched Hikari's every move. But confidence alone won't protect him from the dangers that lie ahead. As the battle raged on, Hikari's determination only seemed to grow stronger, his every action calculated and precise. With each spell he cast and each opponent he faced, he proved himself to be a formidable force to be reckoned with. He's impressive, I'll give him that, Lucifer admitted, a hint of admiration in his voice. But let's see how he fares against the challenges that await him. That will truly test his resolve. With that, they continued to watch, curious to see what fate had in store for this enigmatic young god. Natsuki's brow furrowed in concern as she watched Hikari unleash his powers with seemingly reckless abandon. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to his actions, something hidden beneath the surface. Was he trying to prove a point to Alastor? Or was there another reason behind his overwhelming display of strength? Hikari, be careful. Natsuki called out, her voice tinged with worry as she continued to provide cover for her boyfriend. She couldn't afford to let her guard down, not when they were facing such formidable opponents. 
Despite her concerns, Natsuki couldn't deny the raw power and determination that Hikari exuded. There was a fire in his eyes, a burning intensity that drove him forward, even in the face of adversity. It was both awe-inspiring and terrifying to witness, a reminder of just how far he was willing to go to protect those he cared about. As the battle raged on, Natsuki resolved to stand by Hikari's side, no matter what challenges they may face. Together, they would overcome whatever obstacles stood in their way, united in their determination to emerge victorious. And as she watched Hikari fight with all his might, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a surge of pride and admiration for the boy she loved. The intensity of Hikari's power rippled through the arena, causing the ground to tremble beneath their feet. It was as if the very earth itself was responding to his energy, quaking in awe and fear of the sheer magnitude of his abilities. Students from both teams watched in amazement and trepidation as Hikari unleashed wave after wave of energy, each surge more powerful than the last. The air crackled with electricity, and the ground groaned under the strain of his power. In the midst of the chaos, Hikari's teammates could feel the raw energy coursing through the air, electrifying their senses and driving their adrenaline to new heights. They knew that this was their moment to shine, their chance to prove themselves in the heat of battle. With renewed determination, they rallied around Hikari, drawing strength from his boundless energy and channeling it into their own attacks. Together, they fought with all their might, pushing themselves to their limits and beyond in their quest for victory. As the battle raged on, the arena became a battleground of epic proportions, with each clash of magic sending shockwaves rippling through the air. And amidst the chaos and destruction, Hikari stood at the center, a beacon of power and determination, his presence commanding the attention of all who bore witness to his might. I give up. The leader of the other team said. Here just take the crystal we give up. He says scared as he gives it to Hikari. Hikari accepted the crystal, his gaze unwavering as he looked upon the defeated opponent. There was no hint of triumph in his expression, only a steely resolve that spoke volumes of his determination to emerge victorious. Thank you, he said calmly, his voice carrying an air of authority that brooked no argument. But remember, defeat is not the end. Use this experience to grow stronger and fight another day. With that, he turned away, the crystal clutched tightly in his hand, and rejoined his teammates. As they gathered around him, a sense of camaraderie and pride filled the air, a silent acknowledgement of their collective triumph. But even as they celebrated their victory, Hikari knew that the real battle was far from over. With new challenges on the horizon and greater trials ahead, he steeled himself for the journey ahead, his resolve unshakable and his spirit undaunted. Alastor watched Hikari's display of power with a mixture of awe and trepidation. He had witnessed firsthand the extent of Hikari's abilities, and it left him unsettled. Despite his own formidable strength, he couldn't shake the feeling that Hikari was a force to be reckoned with, one that surpassed even his own capabilities. As he pondered his next move, Alastor realized that he needed to tread carefully. Engaging Hikari directly could prove to be a grave mistake, one that he wasn't willing to make. Instead, he resolved to bide his time, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. For now, he would observe from the sidelines, analyzing Hikari's every move and plotting his own course of action. After all, in a game of power and strategy, patience was often the key to victory. And Alastor was nothing if not patient. Chapter 21 Will people would you look at that the Doki Doki have won again? The announcer said. And what a power coming from their leader. As a picture of Hikari is shown. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause as the announcer declared the Doki Doki team the victors once again. Hikari's leadership and power had secured another impressive win for their team, solidifying their reputation as formidable competitors in the tournament. As Hikari's image was displayed on the screen, the spectators marveled at the sheer strength and determination radiating from him. His presence seemed to command respect and admiration, even from those who had once doubted him. For the Doki Doki team, it was a moment of triumph and celebration. They had proven themselves once again, showcasing their unity and skill in the face of formidable opponents. And as they basked in the glory of their victory, they knew that the challenges ahead would only serve to strengthen their bond and determination to succeed. As back with Lucifer he just watched the screen as his smile grow buyer. Lucifer's smile widened as he watched the screen, his eyes gleaming with satisfaction. 
The display of power and determination from Hikari seemed to intrigue and amuse him, stirring a sense of anticipation for what was yet to come. Interesting, he murmured to himself, his gaze fixed on the unfolding events. This world's new god certainly knows how to make things entertaining. As the tournament progressed, Lucifer remained glued to the screen, eager to witness the next chapter in Hikari's journey and the unfolding drama that seemed to follow in his wake. Oh boy I know that smile. Lilith said as she holds her head. You're going ask him to join your underground fighting ring aren't you? Lucifer turned to Lilith with a mischievous glint in his eyes. Why, my dear, would I do such a thing? He replied, feigning innocence. I merely find his endeavors amusing. But who knows? Perhaps our paths will cross in a more lucrative venture. With a cryptic smile, he returned his attention to the screen, leaving Lilith to ponder his intentions with a mixture of amusement and concern. You said the same thing about Solomon. She said. And even Merlin and King Arthur and in the end they joined that ring of yore. Ah, but this one is different, Lucifer said with a sly grin. There's a fire in him, a spark of defiance that I find intriguing. Besides, what harm could a little invitation do? After all, it's not like he's going to accept. Or is he? He chuckled softly, leaving Lilith to wonder just how much of it was a jest. The excitement in the air was palpable as the Doki Doki team basked in their victory. However, beneath the surface, tension simmered and doubts lingered. So, what's next? MC asked, breaking the silence that followed their triumph. We wait for the next match announcement, Monica replied, her voice calm but tinged with uncertainty. As they waited, the atmosphere grew tense, each member lost in their own thoughts. The thrill of victory was overshadowed by the looming uncertainty of what lay ahead. Suddenly, the announcer's voice boomed through the arena, breaking the silence. Attention, participants. The next match will be a team battle royale. A collective gasp rippled through the Doki Doki team as they processed the announcement. A battle royale meant facing off against each other, testing their skills and alliances in a fight for supremacy. We're fighting each other. Sayori exclaimed, her voice tinged with surprise and concern. It seems so, Yuri murmured, her brow furrowed in contemplation. As the reality of the upcoming challenge sank in, the team exchanged uneasy glances, grappling with the implications of battling their friends and allies. We'll need to strategize, Hikari declared, her voice firm as she stepped forward to address the group. We can't hold back, but we also need to be mindful of each other's safety. Nods of agreement rippled through the team as they began to discuss their tactics and approach to the upcoming battle. Despite the inherent tension and unease, a sense of unity and determination bound them together. The anticipation hung heavy in the air as the Doki Doki team prepared to face their toughest challenge yet a battle against each other. Personally speaking I expect us to fight each other at one point. Monica says look at the group. I mean did you ask well Hikari? Monica's question hung in the air, prompting a moment of reflection among the team members. Hikari, in particular, seemed lost in thought, his expression unreadable as he considered her words. I suppose it was inevitable, he finally replied, his voice tinged with resignation. But we'll face it together, as a team. His words elicited nods of agreement from the others, a sense of determination replacing the apprehension that had lingered moments before. We'll fight with everything we have, Natsuki declared, her voice firm and unwavering. But we won't forget that we're still allies, no matter what. The resolve in her words reverberated through the group, strengthening their collective resolve as they prepared to confront the challenges that lay ahead. With their unity reaffirmed, the Doki Doki team braced themselves for the trials to come, knowing that their greatest battle still lay on the horizon. As then Monica looks at Hikari. Did he only say they just get our hose up? Monica said thinking to herself. I feel like even do he acts like such a pure good hero he is just wearing a mask. Monica said in her mind knowing a faker when she sees one. Monica's suspicions nodded her, casting a shadow of doubt over her perception of Hikari. Despite his outward demeanor, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to him than met the eye. With each passing moment, her curiosity deepened, fueling her determination to uncover the truth behind the facade. 
As the tournament progressed, Monica resolved to keep a watchful eye on Hikari, searching for any hint of the darkness she suspected lurked beneath his surface. Whether her instincts proved true remained to be seen, but she refused to ignore the nagging sense of unease that lingered in the depths of her mind. With her resolve hardened, Monica steeled herself for the challenges ahead, determined to unravel the mysteries that surrounded Hikari and the enigmatic forces that seemed to guide his actions. Only time would reveal the truth, but she was prepared to face whatever secrets lay hidden in the shadows. As the group went to eat after all their round will come much much late for know it is other teams fighting not them, as they eat Alastor was called by a pink hair girl, he already knew who she was. Alastor hesitated for a moment, recognizing the pink haired girl as one of his allies. Despite the familiarity of her face, he couldn't shake the unease that settled in the pit of his stomach as he approached her table. Alastor, it's been a while, the girl greeted him with a smile, her voice tinged with a hint of mischief. I see you're still causing trouble wherever you go. Alastor forced a polite smile, though his guard remained firmly in place. Good to see you too, Lila, he replied, keeping his tone neutral. What brings you here? Lila's smile widened as she leaned forward, her gaze locking onto his with an intensity that set his nerves on edge. Oh, just thought I'd say hello to an old friend, she purred, her eyes glittering with a hidden agenda. But I couldn't help noticing your little team over there. Quite the eclectic group you've got yourself mixed up with. Alastor's grip tightened on his fork, his instincts urging him to tread carefully around Lila's probing questions. He knew better than to trust her seemingly innocent facade, aware that she thrived on manipulation and deceit. Is there a point to this, Lila? He asked, his voice betraying none of the apprehension he felt. Or are you just here to reminisce about the past? Lila's smile faltered for a moment, a flicker of annoyance crossing her features before she composed herself once more. Oh, don't be so coy, Alastor, she replied, her tone sharpening. I know you've always had a knack for getting yourself into trouble. Just thought I'd offer a friendly warning to watch your back. Really don't you have anyone else to murder like you always do? Alastor said. After all this my mission from the boss not your. Alastor's retort was laced with thinly veiled hostility, a testament to his growing frustration with Lila's interference. Save your breath, Lila, he replied, his tone icy. I've had my fill of your games. If you've got something to say, spit it out and be done with it. Lila's laughter rang out across the cafeteria, drawing the attention of nearby students who glanced curiously in their direction. She regarded Alastor with a knowing smirk, her eyes glinting with a dangerous gleam. Always so serious, Alastor, she taunted, her voice dripping with disdain. But don't worry, I'll leave you to your little team. Just remember, when the time comes, you'll owe me a favor. With a final toss of her hair, Lila sauntered away, leaving Alastor to stew in his frustration. As he watched her disappear into the crowd, a sense of unease settled over him, his instincts warning him of the dangers that lay ahead. But for now, all he could do was wait and watch, knowing that Lila's shadow would loom over them all until her debts were paid. Really why of all my member of the shadow group she must be here I just being the only teenagers in among the six shadows makes sense. Alastor thought to himself. After all why must she be a killer, sure he kills people as well as his job, but she is just in Zine. Alastor couldn't shake the unsettling feeling that Lila's presence brought, a reminder of the dark underbelly of their world that he preferred to keep at arm's length. Despite their shared affiliation with the Shadow Group, he had always regarded her with a mixture of apprehension and disdain, her penchant for violence and chaos at odds with his own more calculated approach to their line of work. As he pondered the implications of her unexpected appearance, Alastor couldn't help but wonder what game she was playing this time. With Lila, there was always a hidden agenda, web of deceit and manipulation that she wove with practiced ease. And while he had no doubt that her intentions were far from altruistic, Alastor knew better than to underestimate her cunning and resourcefulness. But for now, he pushed aside his misgivings and focused on the task at hand. With the sport tournament in full swing and their team poised for victory, there was little room for distractions. Lila may pose a threat, but Alastor was determined not to let her derail their plans. With a steely resolve, he resolved to keep a close eye on her every move, knowing that the true test of his abilities lay ahead. With Hikari and Natsuki they were seeing down. 
you can take that make morality make of. Let's face you're not really pure good and I know it your family knows and you as well at best you're a grey acting to be a good guy. Hikari's expression remained unreadable as he listened to Natsuki's words, a flicker of uncertainty crossing his features before he quickly masked it with a composed facade. I won't deny that I've made my fair share of mistakes, he admitted quietly, his gaze fixed on the table before him. But I'm doing what I can to make things right, to protect the ones I care about. Whether that makes me a hero or not. Well, I'll leave that judgment to others. Despite his outward confidence, Hikari couldn't shake the nagging doubt that lingered in the back of his mind. Natsuki's words had struck a nerve, forcing him to confront the uncomfortable truth that perhaps he wasn't the paragon of virtue he had always believed himself to be. As he grappled with his own inner turmoil, Hikari couldn't help but wonder if he was truly deserving of the title of hero, or if he was merely playing a role in a story that was rapidly spiraling out of his control. Plush I am greedy person after all. I mean I got a wish and I wish to be a god and came to this world and for a while just like a god my power made me act good to morally god that is not me but ever since the level I started to become what I really am. Hikari said with a smile. But you're already me thanks to your dream about me. Natsuki regarded Hikari with a mixture of surprise and understanding, realizing that there was far more to him than met the eye. So, you're saying that your power shaped you into this. Heroic persona. She mused, her expression thoughtful. But deep down, you're still the same person you were before all of this. Hikari nodded, a wry smile tugging at the corners of his lips. In a way, yes. My wish may have granted me incredible abilities, but it couldn't change who I truly am at my core. And maybe. Just maybe, that's okay. As they sat in quiet contemplation, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a newfound respect for Hikari, recognizing the complexity of his character beneath the veneer of heroism. In that moment, she realized that there was more to their relationship than she had initially thought, and she was eager to explore the depths of his true self, whatever they may entail. Greed if I had to give you a sin it would be greedy. After all you out greed what made you a god, what sin will you give if I have to say probably lust? Hikari chuckled at Natsuki's observation, acknowledging the truth in her words. You're not wrong, he admitted with a sheepish grin. My desire for power, for something greater, led me down this path. And as for you. He trailed off, his gaze softening as he looked at her. Lust, huh? He repeated, his tone teasing yet affectionate. Well, I suppose that's one way to put it. But I'd say it's more about passion, wouldn't you? Your fierce determination, your unwavering commitment to what you believe in. It's one of the things I admire most about you. Thanks, I guess we both are wearing masks aren't we? I mean what is so wrong with your just trying to keep everyone a good look? Hikari nodded, a somber expression crossing his features. Sometimes, masks are necessary, he replied, his voice tinged with a hint of sadness. But they can also become suffocating, trapping us in roles we didn't choose for ourselves. It's a delicate balance, isn't it? Between protecting those we care about and staying true to who we really are. When are you going to get rid of you mask? Natsuki said looking at him. I left mine when I ran from home and came to your family. Hikari sighed, considering her words carefully. I'm not sure, he admitted, his gaze searching hers. Maybe one day, when I feel like I don't need it anymore. But for now, it's become a part of me, for better or for worse. He reached out and gently took her hand in his. Thank you for seeing past it, though. It means a lot. But if there was pure good person in our group it is probably Sayori or MC. I mean I have player the game before so I know. It's true, Natsuki nodded, a fond smile gracing her lips. They both have that innocence about them, don't they? It's like they're untouched by the darker parts of the world. She glanced over at Sayori and MC, who were engrossed in their own conversation. It's kind of refreshing, actually. Yeah, Natsuki agreed, her expression turning thoughtful. Alaster is definitely more than meets the eye. I've sensed something different about him too, but I can't quite put my finger on it. It's like he's keeping a part of himself hidden, even from us. She glanced over at Alaster, who was engaged in conversation with the pink-haired girl. Whatever it is, it's intriguing. 
everyone is wearing a mask. And that is what life is, lie, truth, half-truth, greed and everything. Indeed, Natsuki replied, her gaze lingering on Alastor for a moment before returning to Hikari. We're all just trying to navigate through this world, figuring out who we are and what we want. Sometimes, the masks we wear become so ingrained, we forget where they end and our true selves begin. She sighed softly. But maybe that's the beauty of it, the journey of uncovering those layers and discovering our true essence. And sometimes, our real selves are more darker than the ones we wear. Hikari says with a smile. After all, who knows what other things can be revealed. True, Natsuki nodded, a hint of solemnity in her expression. But maybe it's not about being purely light or purely dark. Maybe it's about finding balance within ourselves, embracing both our light and our shadow, and learning to navigate the gray areas in between. She paused, reflecting. That's where true growth and understanding lie. Aren't you being like a main character from a children's story book? I guess you're right. But some items why not be a hero? Chapter 22 The tournament continued with the Doki Doki team awaiting their next match. As they gathered in the waiting area, tension lingered among them, each member grappling with their own thoughts and uncertainties. Hikari, Natsuki, and the others found themselves in a rare moment of calm before the storm of competition resumed. Hikari leaned against the wall, his mind drifting to the revelations of their earlier conversation. The mask he wore felt heavier than ever, concealing the complexities of his true self. Beside him, Natsuki's gaze held a mixture of concern and determination, her own struggles echoing his. Meanwhile, Monica busied herself with organizing their strategy, her mind racing with the implications of their discussions. She couldn't shake the feeling that beneath the facade of camaraderie, each member harbored secrets and shadows. As they awaited their next opponent, uncertainty hung thick in the air, a palpable reminder of the challenges yet to come. With each passing moment, the Doki Doki team braced themselves for the trials ahead, unsure of what awaited them on the battlefield. Well, well students I hope you have ate well because the battle royale starts now. The announcer said as each student in each team was teleport Mermeb where only 10 teams can survive. As everyone seems to be split from their own team each member in a different part of the arena which was basically a mix of elemental R, a forest, a river, a volcano site and many more. The Doki Doki team found themselves scattered across the diverse landscape of the arena, each member facing their own unique challenges. Hikari emerged in a dense forest, the canopy overhead casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. His senses heightened as he scanned his surroundings, the sounds of rustling leaves and distant cries echoing through the trees. Meanwhile, Natsuki found herself near the edge of a raging river, its frothy waters churning with an ominous intensity. She clenched her fists, steeling herself against the rushing current as she searched for any sign of her teammates or potential threats. Monica navigated the rocky terrain of a volcanic crater, the air thick with the scent of sulfur and the distant rumble of molten lava. She tread carefully, her eyes darting between the jagged rocks and billowing plumes of smoke, wary of hidden dangers lurking within the fiery landscape. Yuri traversed the shifting sands of a desert expanse, the blistering sun beating down upon her as she sought refuge from the scorching heat. She shielded her eyes against the glare, her focus sharpening as she scoured the horizon for any sign of movement or shelter. Meanwhile, MC and Sayori found themselves in a dense maze of twisting corridors and labyrinthine passages, the walls closing in around them with an oppressive sense of claustrophobia. They pressed forward, their steps echoing in the eerie silence as they searched for a way out of the maze. As the battle royale raged on, each member of the Doki Doki team faced their own trials and tribulations, their fates intertwined in the intricate tapestry of the arena. With the stakes higher than ever, they knew that only the strongest would emerge victorious in this ultimate test of strength and skill. Will looks like we meet again Alaster. Lila said looking at Alaster. Who knew both of us will be in the ice area? Seems like fate has a sense of irony, Alaster replied, his voice cool and composed despite the frosty surroundings. But don't mistake this for a reunion, Lila. We're not here to catch up on old times. Lila smirked, her icy blue eyes glinting with a hint of mischief. Of course not, darling. We're here for business, after all. And I must say, 
I've been looking forward to this rematch for quite some time. As they stood facing each other amidst the frozen landscape, the tension between them crackled like the frost on the ground, each of them poised and ready for the inevitable clash that lay ahead. In this icy arena, only one would emerge victorious, and neither of them had any intention of backing down without a fight. But this can wait. She said to Alastor. Boss doesn't want us to fight so early, I will go my way and you can find your tram. Alastor nodded in agreement. Agreed. There will be plenty of time for that later. Until then, stay out of my way, Lila. With a smirk and a flick of her wrist, Lila vanished into the icy mist, leaving Alastor to contemplate his next move. As he watched her disappear, he couldn't shake the feeling that their paths would cross again before the end of the tournament. But for now, he had his own objectives to focus on, and he wasn't about to let anything or anyone stand in his way. Meanwhile, Hikari found himself in the forest area of the arena. As he walked through the dense foliage, he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. His instincts told him that danger lurked around every corner, and he remained on high alert. Suddenly, he heard a rustling in the bushes nearby. Without hesitation, he summoned a barrier of light to shield himself as a precaution. Out of the shadows emerged a figure as it was a student. The student stepped forward, a confident smirk on his face. You must be Hikari, right? The god who descended from the heavens to join this tournament, he said mockingly. Hikari narrowed his eyes, sensing something off about the situation. Who are you, and how do you know about me? He demanded, readying himself for whatever was about to unfold. Really, your high and mighty ass just because I said, do you really think you're god? The student said. I hate argent asshole like you. Hikari's expression remained stoic as he observed the student's hostility. I never claimed to be a god, he replied calmly. But it seems you have some misconceptions about me. Care to enlighten me? Shut up and let's fight. The student said. Revel your through self. Hikari's smirk deepened as he considered the student's challenge. Very well, he said, his voice taking on a more serious tone. But be prepared, for what lies beneath the mask might not be what you expect. With that, he activated his powers, shedding the facade and revealing his true self to the stunned student. As the students watched in disbelief, Hikari's transformation sent shockwaves through their ranks. His aura shifted, emanating a sense of power and authority that demanded attention. With a smirk, Hikari stepped forward, his gaze piercing through the crowd. So, you think you know me, huh? He taunted, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Well, let me show you the real me. Without hesitation, Hikari unleashed a torrent of magic, the force of which shook the arena. His attacks were precise and calculated, each strike aimed at incapacitating his opponents with ruthless efficiency. The other students scrambled to defend themselves, but Hikari's newfound strength was overwhelming. With every move, he proved that he was not to be underestimated, his true power far exceeding anyone's expectations. No let's find the other in time to put that mask back on. And why not clear the whole forest while I am at it? Hikari ventured alone into the forest, his steps calculated and purposeful. The dense foliage seemed to part before him as if bowing to his presence, revealing the path ahead. With each stride, his aura exuded a potent mix of power and resolve, a stark contrast to the benign facade he often presented to the world. As he delved deeper into the forest, his true nature emerged, unmasked and unapologetic. He was no longer the virtuous hero but a force to be reckoned with, a master of his own destiny. As he had arrived to the water area as he saw Natsuki. As Natsuki pressed on towards the other side of the arena, she couldn't shake off the ominous sight above. The shattered emblems hung like ominous warnings in the sky, a grim reminder of the fierce competition that unfolded below. Each broken emblem symbolized a defeated team, their dreams of victory dashed against the unforgiving trials of the battle royale. The atmosphere crackled with tension as the remaining teams fought tooth and nail for survival, knowing that failure meant certain elimination. With every step, Natsuki felt the weight of the challenge ahead, determined to defy the odds and emerge victorious alongside her comrades. Natsuki's voice cut through the tension as she approached Hikari, her eyes reflecting a mix of awe and concern. Hikari, she began, addressing him and the other two members of their team. 
you took down three teams by yourself. Not surprised. Her words carried a mix of admiration and worry, recognizing the sheer power and skill displayed by Hikari in single-handedly dismantling their opponents. Yeah, just needed to let loose, Hikari replied, mimicking the action of removing a mask with a subtle gesture of his hand. Plus, I wanna send a message to the person watching me. His words carried a hint of determination, indicating his intention to assert his strength and presence to whoever might be observing their actions. As Lucifer and Lilith observed the forest match, they witnessed Hikari's formidable display of power as he effortlessly dismantled three opposing teams. His swift and decisive actions left no doubt about his capabilities. As he moved towards the water area, which was adjacent to the forest, his aura of authority and determination was unmistakable. Lilith glanced at Lucifer with a smirk. Seems like your father's little project is quite the force to be reckoned with, she remarked, her eyes gleaming with intrigue. Lucifer nodded, his expression a mix of pride and amusement. Indeed, he's proving to be more entertaining than I anticipated, he replied, his attention fixed on the unfolding spectacle. Let's see what he does next. He certainly has a flair for the dramatic, Lilith agreed, watching as Hikari unleashed his power on the water area. And he's not holding back, that's for sure. Lucifer chuckled. Yes, there's a certain charm to his unpredictability, he mused, leaning back in his seat. Let's see how far he can push himself. But I feel bad for his girlfriend. Lilith said looking at the screen as Natsuki is holding on for dear life. Poor girl. She seems resilient, Lucifer remarked, observing Natsuki's determined expression. She's holding her own despite the chaos around her. Quite impressive, really. Meanwhile, Monica was navigating through the arena, strategizing her next move. She knew she needed to be cautious, especially with the unpredictability of the battle royale. As she cautiously made her way through the forest, she couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. Something didn't feel right, and she couldn't quite put her finger on it. But she pushed those thoughts aside and focused on staying alert and finding her teammates. As Monica arrived at the water area, she was greeted by a chaotic scene. Natsuki clung to dear life, struggling against the relentless currents, while Hikari faced off against a staggering thirteen opponents, outnumbered but undeterred. Monica assessed the situation, her mind racing with potential strategies. She knew she had to act quickly to turn the tide in their favor. With a determined expression, she leaped into action, summoning her powers to create a barrier of energy around Natsuki, providing her with a moment of respite from the raging waters. Meanwhile, Hikari fought with ferocity and cunning, utilizing his powers to outmaneuver his opponents. Despite their overwhelming numbers, he held his ground, each movement calculated and precise as he countered their attacks with skillful precision. Monika knew she needed to support Hikari, but she also couldn't abandon Natsuki. With a split-second decision, she divided her attention, maintaining the protective barrier around Natsuki while simultaneously casting spells to disrupt the opponent's coordinated assault on Hikari. The battle raged on, each moment fraught with tension and uncertainty. But amidst the chaos, Monica remained focused, her determination unwavering as she fought alongside her teammates, ready to overcome whatever challenges lay ahead. Void Sphere, Thunderball Hikari said letting out the two attacks after seeing that Natsuki was safe. Now handle this U13. As Hikari unleashed his devastating attacks, the air crackled with energy, and the ground trembled beneath his opponent's feet. The Void Sphere, a swirling vortex of dark energy, engulfed several of his adversaries, trapping them in its gravitational pull. Meanwhile, the Thunderball surged forth, a sphere of crackling lightning that arced toward the remaining foes with unstoppable force. Caught off guard by the sudden onslaught, several opponents were incapacitated by the combined might of Hikari's spells. Others managed to evade the attacks, but their numbers were significantly diminished, their ranks thinning under the relentless assault. With a determined expression, Hikari pressed the advantage, closing in on his weakened foes with calculated precision. His movements were fluid and precise, each strike delivered with deadly intent as he systematically dismantled their defenses. Meanwhile, Monica continued to provide support from the sidelines, her spells bolstering Hikari's efforts and keeping their opponents off balance. Together, they formed a formidable team, their coordination and teamwork proving invaluable in the heat of battle. 
As the dust settled and the last of their adversaries fell, Hikari and Monica stood victorious, their resolve unshaken and their determination unwavering. With a nod of acknowledgement, they regrouped with Natsuki, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them in the trials to come. WH, 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 what are you? One of the students said to Hikari. Are you a monster? Hikari regarded the student with a cool demeanor, his expression unreadable as he contemplated the question. After a moment of silence, he finally spoke, his voice steady and composed. I am no monster, he replied, his tone firm yet tinged with a hint of mystery. But I am something far more than just a mere mortal. Call me what you will, but know this, I am the product of ambition, the embodiment of power, and the harbinger of change. But I am also, chaos, death, and destruction. Hikari said to the student letting his mask slip a bit. Now night night. The student's eyes widened in fear as they comprehended the gravity of Hikari's words. Before they could react, Hikari unleashed a surge of dark energy, engulfing the area in a maelstrom of chaos and destruction. The other students watched in horror as the overwhelming power of Hikari's unleashed abilities left devastation in its wake. As the dust settled and the echoes of the chaos faded, Hikari stood amidst the aftermath, his expression unreadable. The student who had questioned him lay unconscious on the ground, a testament to the overwhelming force they had just witnessed. With a solemn gaze, Hikari turned away from the scene, his thoughts veiled in mystery. Whatever darkness lurked within him, it was clear that Hikari was a force to be reckoned with, his true nature shrouded in ambiguity and intrigue. What the hell is your boyfriend Natsuki? Monica said as was looking at Natsuki. Also don't ask how I know it is kinda obvious. Natsuki shot Monica a wry smile. Oh, you figured that out, huh? She replied with a hint of amusement. Well, let's just say there's more to him than meets the eye. But don't worry, he's got his reasons for keeping things under wraps. She glanced back at Hikari, who remained stoic amidst the chaos of battle. Meanwhile with MC and Sayori they finally made it out of the maze after fighting an ungodly amount of students. Phew, that was intense, MC remarked, wiping sweat from his brow as they emerged from the maze. I didn't expect it to be that challenging. Sayori nodded in agreement. Yeah, but we made it through together. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Definitely, MC agreed with a smile. Now, let's see what else this tournament has in store for us. Will looks like I need new sword. MC looks at his twin blades broke by all the battle. I will just buy from the level up shop which own should I pick. Maybe you could go for something with a bit more durability this time, Sayori suggested, examining the broken blades. Or perhaps something that enhances your speed or agility could be useful in future battles. With Yuri she was fighting off her enemy in the desert area, she was so close to the next area. As Yuri wielded her weapon with precision, she blocked the enemy's strikes and countered with calculated moves. The sand beneath her feet was hot, but she focused solely on her opponent. With a swift maneuver, she disarmed the enemy and swiftly moved forward, determined to reach the next area of the tournament grounds. May I help? Alastor said walking in. After all why shouldn't I help out a team member? Yuri nodded, grateful for the assistance. Of course, Alastor. Let's take them down together, she replied, ready to fight alongside her teammate. With Alastor's support, they swiftly dispatched their opponents and advanced further into the tournament grounds. As they progressed, Yuri couldn't shake off the feeling of unease about Alastor's intentions. Despite his assistance, she couldn't help but wonder if there was more to his actions than just helping a teammate. However, she pushed those thoughts aside, focusing on the immediate challenge at hand. Together, they navigated through the desert area, encountering and defeating more opponents along the way. All right everyone the ten teams have been chosen. Each for though the team will be shown on the screen. The tension in the arena rose as everyone awaited the announcement of the chosen teams. The screen flickered to life, displaying the names of the fortunate teams who had made it through the grueling challenges. Among them, the Doki Doki team's name flashed brightly, eliciting cheers from their supporters. As the list scrolled through, the excitement in the air was palpable, each team eager to prove themselves in the final rounds of the tournament. Alastor's gaze narrowed at the mention of Lila's team, Forever Crust. 
His mind raced with memories of past encounters with the formidable Lila, a skilled adversary and member of the Shadow Group. Despite their history, Alastair remained focused, knowing that their paths were bound to cross once again in the fierce competition ahead. Chapter 23 Meanwhile back to Lucifer. Lucifer reclined in his chair, watching the tournament unfold with keen interest. His eyes flickered with amusement as he observed the intense battles raging in the arena. Despite the chaos, he maintained an air of detached amusement, reveling in the spectacle of power and ambition displayed by the participants. As the tournament progressed, Lucifer's mind churned with thoughts of strategy and opportunity, ever eager to seize upon the unfolding events to further his own agenda. Is this really still safe? Lilith said. Children should not get involved in what is basically military school fighting each other. Lucifer turned to Lilith, his expression inscrutable. Safety is but an illusion, my dear, he replied with a sly smile. These children are but pawns in a larger game, and their participation in this tournament merely serves to prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead. Besides, where's the fun in safety when one can revel in the thrill of danger and ambition? Lilith shook her head, her concern evident in her eyes, but Lucifer's gaze remained fixed on the unfolding events, his mind already calculating the next move in his intricate game. Even do you're not starting a war this time. Lilith said looking at her husband. You still think even this universe is a part of your father plan. Lucifer chuckled softly, his eyes glinting with amusement. My dear Lilith, you underestimate the complexity of my father's machinations, he said cryptically. Every move, every event, is but a piece on the cosmic chessboard, orchestrated with meticulous precision. Whether this universe is a pawn or a player in his grand design remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, we are but spectators in a game of gods. Lilith sighed, knowing that her husband's schemes extended far beyond her comprehension, and turned her attention back to the unfolding spectacle before them. After all it takes a multiversal entity like me to understand another multiversal entity like Father. Lucifer said with a smirk. After all there can only be one creator, they can be one Lucifer, one Michael and one of each of my cyst and brother. Lilith nodded, acknowledging the complexity of their father's existence. Indeed, the intricacies of divine beings are beyond mortal comprehension, she murmured. But let us focus on the present, my dear. Our son's exploits in this tournament are quite entertaining, wouldn't you agree? Despite her concerns about the involvement of young mortals in such perilous endeavors, Lilith couldn't help but be intrigued by the unfolding events. As the screen then shows MC as he was there, as Lilith saw him with a smile. I hope the family we left our dear little boy is treating him correct. Lilith said looking at MC. After all they better be or else. Lucifer chuckled softly. I'm sure they are, he replied, his gaze fixed on the screen. But even if they aren't, our dear little boy seems to be doing just fine on his own, doesn't he? Lilith nodded in agreement, her smile reflecting a mixture of pride and amusement as they continued to watch the tournament unfold. And by the looks of my gift the system has started to work after so long. Lucifer said. I wonder what evil thought is going through his head. It's certainly intriguing, Lilith mused, her gaze lingering on the screen where the tournament was unfolding. But knowing our son, it's bound to be something. Interesting. She couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation for what would come next, knowing that their son's involvement would undoubtedly add a twist to the proceedings. Meanwhile with MC he was just singing, it is a bird. The tournament had reached its climax as the remaining teams braced themselves for the final battles. Amidst the tension, whispers of strategy and determination filled the air. As the announcer's voice boomed across the arena, the anticipation reached its peak. In the midst of the chaos, Hikari stood at the forefront of his team, his gaze piercing through the fray. With each opponent vanquished, his true power became increasingly evident. Yet, hidden beneath his confident exterior lay a complex web of emotions and motives, known only to himself. As the final battles loomed ahead, Hikari prepared to confront not only his adversaries but also the shadows lurking within. It looks like the tournament is coming to an end. Alastair said looking at the team. Which means one thing TRH event we have been waiting for is new. As the tension mounted, the anticipation of the upcoming event hung thick in the air. 
the Doki Doki team stood poised, their eyes reflecting a mixture of determination and apprehension. With the culmination of the tournament drawing near, the true test of their mettle awaited, promising to push them to their limits and beyond. Quidditch matches are almost here. Hikari says looking at the remaining team with his team there was a total of 10 teams left. Which means the training we did for this has to pay off. With the Quidditch matches on the horizon, Hikari's words resonated with a sense of urgency. The remaining teams stood on the precipice of a challenge that would demand their utmost skill and teamwork. As they prepared to take to the skies, the echoes of their training reverberated through their minds, reminding them of the dedication and effort they had invested. Victory beckoned, but so too did the looming specter of defeat. It was time to prove themselves worthy of the title they sought, to soar to new heights and seize the glory that awaited them in the Quidditch arena. The anticipation hung thick in the air as the teams geared up for the Quidditch matches. Each member felt a mixture of excitement and nervousness, knowing that the outcome of these matches would determine their standing in the tournament. Hikari, ever the strategist, gathered his team together to reinforce their game plan one final time. We've trained hard for this moment, Hikari began, his voice resolute. But remember, success in Quidditch doesn't just depend on individual skill. It's about teamwork, communication, and quick thinking. We need to watch each other's backs, anticipate our opponents' moves, and seize every opportunity that comes our way. Nods of agreement rippled through the group as they listened intently to Hikari's words. They knew that their success relied not only on their individual prowess but also on their ability to function as a cohesive unit. As they made their way to the Quidditch arena, the atmosphere crackled with energy and anticipation. The cheers of the crowd reverberated around them, adding to the sense of excitement. With their hearts pounding and adrenaline coursing through their veins, the Doki Doki team prepared to take flight and show the world what they were made of. Let's do this is everyone ready? Natsuki said as he raised her hand up. Let's do this. With a determined look in her eyes, Natsuki's rallying cry echoed through the team, igniting a fire within each member. They shared a collective nod, their resolve solidified as they stood shoulder to shoulder, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Yeah, we're ready. MC exclaimed, his voice filled with determination. Let's show them what we're made of. Sayori added, her trademark optimism shining through. Yuri's expression was steely as she tightened her grip on her broomstick. We've trained for this moment. Let's make it count. Hikari's smirk was evident as he surveyed his team. Remember our strategy, stay focused, and leave everything on the field. We've got this. With their spirits high and their determination unwavering, the Doki Doki team took to the skies, their eyes set on victory. As then the announcement came as everyone looks at the screen as they see the first round as it shows the Doki Doki group is fighting a team called the Emerald Green Lightning. The anticipation in the air was palpable as the Doki Doki team prepared to face off against their opponents, the Emerald Green Lightning. With their previous victories from the previous matches, in the tournament fueling their confidence, they approached the match with determination and focus. Hikari, any special strategies for this match? Natsuki asked, her eyes glinting with excitement. Hikari nodded, his gaze scanning the field. We'll stick to our strengths and adapt as needed. Let's exploit their weaknesses and stay one step ahead. The team nodded in agreement, each member ready to give their all in the upcoming match. As they took their positions on the field, the tension mounted, and the crowd erupted into cheers, eager to witness the clash between two formidable teams. The referee blew the whistle, signaling the start of the match, and the players soared into action. The Emerald Green Lightning proved to be worthy adversaries, their speed and agility posing a formidable challenge for the Doki Doki team. But the Doki Doki team was undeterred, their teamwork and coordination shining through as they executed their plays with precision. With each pass, block, and goal, they gained momentum, slowly but steadily pulling ahead in the match. As the final minutes ticked away, the tension reached its peak. The score was neck and neck, with both teams giving their all in a desperate bid for victory. As Hikari positioned himself for what could be the game-winning goal, his focus was unwavering. But just as he prepared to strike, his keen eyes caught sight of a rival player making a daring move towards a gleaming golden object soaring through the air. Recognition dawned upon him, 
sending a jolt of adrenaline coursing through his veins. It was no ordinary object it was the Golden Snitch, a legendary artifact coveted by seekers in the sport of Quidditch. Its capture would instantly end the match, regardless of the current score. Realization struck Hikari like lightning. Their opponents had unleashed their secret weapon, banking on the snitch to snatch victory from their grasp at the last moment. With the match hanging in the balance, Hikari knew that swift action was required to prevent disaster. With lightning reflexes, he abandoned his pursuit of the goal and veered off course, hurtling towards the snitch with determination blazing in his eyes. The stadium erupted into a frenzy as spectators watched in awe, the tension palpable in the air. The competition intensified as Hikari and the opposing seeker engaged in a thrilling aerial duel, each maneuvering with skill and precision in a desperate bid to claim the elusive snitch. The outcome of the match hinged on this pivotal moment, every heartbeat echoing like a thunderous drumroll. As they soared through the sky, twisting and turning in a breathtaking display of agility, Hikari's resolve remained unshakable. With unwavering focus, he summoned every ounce of his strength and determination, his eyes locked on the prize shimmering tantalizingly before him. In a heart-stopping climax, Hikari made a daring lunge, his fingers brushing against the golden surface of the snitch. Time seemed to stand still as he held his breath, the world around him fading into oblivion. And then, in a burst of triumph, Hikari emerged victorious, clutching the golden snitch triumphantly in his grasp. The stadium erupted into thunderous applause as cheers reverberated through the air, heralding the Doki Doki team's remarkable triumph in the face of adversity. With a beaming smile, Sayori approached Hikari, who had collapsed onto the ground, exhausted yet victorious. She extended a hand to help him up, her eyes shining with pride and admiration. We did it, she exclaimed, her voice filled with elation. Our first Quidditch match, and we emerged victorious. Hikari, still catching his breath, managed a weary grin as he accepted Sayori's hand and pulled himself upright. Despite the fatigue weighing heavily on him, a sense of accomplishment surged through his veins, fueled by the adrenaline of their hard-fought triumph. It wasn't easy, he admitted, wiping sweat from his brow, but we pulled through together. That's what matters. As the rest of their teammates gathered around, basking in the glow of their success, Hikari couldn't help but feel a swell of pride in their collective achievement. They had faced formidable challenges, but their unity and determination had carried them to victory. Now, Hikari declared, his voice ringing with determination, let's keep this momentum going. We've got more matches to win, and I know we're capable of even greater things. With renewed resolve, the Doki Doki team rallied together, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead on their Quidditch journey. The thrill of victory fueled their spirits, propelling them forward with unwavering determination and camaraderie. Nice safe Hikari. MC says as he looks at him. I was also going to catch if you didn't notice. MC's playful jab elicited a chuckle from Hikari, who flashed a sheepish grin in response. Thanks, he replied, offering a nod of appreciation. But let's be honest, you were totally going to catch it anyway. You've got those lightning reflexes, after all. The camaraderie between the two friends was evident as they shared a light-hearted moment amidst the post-match celebration. Despite the competitive nature of the game, their bond remained unshakable, grounded in mutual respect and support. Next time, I'll make sure to leave some glory for you, Hikari added with a wink, his exhaustion momentarily forgotten in the glow of their victory. Monika's thoughts drifted as she observed Sayori's and Natsuki's concern for MC and Hikari. The question lingered in her mind, was Sayori dating MC too? The dynamics of their relationship seemed to hint at something more than just friendship, but Monica couldn't be certain. As the group gathered to celebrate their victory, Monica resolved to keep a closer eye on the interactions between Sayori and MC, searching for any clues that might confirm her suspicions. After all, in the midst of intense competition and budding romances, secrets had a way of revealing themselves in unexpected ways. So, um, we need to get off the field, the next team match is starting. Yuri says as she point at two other team coming in. Let's start going okay. Yuri's words snapped the group back to attention, reminding them of the ongoing tournament. With a nod from Hikari, they quickly made their way off the field to make room for the next teams. As they walked, the anticipation for their next match began to build, fueling their determination to continue their winning streak. 
Chapter 24 The stadium was buzzing with excitement as the next round of matches was about to begin. The Doki Doki team gathered near the edge of the field, their anticipation palpable. As they waited for their opponents to arrive, Hikari addressed the group. All right, everyone, this is where we show them what we're made of. Let's stick to our strategies and give it our all. So this is the semi-finals so how many teams are left? MC asked. I kinda forgot to count when they started to fight in the Quidditch match for them started. That would be counting us five left. Yuri says. After all half was Eli mated one of the team will be moved to the final the other two need to fight to see which one will fight the one already sent to try finally. That makes sense, Sayori chimed in. So, we just need to focus on winning this match to secure our spot in the finals. She flashed a determined smile, echoing the team's resolve. As the board showed which team was selected to go to the final as it was a team called the Volcano as their team was moves up to the final. That's our competition for the final, Monica observed, scanning the information on the board. They must be tough opponents if they made it this far. We need to be prepared for anything. We will only fight if, we made to the final for now we have match to win. So yeah let's see who we are fighting. As they looked at the screen, they saw the names of the two teams competing for the other spot in the final, Team Blizzard and Team Shadowstorm. Interesting, Alastair remarked, eyeing the screen intently. Looks like we'll have to keep an eye on both teams, regardless of who wins. Wait this means. Alastair thought to him as he saw Lila and her team was coming from the other side. We need to fight her. Alastair said hating this. As Lila and her team approached, Alastair felt a sense of dread creeping in. We need to fight her, he said, his distaste evident in his voice. Alastair's mind raced with the implications of facing off against Lila. The rules of their shadow group explicitly forbade such conflicts, and the consequences for breaking them could be severe. Frustration and anxiety gnawed at him as he pondered his unlucky predicament. With a heavy heart and a sense of impending trouble, Alastair readied himself for the match against Lila's team. As the Quidditch pitch stretched out before them, tension hung thick in the air. The referee's whistle pierced the silence, signaling the start of the match. Both teams shot forward, vying for control of the quaffle. Alastair's mind raced, trying to devise a strategy that would allow his team to compete without directly confronting Lila's. They needed to win without breaking the rules of their shadow group. As the game progressed, Alastair deftly dodged opposing players, his focus split between scoring goals and keeping an eye on Lila's movements. He couldn't afford to let his guard down, not with the stakes so high. Despite his best efforts, Lila's team managed to gain the upper hand. They moved with precision and skill, their coordination unmatched. Alastair gritted his teeth, frustration bubbling up inside him. This wasn't just about winning the match it was about protecting his team and maintaining the delicate balance within their shadow group. But as the final whistle blew, signaling their defeat, Alastair couldn't shake the sinking feeling in his chest. He knew that facing the consequences of this loss would be the least of their worries. Ah how are they so good? Natsuki said as she was using spells. And you why are you not helping? She said looking at Alastair. Alastair sighed, his gaze fixed on the scoreboard displaying their team's dwindling chances. I'm doing what I can, Natsuki, he replied, frustration evident in his voice. But we're up against tough competition. And besides, I have my own. Limitations. He clenched his fists, a mix of regret and resentment swirling within him. Despite his best efforts to support the team, he couldn't shake the feeling of inadequacy. They were counting on him, yet he couldn't fully unleash his powers without risking dire consequences. But as Natsuki's spells continued to rain down on their opponents, a glimmer of determination flickered in Alastair's eyes. I'll do what I can to turn this around, he vowed, a steely resolve settling over him. Even if it means pushing my limits. No time, everyone stop playing the defense and just attack and get points. Hikari yelled anger in his voice. It is time to stop playing. As for one more time today Hikari let him mask fall it was time to be a villain. As Hikari's voice echoed across the arena, a palpable shift occurred in the team's strategy. With newfound aggression, they surged forward, unleashing a relentless barrage of attacks on their opponents. 
Hikari, in particular, seemed transformed, his usual facade of benevolence replaced by an aura of menace. With each calculated move, he demonstrated a ruthlessness that caught even his teammates off guard. Gone was the reluctant hero in his place stood a formidable force driven by a singular purpose, victory at any cost. As the scoreboard began to tilt in their favor, Hikari's eyes gleamed with a fierce intensity. Behind his mask of charm and charisma lay a darkness that now seeped into every aspect of his being, fueling his determination to dominate the competition. For Hikari, this was no longer a mere tournament. It was a battleground where only the strongest would prevail, and he intended to emerge victorious, no matter the consequences. Void sphere, let it suck. Hikari said activating a pulling fact. Take this. With a sweeping gesture, Hikari summoned forth the void sphere, a swirling vortex of dark energy that engulfed their opponents. As they struggled against its relentless pull, their movements became sluggish, their spells faltering in the face of Hikari's overwhelming power. With a triumphant grin, Hikari watched as the opposing team was gradually drawn into the abyss, their efforts to resist futile against the relentless force of the void sphere. As they vanished into its depths, Hikari's team surged forward, seizing control of the arena with an unyielding resolve. In that moment, Hikari's true nature was laid bare for all to see a force to be reckoned with, capable of wielding the very fabric of reality to achieve his goals. And as the dust settled and the scoreboard flashed their victory, it was clear that Hikari's reign of darkness had only just begun. Seems like you've got a few tricks up your sleeve, Hikari, MC remarked with a wry grin. But hey, if it gets us the win, I'm not complaining. Just don't go turning everything purple on us next time, okay? Hikari chuckled in response, a glint of mischief in his eyes. No promises, he quipped, before turning his attention back to the field, his mind already racing with new strategies and possibilities. So that was the real Hikari. Monica though to herself as she saw what was really behind the mask. I guess he is a faker just like me, I mean he even made a joke out of this fanfic readers. Monica said to herself. Sorry should stop breaking the fourth wall. Monica couldn't help but feel a twinge of admiration mixed with a hint of envy as she observed Hikari's true nature revealed on the field. Well played, Hikari, she whispered quietly to herself, her mind buzzing with thoughts and reflections on the complexity of human nature. Perhaps we're not so different after all. As then Lila goes to Alastor with a smirk. You're in trouble. Lila said to Alastor loud enough only he can hear. What until the big man find our? Alastor's expression turned serious as he locked eyes with Lila, his mind racing to find a way out of the predicament they were in. We need to find a solution, fast, he thought to himself, knowing the consequences of their impending confrontation with their leader. Meanwhile, on the field, the intensity of the match only seemed to escalate as both teams fought fiercely for dominance. Spells and strategies clashed, creating a dazzling spectacle of magic and skill. Hikari, now fully embracing his darker side, unleashed devastating attacks that sent shockwaves through the opposing team's defenses. Natsuki, her determination unwavering, cast spell after spell with precision and speed, her eyes flashing with determination. Beside her, Alastor fought with a calculated ferocity, his mind racing with strategies to counter their opponent's moves while keeping an eye on the looming threat posed by Lila and her team. Monica, observing the chaos unfold, couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gripped her. Despite their remarkable display of power, she couldn't help but wonder about the consequences of revealing their true selves in the heat of battle. As the match reached its climax, she resolved to keep a close watch on her teammates, ready to intervene if things took a dangerous turn. As MC saw that one of Lila's team was going for the golden snitch, as he then flies through it. Yeah no you don't. MC said moving at high speed. Thunderbolt. The crackling energy of MC's thunderbolt surged through the air, intercepting the opposing player just as they reached out to grasp the golden snitch. With a resounding impact, the spell struck its mark, causing the would-be victor to falter and lose their grip on the elusive prize. Nice save, MC. Sayori cheered from below, her voice filled with excitement and relief. That was amazing. MC flashed a grin in response, his adrenaline pumping as he continued to soar through the air, keeping a vigilant eye on the field below. With the golden snitch still in play, 
the match was far from over, and he was determined to do whatever it took to secure victory for his team. I got it. Yuri screamed as she was holding the golden snitch. I did it everyone I did it. Yuri's triumphant cry echoed across the Quidditch pitch as she clutched the fluttering golden snitch in her hand. Her teammates erupted into cheers and applause, their excitement palpable as they realized victory was within their grasp. Way to go, Yuri! Sayori exclaimed, her voice filled with pride as she rushed over to join her teammate. You caught it! With the golden snitch secured, the Doki Doki team knew they had emerged victorious in their match against Lila's formidable opponents. As they celebrated their hard-fought win, anticipation and excitement filled the air, knowing that their journey through the tournament was far from over. Will, whatever we made so far. Lila said to her team. Always let's go and good luck Alastair. With a mix of disappointment and determination, Lila and her team regrouped, accepting their defeat with grace as they prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Alastair nodded silently, acknowledging her words before turning his attention back to the field. As the teams parted ways, the tension of the match lingering in the air, Alastair couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in the pit of his stomach. He knew that their journey was far from over, and that greater challenges awaited them in the battles yet to come. But for now, they would focus on regrouping and preparing for whatever lay ahead, drawing strength from each other as they faced the trials of the tournament together. So who won the other match? MC said looking at his team. Was it Team Shadow or Blizzard? Team Blizzard won. Hikari says to MC. They are going to be out challenger for the next round and Ahai ever wins will face the volcano I hope everyone is ready. As the teams prepared for the next round, tensions were running high. The Doki Doki group knew they were facing tough opponents, but they were determined to give it their all. Alright, everyone, listen up, Monica said, gathering the team together. We've come this far, and we're not going to let anything stop us now. We know Team Blizzard is strong, but we're stronger together. Let's focus, stay coordinated, and give it everything we've got. The team nodded in agreement, their resolve solidifying as they prepared for the intense match ahead. With their strategy in mind, they took to the Quidditch field once again, ready to face their formidable opponents. The match began with a fierce exchange of spells and maneuvers as both teams fought for control of the field. MC and Sayori soared through the air, dodging incoming attacks while attempting to score points for their team. Meanwhile, Yuri utilized her precision spellcasting to defend their goalposts, preventing Team Blizzard from gaining any easy points. Natsuki, fueled by determination, unleashed her powerful spells with precision, surprising even her own teammates with her skill. And Hikari, embracing his true abilities, unleashed his full potential, creating openings for his teammates with his strategic use of magic. Despite Team Blizzard's formidable tactics, the Doki Doki group refused to back down. With each passing minute, they grew more confident and coordinated, their teamwork shining through as they worked together to outmaneuver their opponents. As the match reached its climax, the tension on the field was palpable. With the score neck and neck, victory seemed within reach for both teams. In a final, heart-pounding moment, MC spotted the golden snitch darting through the air, and with a burst of speed, he raced after it, determined to secure the win for his team. With a swift and precise maneuver, MC reached out and caught the golden snitch, the crowd erupting into cheers as the Doki Doki group emerged victorious once again. Amidst the celebrations, the team exchanged smiles and congratulations, proud of their hard-fought victory. With their heads held high, they looked towards the final match, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead as they vied for the tournament championship. But then MC name was screamed as he saw Sayori was holding him as he saw the match was still going on. He sighed to himself. They put a spell on me. As MC realized he had been ensnared by an illusion, panic surged through him. He struggled against the spell's grasp, trying to break free and rejoin the match. Sayori, her expression filled with concern, tried to reassure him as she held him steady. Don't worry, MC. We'll figure this out together, Sayori said, her voice firm with determination. With Sayori's encouragement, MC focused his thoughts, drawing on his inner strength to break free from the illusion's hold. Slowly but surely, he felt the spell's grip weaken, until finally, with a determined effort, he broke through. 
With a gasp, MC returned to reality, his senses sharpening as he reoriented himself on the Quidditch field. He glanced around to see his teammates still locked in the intense match against Team Blizzard, their determination unwavering despite the setback. Drawing on his renewed resolve, MC rejoined the fray, determined to make up for lost time and help his team secure victory. With each passing moment, the match grew more intense, but with their teamwork and determination, the Doki Doki group pressed on, refusing to let anything stand in their way. As the match reached its climax once again, MC spotted the golden snitch darting through the air, and with a renewed sense of determination, he soared after it. With every ounce of skill and determination he possessed, he closed the distance, his hand outstretched to claim victory for his team. As MC reached out to grab the golden snitch, his fingers inches away from victory, a gasp rippled through the stadium. But just as he was about to seize it, the leader of Team Blizzard swooped in with astonishing speed, snatching the snitch right before MC's eyes. Shock and disbelief spread across MC's face, mirrored by the stunned expressions of his teammates and the spectators. As the leader of Team Blizzard held the golden snitch triumphantly in the air, a mixture of disappointment and frustration washed over MC. He couldn't believe they had come so close, only to be outmaneuvered at the last moment. Sayori rushed to MC's side, concern etched on her face. Are you okay, MC? That was so close. MC forced a smile, trying to shake off his disappointment. Yeah, I'm fine. Just. Caught off guard, I guess. Meanwhile Hikari's expression darkened as he processed the loss. Anger, frustration, and a tinge of disbelief surged within him. He clenched his fists, his jaw tight with determination. We were so close, he muttered, his voice laced with intensity. But we let it slip through our fingers because of some cheap trick. His gaze swept over the team, each member reflecting a mix of disappointment and determination. This isn't over, he declared, his tone firm. We'll use this defeat as fuel to come back even stronger. We'll learn from our mistakes and crush our next opponents. Let's show them what we're made of. With renewed resolve, the team nodded in agreement, their spirits bolstered by Hikari's unwavering determination to turn their setback into a comeback. As the tournament was over everyone got the mental, as everyone went home, as Hikari came to his room, Natsuki just looked at him, as he pulled out his scythe and made a gate to the Void Guardian as he stepped in as Natsuki was worried. Natsuki watched with a furrowed brow as Hikari summoned his scythe and created a gate to the Void Guardian. Concern etched her features, and she hesitated for a moment before speaking up. Hikari, wait, she called out, her voice tinged with apprehension. Where are you going? What about? Everything. Hikari turned to face her, his expression unreadable as he regarded her with a mixture of determination and resolve. I have to go, he replied, his voice firm but tinged with an underlying sense of urgency. There are things I need to take care of, things I can't ignore any longer. Natsuki stepped forward, her concern evident in her eyes. But what about us? What about our team, our friends? Hikari's gaze softened as he reached out to gently touch her cheek. I'll be back, Natsuki. I promise, he reassured her, his voice carrying a note of sincerity. But for now, I need to confront my past and ensure our future. With that, he stepped through the gate, leaving Natsuki standing in the silence of his room, her worries weighing heavily on her mind. Hey old man make, me a few things from the human world, chair, table will anything that can be easily broken. Hikari said anger in his voice. And don't ask just keep giving me them until I say I am done. The void guardian nodded silently, sensing the urgency in Hikari's request. Without a word, he began conjuring various items from the human world, crafting them with a skillful hand and presenting them to Hikari one by one. Each object appeared before him, ready to be used for whatever purpose he had in mind. Hikari's expression remained stoic as he accepted the items, his mind consumed with thoughts of his next move and the challenges ahead. As then Hikari grabbed each of the item, and one by me broke them each with anger and hate in his face, as he was letting out all the anger he had. I hate your. He yelled. I hate the Blizzard team. Even do what he said to his team Hikari was very anger and he just wants to destroy. The Void Guardian observed silently, his presence unwavering as Hikari vented his frustrations. 
The room echoed with the sound of breaking objects, each crash punctuating Hikari's anger. Despite the chaos, the Void Guardian remained calm, understanding the weight of Hikari's emotions. As the last item shattered, Hikari's fury seemed to dissipate, leaving behind a sense of emptiness and exhaustion. The Guardian waited patiently, ready to offer support or guidance if needed, as Hikari grappled with his tumultuous emotions. I am done thanks for all of that. Hikari said done breaking things. Sorry about that a god should not be like that. It's alright, the Void Guardian replied in a soothing tone. Even gods are entitled to moments of anger and frustration. What matters is how you choose to channel those emotions. With a gentle nod, he gestured towards the broken remnants of the room. Take your time to collect yourself. If you need anything else, I'll be here. Thanks but yeah you're right, but still I will going back. Hikari said looking at his fist. I wanna ouch someone so bad. He thought to himself as he returned to Natsuki. It's good to see you back, Natsuki said softly, concern evident in her eyes. Are you feeling better now? Hikari managed a faint smile, though the turmoil in his eyes remained. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just needed to let off some steam. Natsuki nodded understandingly, though worry still lingered in her expression. Well, I'm here if you need anything. You know that, right? Hikari nodded. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Natsuki. With a sigh, he sat down beside her, grateful for her presence. Meanwhile from the window, two people were watching these two were Lilith and Lucifer both in their bird form one was white crow while the other was a black crow. Lilith and Lucifer observed silently from their perches, their avian forms blending into the surrounding darkness. The tension in the air was palpable as they watched Hikari and Natsuki, exchanging knowing glances between them. Trouble in paradise? Lilith mused, her voice echoing softly in the night. Lucifer nodded, his piercing gaze fixed on the pair below. Seems like it. But perhaps it's just the beginning of something more. He tilted his head slightly, a cryptic smile playing on his beak. Lilith raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What do you mean? I mean, Lucifer replied, his voice tinged with anticipation, that sometimes, chaos brings about unexpected outcomes. And in chaos, there is opportunity. You're not thinking what you are thinking right? Lilith said as then she just signed. You are thinking you're going to give him the card. Yes I am looking at him he looks like he wants to pook someone. Lucifer said. So let him join my fighting ring. Lilith's feathers ruffled slightly at Lucifer's suggestion. You can't be serious. Bringing him into your fighting ring, especially now, could cause more trouble than it's worth. Lucifer cocked his head, considering her words. Perhaps you're right. But he's a wild card, Lilith. And sometimes, that's exactly what we need. Lilith sighed, knowing she wouldn't be able to dissuade him. Just be careful, Lucifer. He may be more than you bargained for. With a flutter of wings, the two crows took off into the night, leaving behind the looming shadows of their thoughts. Come no let's check out how out Sun is doing. Lilith said. I wanna see if I will a daughter-in-law in the future. She said. As they flew through the area of MC House. Lucifer let out a caw of amusement. Always thinking ahead, aren't you? Lilith shrugged, her feathers ruffling in the wind. Can't blame a mother for wanting to know about her child's future, especially when it involves potential in-laws. As they approached MC's house, Lilith's eyes twinkled with anticipation. Let's see what our dear son has been up to. As then MC turns his head looking at the crows. Weird feels like I know them. MC said looking at Lucifer and Lilith. But I should probably join Sayori she has made dinner, I should really thanks her for talking care for me so much Will and her family. Lucifer exchanged a glance with Lilith before responding, his voice ringing out with a certain charm. Ah, the kindness of friends and family. Indeed, it's a rare gem in this world. Lilith nodded, her eyes gleaming with a hint of mischief. Yes, do thank her properly. After all, gratitude is always appreciated. As MC walked away, Lucifer and Lilith exchanged knowing looks before continuing on their way, their cause carrying through the air. Wait what happened to the human we left with him? 
Lucifer asked wondering. Did they die when? No, they're still there. They seem to be talking to each other, probably discussing something. Lilith replied, her eyes flickering with curiosity. Should we intervene? Chapter 25 Hikari woke up with the memory of Benny yesterday's failed sports tournament replaying in his mind, the anger bubbling up within him. However, as he glanced at Natsuki sleeping peacefully beside him, he took a deep breath and felt a sense of calm wash over him. He quietly got out of bed, careful not to disturb Natsuki, and headed to the kitchen to make breakfast. As he cooked, he couldn't shake off the frustration of their loss. It gnawed at him, reminding him of his own limitations despite his powers. As he sipped his coffee, lost in his thoughts, Natsuki entered the kitchen, rubbing her eyes sleepily. She smiled at him, and he couldn't help but smile back, grateful for her presence. You two are up early. Came done his sister. Sisyrusly wise re two up so early on Saturday. Hikari glanced at his sister, still feeling a bit irritable. Couldn't sleep, he mumbled, not wanting to dwell on their defeat. Just felt like making breakfast. Natsuki chimed in, and I wanted to spend time with Hikari. His sister nodded, not pressing further, and joined them at the table. Are you still mad from yesterday? Natsuki asked Hikari. And don't lie. Yes yes I am. Hikari said looking at his girlfriend. I did everything even took of my mask and we lost to a cheap trick. Natsuki reached out and gently touched his hand. I understand you're upset, but dwelling on it won't change the outcome. We'll bounce back stronger next time. She offered him a reassuring smile, hoping to lift his spirits. Hikari sighed and nodded. You're right. I shouldn't let it consume me. He squeezed her hand gently in return, appreciating her support. Let's focus on what's ahead and make sure we're ready for whatever comes next. With a determined look in his eyes, he resolved to put the past behind him and face the challenges ahead with renewed determination. Hikari then finished his breakfast cheeking the date, he went out. Going to the store to buy a game I have waiting for. Hikari said putting his shoes on. See you guys later. As Hikari stepped out, he felt a sense of freedom wash over him. The crisp morning air filled his lungs as he made his way to the store. Despite the events of yesterday, he was determined to enjoy his day and take a break from the stress of the tournament. As he arrived at the shop he went to buy the game he was looking for. Hikari entered the shop and made his way to the video game section. He scanned the shelves until he found the game he had been eagerly waiting to play. Grabbing a copy, he headed to the checkout counter to make his purchase. As then Hikari head turned and his blood went cold, as he saw Lucifer as he was buying a game he didn't knew who this man was but everything was telling him to run you can't fight him. Can I help you boy? Lucifer said with a smirk. Oh how rude let me introduce myself you can call me Mr. L. Hikari's heart pounded as he faced the intimidating figure before him. He swallowed hard, trying to push down his fear. Um, no, I'm fine, he managed to reply, his voice wavering slightly. Just here to buy a game. He quickly paid for his purchase and hurried out of the store, feeling the weight of Mr. L's gaze on him all the way. Baldur Gates 3. Lucifer said the name of the game looking at it. Nice choice kid I am pretty sure it will be very popular. Hikari nodded nervously, not wanting to engage in further conversation with the mysterious figure. Uh, thanks, he muttered, clutching the game tightly as he made his way out of the store. The encounter left him feeling uneasy and he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Mr. L than met the eye. As Hikari hurried home, he couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. He kept glancing over his shoulder, half expecting to see Mr. L following him. When he finally reached his house, he let out a sigh of relief and quickly entered, locking the door behind him. Natsuki, something weird just happened, Hikari said, recounting the encounter with Mr. L at the store. Natsuki's eyes widened with concern as she listened to Hikari's story. That sounds creepy. Do you think he's dangerous? Hikari shrugged, still feeling unsettled. I don't know, but something about him gave me chills. We should be careful. Natsuki nodded in agreement, her expression serious. Definitely. Let's keep an eye out and stay cautious. 
With that, the two of them spent the rest of the day on edge, unable to shake off the eerie encounter with Mr. L. What could sacred you like I mean that Mr. L is human right? Natsuki said looking at her boyfriend with worry. I mean after that level up even Alastor doesn't scare you. Hikari sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, there was just something about him. It's hard to explain. He seemed. Off. And it wasn't just his presence it was like there was something lurking beneath the surface. Natsuki nodded, understanding the gravity of Hikari's unease. Well, whatever it is, we'll figure it out together. We always do. Hikari managed a weak smile, grateful for Natsuki's reassurance. I don't know what I'd do without you. They shared a comforting embrace, finding solace in each other's presence as they prepared to face whatever mysterious threat Mr. L might pose. But don't Natsuki don't go near him. He said he was half expecting them to get attacked. I don't know what he would do to you and if I can stop him. He said again this time his voice cracks. Natsuki placed a hand on Hikari's shoulder, her expression firm yet gentle. Hey, I'm not going anywhere near him, okay? We'll stick together, like always. And if anything happens, we'll handle it together. Hikari nodded, feeling a sense of relief wash over him at Natsuki's reassuring words. I just... I don't want anything to happen to you. I know, Natsuki replied softly. But we've faced tough challenges before, and we've always come out stronger. We'll get through this too, together. With a newfound resolve, Hikari and Natsuki left the store, their bond stronger than ever as they prepared to confront the mysterious threat lurking in their midst. Meanwhile with Lucifer he arrived back to his house a smirk was on his face as he saw Lilith was making food. Did you have to scare the little god like that? Lilith said to her husband. After all you saw the fear in his eyes. Lucifer chuckled as he leaned against the doorway, watching Lilith work her magic in the kitchen. Ah, come on, Lilith. You know how it is. Just a little harmless fun. Lilith raised an eyebrow, her expression playful yet knowing. Harmless fun, huh? You do realize he's not just any ordinary kid, right? He's got potential, and we don't want to push him too far. Lucifer nodded thoughtfully. You're right, as always. I'll tone it down a bit next time. But you have to admit, it's amusing to see how he reacts. Lilith chuckled, shaking her head fondly at her husband's antics. You never change, Lucifer. Always stirring up trouble wherever you go. With a grin, Lucifer joined Lilith in the kitchen, ready to enjoy a delicious meal and put aside his mischievous antics for the time being. As then Lucifer pulled out a business card as he looked at it. Let's see I will ask if want to join my fighting ring. He said looking at the card. After all it will good training and a way for him to get his anger out. Lilith paused in her cooking, shooting Lucifer a concerned glance. Are you sure about that, Lucifer? He's still just a kid. Getting involved in underground fighting rings might not be the best idea. Lucifer shrugged, twirling the business card between his fingers thoughtfully. It's not like he has to fight right away. It's more about offering him an opportunity. Besides, with his abilities, he might even enjoy it. Lilith sighed softly, knowing that Lucifer wouldn't easily back down from his idea. Just be careful, all right? We don't want to lead him down a dangerous path. With a reassuring smile, Lucifer pocketed the business card. Of course, my dear. I'll approach it delicately. But for now, let's focus on enjoying our meal together. As they continued to prepare dinner, both Lilith and Lucifer couldn't shake the feeling of uncertainty lingering in the air. And don't lie to him. Lilith said to Lucifer. Don't lie to him. As Lucifer looked at her with an anger look. I hate lies. Lucifer said look at his wife. I don't lie people that use lies are well you know so don't say that ever again. Lilith held her ground, meeting Lucifer's gaze with a determined expression. I'm not saying you lie, but sometimes the truth can be twisted, especially in delicate situations like this. Just promise me you'll handle it with care. Lucifer softened slightly, realizing the weight of Lilith's concern. All right, I promise to be careful and handle it delicately. I won't lie to him. With a nod of agreement, Lilith returned her focus to the meal, 
hoping that Lucifer would stay true to his word and navigate the situation wisely. As they cooked together, the tension in the air began to ease, replaced by a sense of cautious optimism. Lucifer's frustration was palpable as he reflected on the convoluted nature of his existence across the multiverse. Plush, I am not like that version of me from Marvel they made a deal with Spider-Man. That, one more day, thing sucks. Being a multiverse being like Lucifer meant being connected to all different versions of himself in every universe. Due to that, he knew everything, saw everything, and was everywhere. However, he wasn't at the level of his father, the Creator God. Lilith's frustration with Lucifer's repetition was evident in her voice. How many times will you keep repeating that? Like for how much longer? Lucifer let out a sigh, realizing he had been going on about it for too long. You're right, Lilith. I apologize. Let's focus on what needs to be done now. He tucked the business card away, a thoughtful expression on his face. We'll see what happens with Hikari. Gods and monsters. Lucifer said as he ate his food. That is what it will call. Lilith nodded thoughtfully. A fitting title. We'll see how these beings navigate their world of gods and monsters. That is through after all with Hikari finding out about me. Lucifer said drinking his cup of water. And if he dies join our team will probably have that name. Indeed, Lilith agreed. It will be interesting to see how he reacts to the offer. But how do you think our son is doing? Lilith said thinking about MC. Has said to that Sayori girl that he likes her more than a friend or does he like someone else? It's hard to say, Lucifer replied. But it seems he's growing fond of Sayori. Whether it's as a friend or something more, only time will tell. Chapter 26 MC woke up to the sound of birds chirping outside his window. Stretching his arms, he glanced at the clock and realized it was still early in the morning. He smiled as he remembered the events of the previous day the excitement of the Quidditch match, the camaraderie with his friends, and the delicious dinner Sayori had prepared for them. Feeling refreshed, MC got out of bed and headed downstairs to the kitchen. As he entered, he found Sayori humming a cheerful tune while preparing breakfast. Good morning, Sayori, MC greeted her with a warm smile. Morning, MC. Sayori replied, turning to face him. Did you sleep well? Yeah, I did, MC replied, taking a seat at the kitchen table. Thanks for letting me crash at your place last night. No problem at all. Sayori said cheerfully, setting a plate of pancakes in front of him. I'm just glad you're here. As they ate breakfast together, MC couldn't help but feel grateful for having Sayori as a friend. She always knew how to brighten his day with her infectious positivity. After breakfast, MC decided to spend the day with Sayori, enjoying each other's company and exploring the town. As they walked through the streets, they laughed and talked about everything and nothing at the same time. Eventually, they found themselves at a local park, sitting on a bench and enjoying the peaceful surroundings. The sun was shining, and a gentle breeze rustled through the trees. This is nice, MC said taking in the serene atmosphere. Yeah, it really is, Sayori agreed, leaning against him. I'm glad we decided to spend the day together. MC smiled, wrapping an arm around Sayori. In that moment, he felt content and happy, grateful for the friendship they shared. As the day drew to a close, MC walked Sayori home, bidding her farewell with a promise to meet again soon. As he made his way back to his own house, he couldn't help but feel a sense of warmth and happiness in his heart. As then MC gets a quest, from his system. Quest, low-level demon has entered the park find and eliminated the demon, and make sure it is eliminated failure to do this will allow the demon to grow stronger. MC read the quest notification on his system and felt a surge of determination. He knew that he had to act quickly to prevent any harm from coming to the people in the park. Without hesitation, MC headed back to the park, scanning his surroundings for any signs of the demon's presence. As he walked through the peaceful setting, he remained vigilant, ready to confront whatever danger lay ahead. Suddenly, he spotted a figure lurking in the shadows near a cluster of trees. Instinctively, MC approached, his senses on high alert. As he drew closer, he could sense the dark energy emanating from the creatureite was definitely the demon he had been tasked to eliminate. 
With a steady hand, MC reached for the weapon he had acquired from his Sisman enchanted sword capable of banishing evil entities. Gripping the hilt tightly, he stepped forward, his resolve unwavering. The demon sensed MC's presence and turned to face him, its eyes glowing with malice. Without a word, MC raised his sword and prepared to strike, his determination fueling his every movement. The battle was fierce and intense, the clash of steel echoing through the park. But MC fought with all his strength and skill, determined to vanquish the demon and protect the innocent. You boy. The demon asked MC looking at him. Why do you have the same energy as us are you a hybrid? MC paused, considering the demon's question carefully. He hadn't expected the creature to speak to him, let alone engage in conversation. I don't know, MC replied, his voice steady despite the uncertainty swirling within him. I'm just a regular person. Or at least, I thought I was. The demon regarded him with a mixture of curiosity and suspicion. There's something different about you, it remarked, its voice tinged with a hint of intrigue. I can sense it. Before MC could respond, the demon's form began to fade, its essence dissipating into the air. We'll meet again, boy, it whispered ominously, its words hanging in the air like a dark cloud. As the last traces of the demon vanished, MC couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered within him. What did the creature mean by hybrid? And what did it sense about him that he didn't even know himself? With a heavy heart, MC continued on his way, knowing that this encounter was just the beginning of a much larger mystery that awaited him. As then he sees the quests has been completed. You have gotten a level up fruit you can give it to your dragon help it level up and become stronger or you can give it someone else. MC pondered his options, weighing the benefits of each choice carefully. Helping his dragon companion level up would undoubtedly strengthen their bond and increase their chances of overcoming future challenges together. However, he also considered the potential benefits of empowering another ally, perhaps someone who could provide valuable support in battles to come. After a moment of contemplation, MC made his decision. With a determined expression, he reached out and offered the level up fruit to his loyal dragon companion, knowing that together, they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. There you go, buddy, MC said with a smile, patting the dragon affectionately on the snout. Let's make sure you're ready for anything. As the dragon eagerly consumed the fruit, a surge of energy coursed through its body, its scales shimmering with newfound power. MC watched with pride as his companion grew stronger, knowing that they were now more prepared than ever to face the dangers that awaited them. That you master. The white dragon said. Oh well look at that I can speak now that you very much, also you should give me name already you can just keep calling me dragon. MC chuckled at the dragon's newfound ability to speak and nodded in agreement. You're right, dragon. It's about time you had a proper name. He paused for a moment, considering his options before a name came to mind one that reflected the dragon's purity and strength. I'll call you Aegis, MC said with a smile. Because you'll always be there to protect and support me, just like a shield. No not Aegis how about this Albion? Albion said looking at MC. It is much better fitting name for me master. MC considered the name Albion, finding it quite fitting for the majestic dragon. Albion. I like it, he said with a nod. It's a powerful name, just like you. Albion let out a pleased rumble, clearly satisfied with his new name. With their bond strengthened and Albion now named, MC felt even more confident in their ability to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Together, they would continue their journey, ready to confront any threats that crossed their path. As he looked at the other half-eaten fruit he had an idea. I think I will give this to Sayori. MC said looking at it. After she needs to protect herself and I can't always be there for her. MC's decision to give the level up fruit to Sayori showed his care and concern for her well-being. With the power boost it would provide, she would be better equipped to defend herself in their dangerous world. It was a thoughtful gesture, one that reflected the strength of their friendship and his desire to support her. Meanwhile from the three a Cretan white crow looked at him as it had a smile. The white crow observed MC's actions with interest, perhaps hinting at a deeper connection or significance behind his decision to give the level up fruit to Sayori. Your growing will sun sooner than later you will learn about me. The white crow aka Lucifer said to himself. 
and once that time comes you will know who you really. Lucifer's cryptic words suggested a forthcoming revelation for MC, hinting at a significant role Lucifer might play in his life in the future. As MC walked back to his house only to find Sayori there, his parents are not home often mostly because of their work, due to that Sayori parent and she takes care for him most of the time. MC greeted Sayori with a smile as he entered the house. Hey, Sayori, I'm back. What's up? He asked, noticing her presence. Sayori smiled back at MC. Hey, MC. I just finished making some cookies. Want to try one? She offered, holding out a plate of freshly baked cookies. I thought it would be nice to have something sweet while we hang out. Sure also try this. MC said pulling out the level up fruit. I got from my system. It's a level up fruit, MC explained. It can help you become stronger and more resilient. I thought you could use it for protection when I'm not around. Sayori's eyes widened with surprise as she took the level up fruit from MC's hand. Wow, thank you so much, MC. This is really thoughtful of you. I'll make sure to use it wisely. MC smiled at her. You're welcome, Sayori. Just take care of yourself, okay? I will, I promise, Sayori replied with a grin. And if anything happens, I'll be sure to call on Albion for backup. Sounds like a plan, MC said, feeling relieved that he could trust Sayori to protect herself. After he got his white dragon, he learned that he can give someone else the ability to call Albion and he chose Sayori as he wanted to keep the her the most safe out of everyone, and she knows this. Flashbacks As MC handed the white dragon's summoning ability to Sayori, he felt a sense of relief knowing that she would have a powerful protector by her side. Sayori's eyes lit up with gratitude as she accepted the gift. Thank you, MC, Sayori said, her voice filled with warmth. I'll make sure to take good care of Albion and keep him close by. MC nodded, feeling a weight lifted off his shoulders. I know you will, Sayori. You're like family to me, and I want you to be safe. Sayori smiled, her expression softening. I feel the same way about you, MC. We'll look out for each other, okay? End of flashback. With a renewed sense of security, MC and Sayori spent the rest of the day together, enjoying each other's company and knowing that they had a powerful ally watching over them. But deep down there was another feeling, this what MC calls lust, he ever since he became old enough wanted to do some unholy thing with her but he holds it back, he did know why he had those feelings. But today what the demon said to him about being a hybrid were through then he knows why, for no he needs to learn more about demon and never let Sayori find out about this. As MC grappled with his newfound feelings, he couldn't shake the realization that there was a darker side to his nature. The demon's words had stirred something within him, a curiosity mixed with fear about his own identity. He couldn't deny the allure of his desires, but he also knew the danger they posed. Struggling to come to terms with these conflicting emotions, MC resolved to delve deeper into the world of demons and hybrids, seeking answers to the questions that plagued his mind. He knew he had to keep his darker impulses in check, especially when it came to Sayori. She was his friend, his confidant, and he couldn't bear the thought of betraying her trust. As he embarked on this journey of self-discovery, MC vowed to protect Sayori at all costs, even if it meant facing the demons within himself. But little did he know that his quest for understanding would lead him down a path fraught with danger and temptation, where the line between light and darkness blurred with every step he took. Yeah it is not like there is anyone else like that is dealing with demons. He said to himself. As at that moment Hikari was in his house as he sneezed. As Hikari sneezed, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over him since his encounter with Mr. L. The memory of their brief interaction lingered in his mind, filling him with a sense of foreboding. He knew that the man's presence was no mere coincidence and that there was more to him than met the eye. Despite his attempts to push aside his worries, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister was at play. He had always prided himself on his ability to navigate the complexities of the supernatural world, but Mr. L's enigmatic nature left him feeling unsettled. Deep down, Hikari knew that he would have to confront Mr. L eventually, but for now, he focused on honing his skills and preparing for whatever challenges lay ahead. 
Little did he know that his path would soon intersect with MCs, setting into motion a chain of events that would test their strength, their courage, and their resolve. Are you okay Hikari? Natsuki asked him as she holds his hand. You are scared again aren't you? Seeing this Natsuki, went and kissed him, as they melted into the kiss. As she was pulling up his shirt and Hikari was ready to take of her as he unzipped her back as then the heard someone coming splitting apart Hikari pulled his back down and Natsuki, zipped her clothes as they saw it was Hikari's sister. Hikari and Natsuki quickly composed themselves as Hikari's sister entered the room, a surprised expression on her face. Um, sorry to interrupt, she said awkwardly. I just wanted to see if you guys needed anything. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a quick glance before Hikari replied, No, we're good. Thanks, sis. His sister nodded and left the room, but the tension lingered in the air long after she was gone. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged another look, silently acknowledging the close call, before they both let out a nervous laugh. Um will she just cock blocked you? Natsuki said while laughing. I mean we were so close to doing it. Yeah, she did. Hikari replied with a chuckle, running a hand through his hair. Guess we'll have to find another time. Natsuki laughed too, though there was a hint of disappointment in her voice. Yeah, definitely. But at least we know we're both on the same page. They shared a smile before settling back into their previous activities, though now with a bit more restraint and awareness of their surroundings. Chapter 27 As Hikari entered his training area, he felt the weight of recent events heavy on his shoulders. Determined to channel his frustration and anger into something productive, he began his rigorous training regimen. With each strike, he sought to hone his skills, pushing himself to the limit both physically and mentally. Sweat poured down his brow as he focused on perfecting his techniques, his thoughts consumed by the desire to become stronger and overcome any obstacle in his path. As the hours passed, Hikari's movements became more fluid and precise. He unleashed a barrage of strikes and kicks, each one fueled by his determination to surpass his limits. With each repetition, he could feel his muscles growing stronger, his mind sharpening with every challenge he faced. Amidst the whirlwind of training, Hikari found a moment of clarity. He realized that his anger and frustration were not just obstacles to overcome but also sources of power that he could harness to propel himself forward. With newfound determination, he pushed himself even harder, refusing to let anything stand in the way of his goals. As the sun began to set, Hikari finally called an end to his training session. Though physically exhausted, he felt a sense of satisfaction knowing that he had pushed himself to the limit and come out stronger for it. With renewed confidence, he left the training area, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Now what do we have as Lucifer came into to Dogoba Beach? Nice to see you again kid. As he saw the trans covers are, as he looked at he relsied it was more clean than normal. Hikari, who had been deep in thought, turned to see Lucifer approaching. Despite his initial surprise, he maintained his composure and greeted him with a nod. Mr. L, Hikari acknowledged. What brings you here today? Lucifer glanced around the beach, taking in the pristine condition of the area. I see you've been keeping this place well maintained, he remarked with a hint of approval. Hikari shrugged modestly. Just trying to do my part, he replied. But enough about that. What did you want to talk about? Lucifer's expression grew serious as he spoke. I wanted to discuss a proposition with you, Hikari. I have an opportunity that I believe could benefit both of us. As then with flick of his finger half of the trash tunes into fire and then dust. Don't you will get into trouble. He said to the man. After all only mages with license can use their magic in public. Hikari's eyes widened slightly as he watched Lucifer effortlessly transform the trash into flames and then into dust. He glanced around nervously, aware of the potential consequences of such open use of magic in public. You shouldn't do that here, Hikari cautioned, his tone cautious. Using magic without a license could attract unwanted attention from the authorities. But what did you want to talk about? He said to Lucifer looking at him. Please do continue. Lucifer smirked, his gaze piercing as he looked at Hikari. I have an offer for you, Hikari, he said, his voice smooth yet laced with an underlying intensity. I've seen your potential, your power. 
You have a darkness within you, a hunger for more. That's something I can appreciate. Hikari's brows furrowed slightly, his curiosity piqued by Lucifer's words. What kind of offer? He asked cautiously, his eyes narrowing as he studied the enigmatic figure before him. I run a fighting ring, Lucifer explained, his tone casual yet purposeful. A place where those with extraordinary abilities come to test their strength, to push their limits, and to prove themselves against worthy opponents. I see that hunger in you, Hikari. You have the potential to be one of the best. Hikari listened intently, his mind processing the implications of Lucifer's proposition. And what's in it for me? He asked, his curiosity tempered by a hint of skepticism. Lucifer's smirk widened. Power, prestige, and the opportunity to face opponents unlike any you've encountered before, he replied smoothly. You have the chance to carve your own path, to rise above the rest and become a true force to be reckoned with. All you have to do is accept my offer. You're speaking like a devil. As then a light bulb turned on Hikari head. You are a devil not just that but they devil, no wonder you scree the living life out of me. Lucifer chuckled, the sound carrying an air of amusement. Call me what you will, Hikari. The title matters little. What's important is the opportunity before you. Embrace your potential, and the rewards will be beyond measure. Hikari's mind raced with possibilities, weighing the risks against the potential gains. What do I need to do? He finally asked, his voice tinged with newfound determination. Noting just give me a call. As he handed Hikari a business card. And for what I get simple a god in my fighting ring that is what. Hikari accepted the card, his mind already contemplating the implications of such an arrangement. I'll consider it, he replied, a smirk playing at the corners of his lips. But don't expect an easy win if I join your ring. Hikari looked at the business card in his hand, feeling a mixture of emotions. On one hand, the idea of joining Lucifer's fighting ring intrigued him. It could provide an outlet for his anger and frustrations. On the other hand, he was wary of getting involved with Lucifer and whatever schemes he might have. As he pondered his options, Hikari felt a hand on his shoulder. It was Natsuki, looking at him with concern. What did that man want? She asked, noticing the card in his hand. Hikari hesitated for a moment before explaining, he wants me to join his fighting ring. Natsuki's eyes widened in surprise. Join his fighting ring? That sounds dangerous, Hikari. Are you considering it? Hikari sighed, unsure of what to do. I don't know, Natsuki. Part of me is drawn to the idea, but another part of me is worried about what it might entail. Natsuki nodded understandingly. Just promise me you'll think carefully about it before making any decisions. We're in this together, remember? Hikari smiled gratefully at her. Of course, Natsuki. I won't do anything rash. With Natsuki by his side, Hikari felt a renewed sense of determination. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Hikari leaned back against the bench, the business card held loosely between his fingers. All right, let's weigh our options, he began, his tone serious. Natsuki nodded, her expression attentive. Sure, Hikari. What are you thinking? Hikari glanced around the beach, the sound of waves crashing against the shore providing a calming backdrop to their conversation. Well, first off, joining Lucifer's fighting ring could provide us with an opportunity to hone our skills, he said thoughtfully. We'd have access to more experienced fighters and training facilities that could help us become even stronger. Natsuki considered his words, her brow furrowed in thought. That's true, she admitted. But what about the risks? We don't know what kind of people we'd be dealing with in that ring. It could be dangerous. Hikari nodded, acknowledging her concerns. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too, he admitted. There's definitely a chance we could run into trouble, especially considering Lucifer's reputation. But, he continued, a hint of hesitation in his voice, there's also the potential for rewards. Fame, fortune, power. It's tempting, Natsuki. Really tempting. Natsuki sighed, running a hand through her hair. I get it, Hikari. I do, she said softly. 
but we can't let ourselves be blinded by the allure of those things. We have to think about the consequences of our actions. Hikari nodded, his expression grave you're right, Natsuki. We can't afford to make a decision lightly, he agreed. We need to weigh the risks and benefits carefully before we commit to anything. As they sat in contemplative silence, the weight of their decision hung heavy in the air. Whatever choice they made, it would shape their future in ways they couldn't yet comprehend. Hikari broke the silence, his voice firm. Ultimately, Natsuki, it comes down to what we value most, he said, his gaze meeting hers. Do we prioritize power and ambition, or do we prioritize safety and integrity? Natsuki nodded slowly, her eyes reflecting the gravity of their situation. I know what you mean, Hikari, she replied. And as much as I want us to succeed, I don't want to compromise who we are in the process. Hikari smiled, a rare expression of warmth crossing his features. I couldn't agree more, Natsuki, he said, his tone sincere. No matter what path we choose, we'll face challenges. But as long as we stay true to ourselves, we'll find a way through. With a sense of resolve, they both stood up from the bench, ready to face whatever lay ahead. As they walked along the beach, the waves crashing against the shore seemed to echo their determination. They may not have all the answers yet, but together, they were ready to navigate the uncertain waters of their future. I have an idea. Natsuki said as she looks at Hikari. If the devil wants you to fight in his ring we have an outside of the offer his protection, making sure we don't get eliminate or ignore in that way we get what we want and we don't die. Hikari pondered Natsuki's suggestion, recognizing its potential. That's a clever strategy, he admitted, impressed by her quick thinking. It could buy us time and keep us safe while we figure out our next move. Natsuki nodded, a determined glint in her eyes. Exactly, she replied. And if we play our cards right, we might even be able to leverage that protection to gain an advantage of our own. With a shared understanding, they set their plan into motion, knowing that navigating the dangerous world of demons and devils required cunning as well as strength. As they walked away from the beach, their steps were purposeful, their resolve unwavering. They may be playing a dangerous game, but they were determined to come out on top, no matter the cost. As they returned home, they went to their room Hikari pulled out his phone and the card as he was ready to call the devil himself. Hikari hesitated for a moment, staring at the card in his hand. The weight of the decision ahead hung heavy in the air as he dialed the number. Each ring seemed to echo the uncertainty of their situation. After a few moments, a voice answered on the other end. Mr. L speaking, came the smooth, confident voice of Lucifer. Mr. L, Hikari began, his tone steady despite the tension. We've considered your offer, but before we agree to anything, we have some conditions of our own. Lucifer listened quietly as Hikari outlined their terms, his expression unreadable. When Hikari finished speaking, there was a brief pause before Lucifer responded. Very well, Lucifer replied, his voice betraying no hint of emotion. I accept your conditions. We have a deal. With that, the call ended, leaving Hikari and Natsuki to contemplate the pact they had just made. As they exchanged a meaningful glance, they knew that their journey was far from over, but they were prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead, together. As with Lucifer, he was smirking as he looked at Lilith with a smile. I told you he will take it, Lucifer said to his wife. Now pay up. Lilith sighed, though there was a hint of amusement in her eyes. Fine, you win, she conceded, pulling out a small pouch of coins and handing it to Lucifer. But don't get too confident. That god may have agreed to your terms, but that doesn't mean he's completely under your control. Lucifer chuckled as he accepted the pouch. Of course, my dear, he replied, tucking the coins away. But I have a feeling our little arrangement will prove beneficial for all parties involved. With that, the couple shared a knowing look, each silently contemplating the unfolding events and the role they would play in shaping the future. But this also means one thing, Lilith said to Lucifer sternly. We're not getting our son involved in this. I don't want that. Lucifer nodded in agreement, understanding the gravity of her concern. Of course, Lilith. Our son will remain out of this, he assured her. Meanwhile, as MC sneezed, feeling like his name was called, he couldn't shake off the strange sensation that something significant was about to happen. 
Chapter 28 As there seemed to be fighting ring as in the ring seemed to be someone wearing a mask that looks like a hydra. As he sent a punch sending the other man flying as from the mask a emerald green eyes can been seize, this man was Hikari as he was having his first match. As Hikari faced his opponent in the fighting ring, the crowd roared with excitement. His adversary, clad in a mask resembling a hydra, lunged forward with a punch, but Hikari swiftly dodged and countered with a powerful blow of his own. With determination in his eyes, he fought fiercely, unleashing his skills honed through rigorous training. The masked opponent, known for their ferocity and skill, pushed back with relentless attacks, each strike met with Hikari's calculated defense. Despite the intensity of the battle, Hikari remained composed, his focus unwavering as he sought to outmaneuver and outsmart his opponent. As the fight raged on, Hikari's resolve strengthened, fueled by the desire to prove himself in the ring and uphold his principles. With each movement, he showcased his agility and prowess, earning the respect of the crowd and his fellow fighters. In the end, Hikari emerged victorious, his hand raised in triumph as the crowd erupted into cheers. Though the fight was challenging, he had overcome the odds and demonstrated his skill as a formidable combatant. As he exited the ring, Hikari reflected on the experience, knowing that more battles awaited him in the unforgiving world of the fighting ring. Meanwhile in different places Lucifer was watching the match with was Natsuki and Lilith. Worried for you boyfriend. Lucifer said to Natsuki. I mean it makes sense. Natsuki nodded, her eyes fixed on the intense match unfolding before them. Yeah, he's always been determined to prove himself. But I can't help but worry, especially in a place like this. Lilith placed a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. He's strong, Natsuki. And he's not alone. We'll be here to support him, no matter what happens. Lucifer smiled faintly. That's right. Besides, it's not every day we get to witness such an exciting bout. Let's have faith in Hikari's abilities. As the match progressed, Hikari's opponent seemed to gain the upper hand, landing a series of rapid punches that forced Hikari into a defensive position. However, Hikari's eyes flashed with determination as he swiftly countered, unleashing a barrage of powerful strikes. The crowd erupted into cheers and jeers, adding to the intense atmosphere of the fighting ring. Hikari's movements were fluid and precise, his masked face a mask of concentration as he focused on the fight. Despite the fierce competition, Hikari remained calm and composed, his instincts guiding him through each exchange. With each blow, he seemed to grow stronger, his resolve unwavering in the face of adversity. As with one final punch he sent the man flying and knocked out as he had a smile. Take that. Hikari said as he walked out of stage. That was fun. He said to himself. With a satisfied grin, Hikari exited the stage, his adrenaline still coursing through his veins from the exhilarating match. As he made his way through the bustling crowd, he couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. However, lurking in the shadows, Lucifer observed Hikari's victory with a knowing smile. He could sense the potential within Hikari, and he was eager to see how far the young god could go in his fighting ring. Meanwhile, Natsuki and Lilith exchanged worried glances as they watched Hikari's match unfold. Despite their concerns, there was a hint of admiration in their eyes as they witnessed Hikari's skill and determination in the ring. After the match, Hikari made his way backstage, where he was met by a mysterious figure cloaked in shadows. You fought well, Hikari, the figure said in a low voice. But remember, this is just the beginning. There are greater challenges ahead, and I expect nothing but the best from you. Hikari nodded, his curiosity piqued by the ominous words. He knew that he had entered a world filled with danger and intrigue, but he was determined to face whatever obstacles came his way. As he left the arena, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that his life was about to change in ways he never imagined. Let me Jess Michael. Hikari said looking at the figure. What brings Lucifer twin brother to his fighting ring? The figure chuckled softly, the shadows around him seeming to dance in response to his amusement. You are perceptive, Hikari, the figure replied, his voice tinged with a hint of amusement. Yes, I am Michael, Lucifer's twin brother. As for why I'm here, let's just say I have a vested interest in the events unfolding in this ring. Hikari's curiosity deepened at Michael's cryptic response. 
He knew better than to pry too deeply into the affairs of Archangels, but he couldn't help but wonder what role Michael might play in the challenges ahead. Well, whatever your reasons, it's good to see you, Michael, Hikari said, offering a polite nod. I look forward to whatever comes next. With that, Hikari left Michael's presence, his mind buzzing with questions and possibilities. Little did he know, his journey was only just beginning, and the forces at play were far greater than he could have ever imagined. Long time no see brother. Lucifer said to Michael. How has father been oh what am I saying he is doing well how are my other siblings doing? Michael regarded Lucifer with a steady gaze, his expression unreadable beneath the shadows that seemed to cloak him like a shroud. Father is as he always is, inscrutable and distant, Michael replied, his voice carrying a weight of resignation. As for our siblings, they fare as well as can be expected, given the complexities of our family dynamics. Lucifer nodded, understanding the implications of Michael's words. Their family was as fractured and fraught with tension as ever, each member grappling with their own struggles and ambitions. Well, if there's ever a time when you need assistance, don't hesitate to ask, Lucifer said, extending a hand in a gesture of camaraderie. We may not always see eye to eye, but we are still brothers. Michael clasped Lucifer's hand briefly before withdrawing, a faint smile playing at the corners of his lips. Indeed, we are, Michael agreed. And though our paths may diverge, know that I am always watching, ready to lend aid if the need arises. With that, the two brothers parted ways, each returning to their own realm of influence, their destinies intertwined in ways they could scarcely comprehend. As Hikari, arrived in the room Natsuki was he seat next to her as he took of the masks, as he had a smile on his face as he was ready for the next match. Natsuki glanced up as Hikari entered, a mixture of relief and concern crossing her features. She reached out to take his hand, silently offering her support. You did great out there, she said, her voice soft but encouraging. But please, promise me you'll be careful in the next match. I don't want to see you get hurt. Hikari nodded, his smile widening at her words. I promise, he replied, squeezing her hand gently. I'll be cautious, but I won't hold back either. This is just the beginning. With that, he leaned in to press a kiss to her forehead before rising to his feet, a renewed sense of determination evident in his demeanor. As he donned his mask once more, he turned to face the arena, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Pull so they just human fighting, a god. Hikari said looking at them. I am just waiting for when I will other people Lucifer talked about those non-human. Natsuki nodded, understanding Hikari's sentiment. I know, but it's still risky, she said, her voice tinged with worry. Just promise me you'll be careful. I don't want anything to happen to you. Hikari offered her a reassuring smile. I'll do my best, he replied, placing a hand on her shoulder. And if things get too dangerous, I'll make sure to get out of there as quickly as possible. I have you to come back to, after all. Natsuki smiled back, grateful for his words. Just don't forget about our promise, she said, squeezing his hand gently. No matter what happens, we'll always have each other's backs. With a final nod, Hikari turned back towards the arena, his resolve strengthened by Natsuki's unwavering support. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew he could face them with her by his side. Did anyone ever told you that sound just like Kagiyama from Haikyuu? Lilith said to Hikari. I mean did anyone? Hikari chuckled at Lilith's comment. No one's ever told me that before, he replied with a smile. But I'll take it as a compliment. Kagiyama is a great character. Lilith grinned in response. Well, you certainly have his determination, she said teasingly. Just don't forget to work on your teamwork skills too, like he did. Hikari nodded, appreciating the playful banter. Got it, he said. I'll make sure to keep that in mind. With a laugh, Lilith patted him on the back. Good luck out there, Hikari, she said. We'll be rooting for you. As the next match starts this fighting ring was different one it was a universal fighting ring so Hikari was not shocked to find him fighting a orc. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Some of the people in the arena said. Hikari's expression darkened at the chant, the bloodlust of the crowd unsettling him. Ignoring the calls for violence, he made his way to the sidelines, 
shaking off the unease that lingered from the spectator's chance. I won't succumb to their desires, he muttered to himself, stealing his resolve. I fight on my own terms, not for their entertainment. With a deep breath, he refocused his attention on the next challenge ahead, determined to maintain his principles despite the temptations of the fighting ring. You didn't eliminate. Lucifer said looking at him. Good your principle in tacket and don't worry about them ones that want you to eliminate came from world that are eliminate or be eliminated. Hikari nodded, appreciating Lucifer's reassurance. Thanks. I won't compromise my values for their entertainment, he declared, his gaze steely with determination. As the next match approached, Hikari braced himself, ready to face whatever opponent awaited him in the ring, resolved to emerge victorious without succumbing to the bloodlust of the crowd. As this time it was Elf he seemed to be of royalty, probably from another magical world. Let's have great match. The Elf said. And I saw what you did I like someone that doesn't eliminate for no reason. The Elf's words caught Hikari off guard, but he appreciated the sentiment. Likewise, he replied, nodding respectfully. Let's make this a match to remember. With that, the referee signaled the start of the bout, and both combatants sprang into action, their movements fluid and precise. As the referee's signal echoed through the arena, Hikari and the elf locked eyes, each ready to unleash their magical prowess. Without hesitation, the elf conjured a whirlwind of leaves and sent them swirling toward Hikari with incredible speed. Hikari countered by summoning a barrier of dark energy, deflecting the barrage of leaves with ease. With a flick of his wrist, he retaliated by sending bolts of lightning crackling toward the elf, who deftly dodged and countered with a barrage of ice shards. The arena crackled with magical energy as the two opponents danced around each other, exchanging spells and weaving intricate patterns of destruction and defense. Each move was calculated, each response swift and precise. Despite the intensity of the battle, there was a mutual respect between the combatants. They fought not out of hatred or malice, but out of a shared love for the thrill of competition and the mastery of their craft. Elemental magic, dark magic, light magic. Lucifer said. Lighting magic, time magic and whatever the hell void sphere is. Lucifer said talking knots on what magic Hikari used. Really what other thing can your boyfriend do, how in time magic god he is living up Totner title of a god. Lucifer's observation piqued Natsuki's interest, and she watched the duel with a newfound curiosity. As the battle raged on, she couldn't help but marvel at the variety and complexity of Hikari's magical abilities. He's like a living arsenal of magic, Natsuki mused, her eyes fixed on the swirling display of elemental forces in the arena. It's incredible how he can wield so many different types of magic with such precision. Meanwhile, Hikari and the elf continued their duel, each pushing themselves to the limit as they sought to outmaneuver and outweat their opponent. The crowd roared with excitement, caught up in the spectacle of magic and mayhem unfolding before them. The battle between Hikari and the elf raged on, each combatant unleashing a barrage of spells and counterspells in a dazzling display of magical prowess. As the dust settled and the echoes of their magic faded, it became evident that Hikari had emerged victorious, his strategic use of diverse magical abilities proving too much for his opponent to handle. With a triumphant grin, Hikari stood tall in the center of the arena, acknowledging the cheers of the crowd as he basked in the glory of his hard-earned victory. All right everyone that is enough. Lucifer said to everyone. It is time everyone goes home out shut down time has arrived. Lucifer's authoritative voice reverberated through the arena, bringing an end to the excitement of the matches. The crowd began to disperse, reluctantly leaving the arena as the lights dimmed and the energy of the fighting ring faded into the night. As the spectators filtered out of the arena, Hikari and Natsuki made their way towards the exit, their minds still buzzing with the intensity of the fights they had witnessed. Natsuki glanced at Hikari, a mix of admiration and concern in her eyes. Are you okay, Hikari? That last match was intense, she said softly, linking her arm with his. Hikari nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. Yeah, I'm fine. Just glad it's over for tonight. Let's head home, he replied, returning the gesture and intertwining his fingers with hers as they walked out into the cool night air. As they arrived to Hikari house they got to the bed as Hikari was ready to sleep, as then Natsuki kissed him. So, um. Hikari said blushing. 
Do you wanna? There is no one to cock block us this time. So yeah let's. As the next day arrives Hikari remember what happened last night as he lapped seeing the sleep naked Natsuki he just smiled. Will that was one hell for a night. He did to himself. Will I Jess I am not longer a Verison. Neither do I. As then they heard Hikari's sister from the other side. Good for you guys. She said frustrated. Jess who couldn't sleep thanks to the sound of. Hikari and Natsuki chuckled awkwardly, realizing they had been a bit loud. Sorry about that, Hikari called back. We'll try to keep it down next time. As they got ready for the day, they couldn't help but feel a bit embarrassed but also content with each other's company. Chapter 29 As MC was shown he was wearing a suit as he was in wedding suite, as he looked informed as he saw Sayori in wedding dress as she was being brought by her father, as he was blushing, in the crowds was his friend. As his best man Hikari was next to him with a smile, as Sayori came as then alarms came up, as MC woke up as he saw his alarms clock in anger he pulled out his sword and cut at the clock. As MC looked around his room, he realized it was just a dream. Disappointed, he sighed and got out of bed, trying to shake off the lingering feelings from the dream. He went about his morning routine, getting ready for the day ahead. However, the dream kept replaying in his mind, making it difficult to focus on anything else. Why did I dream of that? MC said to himself. Like what? As MC pondered over his dream, he couldn't shake the vivid image of Sayori in a wedding dress. He wondered if it meant something deeper, if perhaps his feelings for her ran deeper than he realized. But he brushed it off, attributing it to the random nature of dreams. After all, he and Sayori were just friends, right? Yet, despite his attempts to rationalize it, the dream lingered in the back of his mind, leaving him with a sense of unease and curiosity. God I can't look at her the same. He said to himself the image of Sayori in the dress keeps showing up. I hate my amazonation. As the day went on, MC found himself unable to shake off the lingering thoughts of the dream. Whenever he saw Sayori, his mind would drift back to the image of her in the wedding dress. He couldn't help but feel a strange mix of emotions confusion, longing, and a hint of excitement. However, he was determined to push these feelings aside and focus on their friendship. After all, he didn't want to risk jeopardizing what they already had. So, um why are avoiding Sayori today? Hikari asked MC. Like I have noticed it. I am sure half the school did. Which is something. MC sighed, feeling the weight of Hikari's observation. It's nothing, really. Just had a weird dream last night, and it's been messing with my head. Sayori looked. Different in it, and I can't shake off the feeling. Hikari raised an eyebrow. Different? How so? MC hesitated, unsure of how to articulate his feelings without revealing too much. I don't know. Just different. Like I saw her in a new light, you know. Natsuki chimed in, her expression sympathetic. Dreams can be weird like that. Maybe it's just your brain playing tricks on you. Yeah, maybe, MC agreed, though he couldn't shake off the strange sense of unease that lingered within him. Was it Sayori in wedding dress? As Natsuki said looking at MC face which had shocked face. How did you know? He yelled. How did you? I didn't. Natsuki said to him. That was just a jess. MC's heart raced, the dream's vivid imagery still fresh in his mind. It felt so real. Like I was actually there. And now I can't shake off this feeling. Hikari placed a reassuring hand on MC's shoulder. Dreams are just dreams, buddy. They don't mean anything in the real world. MC nodded, trying to push aside the lingering unease. Yeah, you're probably right. Just need to focus on the present. Also I am going to say this. Hikari sighed with a smile. Congratulations you played yourself when Natsuki said that question. MC chuckled nervously. Yeah, you got me there. Thanks for the reminder. As they walked together, MC tried to shake off the lingering effects of the dream, determined to focus on the day ahead. Throughout the day, MC couldn't shake off the vivid image of Sayori in a wedding dress. It lingered in his mind, 
creating a strange mix of emotions ranging from confusion to anxiety. Despite his efforts to focus on his tasks and conversations, the dream kept resurfacing, casting a shadow over his thoughts. As the day progressed, MC found himself increasingly preoccupied, his attention drifting away from the present moment. He made excuses to avoid being alone with Sayori, afraid that his feelings about the dream would manifest in awkwardness or discomfort. Hikari and Natsuki noticed his unease but respected his space, offering support and understanding without prying too much. However, MC couldn't shake off the nagging feeling that the dream held some deeper significance, leaving him unsettled and unsure of how to proceed. How long do you think this will last? I mens what do you think? A day and half. Hikari said as he saw MC was still trying to not be alone with Sayori. That guy needs to learn just accepted it and move on. Hikari's prediction seemed reasonable to Natsuki, who nodded in agreement. Yeah, hopefully he'll come to terms with it soon. It's not healthy to dwell on something like this for too long. They exchanged a glance, silently hoping that MC would find the clarity he needed to move past the unsettling dream and return to his usual self. Still, this is fun to watch. You know what let's have some fun hope some drop some hints to Sayori and watch the fire burn are you in? Natsuki chuckled at Hikari's mischievous suggestion. You're terrible, but I'm totally in. Let's see how this unfolds. Just don't push him too hard, alright? He's already on edge. With a playful grin, they formulated a plan to gently nudge MC towards addressing his feelings, all in good fun. As the day progressed, Natsuki and Hikari strategically orchestrated casual encounters between MC and Sayori, subtly creating opportunities for them to interact. They arranged group activities, coincidental run-ins, and even persuaded MC to help Sayori with small favors, all while maintaining an innocent facade. Throughout the day, MC found himself gradually relaxing around Sayori, his initial tension easing as they shared moments of laughter and camaraderie. Natsuki and Hikari observed with satisfaction, pleased to see their friend beginning to open up. However, just as they thought their plan was working, a sudden interruption occurred. Sayori received an urgent phone call, prompting her to rush off, leaving MC bewildered and disappointed by the abrupt departure. What happened? MC asked, turning to Natsuki and Hikari for answers. It's probably nothing serious, Natsuki reassured him, though her expression betrayed a hint of concern. Hikari, ever the opportunist, seized the moment to continue their playful teasing. Maybe you'll have to wait until tomorrow to figure it out. Or maybe fate has other plans for you too, he said cryptically, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Despite the interruption, MC couldn't shake the feeling that today had been a significant step forward in his relationship with Sayori. As he pondered the events of the day, he couldn't help but wonder what tomorrow would bring. As the day drew to a close, MC found himself lost in thought, reflecting on the unexpected turn of events. Despite the interruption, he couldn't deny the positive strides he had made with Sayori. Perhaps there was hope for their relationship after all. Later that evening, MC received a message from Sayori, apologizing for the sudden departure and explaining the reason for her urgency. Relieved to hear from her, he responded with understanding, assuring her that he was okay and hoping to catch up soon. Meanwhile, Natsuki and Hikari exchanged knowing glances, pleased with the progress they had witnessed. Their playful meddling had yielded promising results, and they were eager to see what tomorrow would bring for their friends. As night fell and MC drifted off to sleep, he couldn't shake the lingering sense of anticipation. Tomorrow was a new day, full of possibilities and potential. And with Natsuki and Hikari by his side, he felt ready to face whatever challenges and adventures awaited him. So are they going to be thing? I mean what do you think? My answer is. Hikari said with a eating grime. Hell yeah. With a mischievous smirk, Hikari continued, but let's not make it too easy for them. We'll sprinkle a little more of our special brand of chaos and see where it takes them. Natsuki laughed, nodding in agreement. Sounds like a plan. Let's keep the fire burning and watch the sparks fly. As they plotted their next moves, the night enveloped them in a sense of excitement and possibility, setting the stage for the unfolding drama of love and friendship. Meanwhile in Monica house she was seeing the future as she was she was getting jealous, as she was reading Sayori future, 
as she rips the page in jealous anger. Monica's eyes narrowed with envy as she glimpsed into Sayori's future, seeing moments of happiness and love that she desired for herself. The sight of Sayori's potential happiness only fueled her jealousy, and with a swift motion, she tore the page from the Book of Foresight, casting it aside in a fit of envy. Sayori doesn't deserve that happiness, Monica muttered bitterly to herself. I won't let her steal the spotlight. I'll make sure things don't go as smoothly for her. With a determined glint in her eyes, Monica began to scheme, her mind swirling with ideas to disrupt the budding romance and sow seeds of discord. Why don't I? She smiles evilly. I mean will anyone notice if she dies? As she active her reality powers a power that she rarely used, as then she was stopped a chill went down her spin as she can see someone it was Lilith or Spurt this one was saying try and you will burn in hell. Monica's eyes widened in shock as she felt a chill run down her spine, realizing that she wasn't alone. The presence of Lilith's spirit filled her with an overwhelming sense of dread, causing her to freeze in fear. Despite her desire to enact her sinister plans, Monica couldn't bring herself to defy Lilith's warning. The specter's ominous words echoed in her mind, and Monica knew that she couldn't afford to cross paths with Lilith's wrath. With a trembling hand, she released her hold on her reality-bending powers, abandoning her dark intentions for the time being. Taking a deep breath to steady herself, Monica resolved to find another way to achieve her goals, knowing that she couldn't risk invoking the wrath of Lilith or facing the consequences of her actions. Who the was that? She said talking deep breath. And what was that? Monica's heart pounded in her chest as she struggled to comprehend what had just occurred. The unexpected encounter with Lilith's spirit had shaken her to the core, leaving her feeling vulnerable and exposed. With trembling hands, she tried to regain her composure, but her mind was reeling with questions and fear. The memory of Lilith's warning echoed in her mind, reminding her of the consequences of her dark desires. Monica knew that she had narrowly escaped a perilous situation, but she couldn't shake the feeling of dread that lingered in the air. As she glanced around her room, Monica couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the shadows, waiting to be uncovered. With a newfound sense of caution, she resolved to tread carefully and avoid any further encounters with the supernatural forces that lurked in the darkness. Wait why did I try that? She said to herself. Why was trying to eliminate one of my friends just for a boy what is wrong with me? Monica's mind raced with guilt and self-reproach as she grappled with the weight of her actions. She couldn't believe that she had allowed jealousy and desire to drive her to such a dark place. With a heavy heart, she realized the depth of her mistake and the harm it could have caused. As she reflected on her behavior, Monica felt a profound sense of remorse and shame. She knew that she had betrayed her own principles and endangered the life of someone she cared about. The realization filled her with a deep sense of sorrow and regret. Determined to make amends for her actions, Monica resolved to confront her feelings and seek forgiveness from those she had wronged. She knew that it wouldn't be easy, but she was willing to do whatever it took to make things right and rebuild the trust she had broken. Meanwhile, Lilith was shown stabbing down a demon. That why I hate demons like you. She said to the demon. Especially when they get their hands on people like Monica, now I am talking your soul back to hell. Lilith's fury blazed as she confronted the demon before her, her stature towering with the weight of her title as Queen of Hell. The creature cowered before her, sensing the raw power emanating from her presence. You dare to taint the name of my husband and meddle with the lives of mortals. Lilith's voice echoed with a chilling authority that sent shivers down the demon's spine. Your kind has brought enough misery to this realm. I will not allow you to further tarnish the legacy of Lucifer. With a swift motion, Lilith drew her infernal blade, its dark energy crackling with malevolence. With a single strike, she cleaved through the demon's defenses, her eyes burning with righteous fury. As Queen of Hell, it is my duty to protect both the honor of my husband and the souls of the innocent, Lilith declared, her voice cutting through the air like a blade. I will not tolerate any who seek to undermine that duty. With a final, decisive blow, Lilith banished the demon back to the depths from whence it came, her resolve unyielding. As the echoes of the battle faded, she turned her gaze to the mortal realm once more, knowing that her duty as protector and guardian was far from over. Protect the innocent. A male voice came. I thought it was my job. 
she turned her head to see a man's with yellow hair, pure white eyes, wearing angelic outfits, as she just looked him. Hello Adam. She said to Adam the first man and her ex-husband. Yes I know it is your job, but don't forget I am the first woman, these even do not my direct childrens are still my children. Adam regarded Lilith with a mix of respect and wariness, his celestial aura shimmering faintly around him. Lilith, it has been eons since our paths crossed, he acknowledged, his voice carrying the weight of ages. Indeed, you are the first woman, and your connection to humanity is undeniable. But remember, our duties as guardians extend beyond familial ties. Lilith's gaze softened slightly at the mention of their shared history, memories of a time long past flickering in her mind. I understand, Adam, she replied, her tone tinged with a hint of nostalgia. But rest assured, I will not allow any harm to befall the innocent. It is a vow I made long ago, and one I intend to uphold. Adam nodded in acknowledgement, a sense of mutual understanding passing between them. Very well, Lilith, he conceded, a faint smile gracing his lips. May our paths cross again under more peaceful circumstances. But tell me Lilith. Adam said to her. Why are they so many demons coming to this universe? Lilith's expression darkened at Adam's question, a shadow passing over her features as she considered his words. It is a troubling development, she admitted, her voice tinged with concern. The influx of demons into this universe suggests that something significant is stirring within the depths of the infernal realms. She paused, her gaze distant as she delved into her memories, searching for answers. Demons are drawn to places of darkness and chaos, but rarely do they venture so boldly into realms beyond their own, she continued, her tone grave there may be forces at work, unseen and unknown, orchestrating their movements. As she spoke, a sense of unease settled over her, the weight of her responsibilities as guardian weighing heavily upon her shoulders. Whatever the reason, we must remain vigilant, she concluded, her eyes narrowing with determination. The safety of this universe and its inhabitants depends on it. But if I have a theory. Lilith said looking at Adam. It has to do with the new god that the father-in-law put into this world. Adam's expression turned thoughtful as he considered Lilith's theory. A new god, he echoed, his voice carrying a note of concern. That would indeed be a significant development. The introduction of a new deity into this universe could upset the delicate balance of power and draw unwanted attention from darker forces. He paused, his brow furrowing in contemplation. If this new god possesses considerable power or influence, it may have inadvertently attracted the attention of demons seeking to exploit or challenge its authority. He suggested, his tone grave such events often lead to unrest and upheaval, especially among the denizens of the infernal realms. Adam's gaze met Lilith's, a silent acknowledgement passing between them of the potential dangers ahead. If your theory proves true, we must tread carefully, he cautioned. We cannot allow this newfound power to destabilize the order we have worked so hard to maintain. But it is also a good thing. Adam said to Lilith. This universe needs a god for a long time no offense I know that Lucifer was trying his best anyway what is this god names. Lilith nodded in agreement with Adam's observation. Indeed, the presence of a god could bring much needed stability and guidance to this universe, she conceded. And none taken Lucifer's methods were. Unconventional, to say the least. Lilith's expression shifted slightly, betraying a flicker of realization. Ah, uh, yes, she responded, a knowing glint in her eyes. Hikari, the new god of this realm. Quite the unexpected turn of events, I must say. She continued, addressing Adam's point about stability. Hikari's ascension to godhood does offer promise for stability, but his newfound power also presents its own set of challenges and uncertainties, Lilith remarked. We must proceed with caution and ensure that his actions align with the greater good of this universe. Has Lucifer made him join the fighting ring yeet? Adam said with smile. I mean it is in character for him. Ah, uh, right, Lilith conceded, her expression shifting to one of acknowledgement. He did indeed join the fighting ring. Lucifer finds it amusing to watch him there. Keeps him entertained, I suppose. All right, farewell. Adam said leaving. Farewell, Adam, Lilith replied with a nod as he departed. 
she then turned her attention back to her duties, keeping a vigilant eye on the happenings of the universe. Chapter 30 As dawn broke over the celestial realm, Hikari, the newly appointed god of the universe, found himself facing another day filled with divine responsibilities and mortal affairs. With a sense of purpose and determination, he prepared to navigate the challenges and opportunities that lay ahead. Stepping out onto the balcony of his celestial palace, Hikari gazed out at the vast expanse of the universe spread out before him. The beauty of creation never failed to inspire him, filling him with a sense of awe and wonder at the sheer magnitude of existence. Yet, amid the splendor of the cosmos, Hikari couldn't shake off the weight of his newfound role as a deity. The responsibilities of godhood weighed heavily on his shoulders, reminding him of the immense power and influence he now wielded. As he pondered the significance of his position, Hikari's thoughts drifted to the mortal realm, where his actions as a god had a tangible impact on the lives of countless beings. It was a daunting responsibility, but one that he was determined to wield wisely and justly. With a deep breath, Hikari summoned his divine energy, channeling it into a shimmering portal that would transport him to the mortal realm. Stepping through the portal, he emerged on the outskirts of a bustling city, where mortals went about their daily lives, unaware of the god in their midst. As Hikari wandered through the streets, he observed the struggles and triumphs of humanity, gaining a deeper understanding of their hopes, fears, and aspirations. Despite their mortal limitations, he couldn't help but admire their resilience and determination in the face of adversity. Yet, amid the bustling crowds and bustling activity, Hikari sensed a lingering darkness lurking beneath the Surfacia shadowy presence that threatened to disrupt the fragile balance of the mortal realm. With a sense of urgency, he vowed to uncover the source of this darkness and protect the innocent from its malevolent influence. Guided by his divine intuition, Hikari embarked on a quest to seek out the source of the looming threat, venturing into the depths of the mortal realm with unwavering resolve. Along the way, he encountered mortals in need of guidance and assistance, offering his aid wherever he could to ease their burdens and lighten their hearts. As he journeyed deeper into the heart of darkness, Hikari encountered formidable adversaries and daunting challenges that tested his strength, courage, and wisdom. Yet, with each trial he faced, he grew stronger and more determined to vanquish the forces of evil that threatened to engulf the mortal realm. With the support of his divine allies and mortal friends, Hikari waged a valiant battle against the darkness, unleashing his divine powers to banish the malevolent forces and restore peace and harmony to the mortal realm once more. Though the journey was fraught with peril and uncertainty, Hikari emerged victorious, his faith in humanity reaffirmed and his resolve strengthened by the trials he had overcome. As he returned to the celestial realm, Hikari reflected on the events of the day, grateful for the opportunity to serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration for mortals in need. Though his journey as a god was filled with challenges and sacrifices, he knew that it was a path worth walking, for the sake of all beings in the universe. With a renewed sense of purpose and determination, Hikari vowed to continue his divine mission, guiding and protecting humanity with unwavering compassion and strength. For in the end, he knew that the true measure of a god lay not in power or prestige, but in the ability to make a positive difference in the lives of others. And so, as another day in the life of a god came to a close, Hikari looked to the future with hope and optimism, knowing that no matter what challenges lay ahead. Natsuki glanced up from her book, a sympathetic smile tugging at the corners of her lips. Yeah, it does seem like a bit of a dull day, she agreed, setting her book aside. But hey, sometimes a break from all the excitement can be nice, right? Hikari nodded, though a hint of restlessness lingered in his eyes. Yeah, I guess so, he replied, fidgeting with the edge of his sleeve. It's just. I feel like I should be doing something, you know. Like I'm meant for more than just this ordinary life. Natsuki reached out and gently squeezed his hand, her expression softening with understanding. I get it, Hikari. You're not meant for ordinary, that's for sure, she said, her voice filled with warmth and reassurance. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy a quiet day every now and then. Maybe we can find something fun to do together, just the two of us. A small smile tugged at the corners of Hikari's lips as he looked at Natsuki, grateful for her unwavering support. Yeah, that sounds nice, he agreed, feeling a sense of comfort wash over him. What do you have in mind? Natsuki's eyes sparkled with mischief as she leaned in closer, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. 
Well, I did happen to pick up a new recipe for cupcakes that I've been dying to try, she confessed, a mischievous grin spreading across her face. How about we spend the afternoon baking together? It'll be just like old times. Hikari's face lit up with excitement at the suggestion, his spirits lifting at the prospect of spending quality time with Natsuki. That sounds perfect, he exclaimed, a wide grin spreading across his face. I can't wait to see what kind of culinary masterpiece we can come up with. With their plan set, Hikari and Natsuki spent the rest of the day immersed in flour, sugar, and butter, their laughter filling the kitchen as they worked together to create a delicious batch of cupcakes. As they decorated each treat with colorful frosting and sprinkles, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of joy and fulfillment wash over him, grateful for the simple pleasures of friendship and love. As they sat down to enjoy their freshly baked cupcakes, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the ordinary moments that made life worth living. With Natsuki by his side, he knew that even the most mundane days held the potential for magic and adventure. And as the sun dipped below the horizon and the stars twinkled in the night sky, Hikari found himself filled with a deep sense of contentment. Knowing that no matter what challenges lay ahead, he would always have Natsuki by his side, ready to face the future together. So do you think MC is going to tell Sayori about this dream? Or should put more fuel to the fire? Natsuki shrugged, contemplating Hikari's question. I'm not sure, she replied thoughtfully. On one hand, telling Sayori about the dream might clear the air and help MC sort through his feelings. But on the other hand, adding a little more intrigue could make things interesting. She smirked mischievously. Let's see how things play out for now. We can always stir the pot later if needed. Since we evil. She said with an evil smile. Why not put more fuel to the fire instead of directly telling Sayori anything? Hikari chuckled at the suggestion, his mischievous grin widening. I like the way you think, he replied, his eyes gleaming with excitement. Let's sprinkle a little more chaos and see what happens. It'll be more fun to watch the drama unfold from the sidelines. With a playful wink, he began to formulate a plan to add a touch of intrigue to the situation without directly revealing MC's dream to Sayori. Meanwhile with MC he felt a chill dome his spine as he looked around his room, wondering what was that. MC couldn't shake off the eerie feeling that washed over him, causing a shiver to run down his spine. He glanced around his room, his senses heightened as he searched for any signs of what might have caused the sudden chill. Despite the warmth of the room, a sense of unease settled over him, leaving him on edge and alert to the slightest noise or movement. As MC scanned his surroundings, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Every shadow seemed darker, every creak of the floorboards echoed louder in his ears. His heart raced with a mixture of fear and curiosity, wondering what could have caused such a sudden disturbance in his usually peaceful room. With a cautious step forward, MC approached the window, peering out into the night. The moon cast an eerie glow over the landscape, illuminating the familiar sights of his neighborhood. Yet, despite the seemingly normal scene, a sense of foreboding lingered in the air, sending a chill down his spine. Suddenly, a faint whisper caught his attention, barely audible over the gentle rustling of the wind. MC strained to listen, his senses on high alert as he tried to decipher the source of the mysterious voice. It sounded distant yet strangely familiar, sending a shiver down his spine. Drawing upon his courage, MC ventured further into the room, determined to uncover the truth behind the chilling sensation that enveloped him. With each step, the air seemed to grow colder, the atmosphere thick with an otherworldly presence that sent a wave of goosebumps cascading over his skin. Then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the chill dissipated, leaving MC standing in the silence of his room, his heart still pounding with adrenaline. He couldn't shake the feeling that he had just brushed against something beyond his understanding, something both mysterious and unsettling. With a deep breath, MC tried to calm his racing thoughts, chalking up the experience to an overactive imagination or a trick of the mind. Yet, deep down, he couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something out of the ordinary had just occurred, leaving him to ponder the mysteries of the night. System is there any changes? MC asked his system. If there is inform me. As MC addressed his system, he awaited a response, hoping for any indication of changes or anomalies. With a sense of anticipation, he braced himself for whatever information the system might provide, 
eager to understand the source of the strange occurrences that had unsettled him. Not where is not problem the system said just turn of the AC. MC nodded, relieved that the system hadn't detected any significant issues. He followed the system's advice and went to adjust the AC, hoping that it would dispel the lingering sense of unease that had settled over him. As he made the necessary adjustments, he couldn't shake off the feeling that something was amiss, but for now, he focused on the task at hand, determined to restore a sense of normalcy to his surroundings. As MC went about his day, unaware of Natsuki and Hikari's scheming, a chill ran down his spine once more, sending a shiver of apprehension through him. Despite his attempts to push aside the unsettling feeling, it lingered in the back of his mind, leaving him on edge. Little did he know that his friends were plotting to reveal his dream to Sayori, adding another layer of complexity to the already tangled web of emotions and secrets. As Natsuki and Hikari were taking on how to make the plan work. God this going to be funny. And we are going to asshole for this aren't we? Yeah, probably, Natsuki replied with a mischievous grin. But it'll be worth it. Besides, it's all in good fun, right? Hikari chuckled, nodding in agreement. Exactly. And who knows, maybe it'll help those two figure things out. With their plan in motion, Natsuki and Hikari shared a knowing glance, ready to stir up a bit of chaos for the sake of their friend's budding romance. Chapter 31 As Hikari and Natsuki continued to scheme, they devised a plan to subtly reveal MC's dream to Sayori without directly confronting him about it. They decided to orchestrate situations where elements of the dream would naturally come up in conversation or through shared experiences, planting seeds of curiosity and intrigue in Sayori's mind. Their first move was to arrange a group outing to a wedding expo, where they knew Sayori's excitement for all things romantic would be piqued. As they browsed through the exhibits, Hikari and Natsuki made subtle remarks about wedding dresses, venues, and traditions, alluding to the dream without explicitly mentioning it. Sayori's eyes lit up with excitement as she imagined herself in a beautiful wedding gown, unaware of the hidden agenda behind her friend's words. Meanwhile, MC observed the scene with a mixture of amusement and apprehension, sensing that Hikari and Natsuki were up to something but unsure of their intentions. Throughout the day, Hikari and Natsuki continued to drop hints and references to weddings and romance, subtly steering the conversation towards the topic of dreams and fantasies. Sayori, caught up in the excitement of the moment, eagerly shared her own dreams and aspirations, unaware of the deeper meaning behind their discussion. As the day drew to a close, Hikari and Natsuki exchanged knowing glances, pleased with the progress they had made in nudging Sayori towards uncovering the truth about MC's dream. With each subtle hint and suggestive comment, they were one step closer to unraveling the mystery that had been haunting their friend. Meanwhile, MC couldn't help but feel a sense of trepidation as he watched the events unfold. He knew that sooner or later, Sayori would connect the dots and realize the significance of his dream. And when that moment came, he could only hope that she would understand and forgive him for his silence. As they bid farewell to the wedding expo and headed home, MC couldn't shake off the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. He knew that the revelation of his dream was inevitable, and he braced himself for the storm that was sure to follow. Little did he know, the seeds of curiosity had already been planted in Sayori's mind, and it was only a matter of time before the truth came to light. But for now, all he could do was wait and see how things would unfold in the days to come. So when do you think you will find out? What do you think? Don't know. But let's continue. So what is happening? Yuri said joining the conversation. Today felt way too specific. As Yuri joined the conversation, Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a glance, briefly contemplating how much to reveal to their friend. After a moment of silent communication, Natsuki decided to fill Yuri in on their plan. We're just having a bit of fun, Natsuki explained with a mischievous grin. You know how MC had that weird dream about Sayori in a wedding dress? Well, we're trying to subtly hint at it and see how Sayori reacts. Yuri's eyes widened with interest as she processed the information. Ah, uh, I see, she said, a thoughtful expression crossing her face. So you're trying to gauge Sayori's reaction without directly confronting her about the dream. Clever. Hikari nodded in agreement, pleased that Yuri understood their intentions. Exactly he said, a playful glint in his eyes. It's all in good fun, of course. 
We just want to see how Sayori will react when she realizes the truth. Yuri chuckled softly, amused by their antics. Well, I must say, you two certainly know how to stir up some drama, she remarked with a smile. But I suppose it's all part of the adventure of friendship, isn't it? Exactly. Natsuki exclaimed, her enthusiasm contagious. And besides, it's not like we're trying to cause any harm. We just want to see how things unfold. With their plan set in motion and Yuri in on the secret, the trio continued their conversation, eager to see what other surprises the day had in store. Little did they know, their playful scheming would soon lead to unexpected revelations and moments of truth that would challenge their friendships in ways they never imagined. So what is the next step? Yuri said with stars in her eyes. Because I am in. With Yuri on board, the trio brainstormed their next move, eager to continue their playful scheme. After a moment of contemplation, Hikari spoke up with a mischievous grin. Well, since we're all in this together now, why don't we plan a little gathering? He suggested. We can invite MC, Sayori, and maybe a few others, and see how things unfold naturally. Natsuki nodded in agreement, liking the idea. That sounds like a great idea, she chimed in. We can create the perfect atmosphere for dropping subtle hints and observing their reactions. Yuri's eyes sparkled with excitement at the prospect of orchestrating their next move. I love it. She exclaimed. We can set the stage for some light-hearted fun and see where the day takes us. With their plan set, the trio began to make arrangements for the gathering, carefully plotting each detail to ensure that their scheme would unfold smoothly. Little did they know, their playful antics would soon lead to unexpected twists and turns, shaping the course of their friendships in ways they never could have anticipated. Meanwhile with Alastor he felt like he was going to be dragged into something he didn't want to at all. Alastor's unease grew as he sensed the subtle currents of mischief swirling around him. Despite his efforts to maintain a thought of indifference, he couldn't shake off the feeling that he was being drawn into a situation he had no desire to be a part of. With a sigh, he contemplated his options, weighing the consequences of intervening against the potential repercussions of staying silent. As a demon of considerable power and influence, Alastor knew that his actions carried weight, and he was wary of becoming entangled in the web of schemes and manipulations unfolding around him. Nevertheless, a part of him couldn't help but feel a flicker of curiosity, a lingering temptation to see how events would unfold. As much as he wanted to distance himself from the chaos, there was an undeniable allure in watching the drama unfold from the sidelines. For now, Alastor decided to bide his time, observing from a safe distance while keeping his own motives and intentions hidden. After all, in a realm filled with deception and intrigue, sometimes the most powerful move was simply to wait and see. As then his phone rang as he saw it was Yuri. And here it comes. He said looking at the phone. The person that is going drag me into the that situation that I don't want to. Alastor hesitated for a moment, considering whether to answer the call or let it go to voicemail. However, curiosity got the better of him, and with a resigned sigh, he swiped to accept the call from Yuri. Hello, Yuri, he greeted, his tone casual yet tinged with a hint of apprehension. To what do I owe the pleasure of this call? So, um, I wanna say something to you. Yuri said to Alastor as Alastor Hearth skipped a bit. We are planning something with MC and Sayori wanna join. With that word all of Alastor hope got destroyed. Alastor's heart sank at Yuri's invitation, realizing that he was indeed being dragged into a situation he had hoped to avoid. Despite his reservations, he knew that declining outright would only draw attention to his reluctance, so he forced a polite smile and replied, Ah, that sounds. I'll consider it, Yuri. Thanks for thinking of me. As he cut the phone and sigh. And for a second I thought. Alastor said as he blushes. That she was going to say she likes me more than a friend. Alastor's cheeks flushed with embarrassment as he admitted his fleeting hope to himself. Wishful thinking, he muttered ruefully, knowing deep down that Yuri's intentions were purely platonic. With a resigned sigh, he shook off his momentary lapse in judgment and turned his attention back to the task at hand. Taking a deep breath to compose himself, Alastor resolved to address the situation head-on. Despite his initial disappointment, he knew that he couldn't let his personal feelings cloud his judgment or hinder the plans of his friends. All right, I'll join, 
he said aloud, steeling himself for the inevitable chaos that lay ahead. But let's make sure we're not pushing things too far. We don't want to cause any unnecessary drama. With a sense of determination, Alastair made his decision, ready to face whatever challenges awaited him as he embarked on this new adventure with his friends. Meanwhile, across town, MC found himself lost in thought as he contemplated whether to confide in Sayori about his recurring dream. The memory of the vivid imagery lingered in his mind, creating a sense of unease and uncertainty. I should tell her, he mused aloud, weighing the pros and cons of revealing his innermost thoughts. But what if it changes things between us? What if she doesn't feel the same way? MC's thoughts spiraled into a whirlwind of doubt and anxiety, his heart racing with anticipation and fear. He knew that honesty was the best policy, but the prospect of risking their friendship for the sake of his own feelings filled him with trepidation. Just take it one step at a time, he reminded himself, trying to quell the rising tide of emotions. No need to rush into anything. With a newfound sense of resolve, MC decided to bide his time and wait for the right moment to broach the subject with Sayori. He knew that their friendship was too important to jeopardize, but he couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that his dream held some deeper significance. As the day wore on, MC found himself increasingly preoccupied with thoughts of Sayori, unable to shake off the lingering unease that gnawed at him from within. He longed for the courage to confess his feelings, but the fear of rejection held him back, trapping him in a state of indecision. Meanwhile, Natsuki and Hikari continued to scheme behind the scenes, concocting plans to subtly reveal MC's dream to Sayori without directly implicating him. Their mischievous antics added a layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama, as they eagerly awaited the moment when their carefully laid plans would come to fruition. With each passing moment, the tension between MC and Sayori grew, the unspoken words hanging heavy in the air like a storm on the horizon. Little did they know, their lives were about to be irrevocably changed by the revelation of a single dream, setting into motion a chain of events that would test the bonds of friendship and love. And so, as the day drew to a close and the shadows lengthened across the horizon, the stage was set for the next chapter in their intertwined destinies. Oh my god! Yuri said to Hikari. How dumb can someone be I mens both of them? Hikari raised an eyebrow at Yuri's outburst, intrigued by her sudden burst of frustration. What's got you all worked up? He asked, curiosity piqued. Yuri let out a frustrated sigh, running a hand through her hair in exasperation. The way they're handling this situation is so. Amateurish, she replied, her tone tinged with irritation. I mean, seriously, could they be any more oblivious? Hikari couldn't help but chuckle at Yuri's blunt assessment, finding her candor refreshing. I have to admit, they're not exactly the most perceptive bunch, he conceded with a wry grin. But hey, that's what makes it entertaining, right? Yuri shot him a withering glare, unamused by his attempt to lighten the mood. This is serious, Hikari, she admonished, her expression serious. If they keep stumbling around like this, they're bound to make a mess of things. Hikari sobered slightly at Yuri's words, realizing the gravity of the situation. You're right, he conceded, nodding in agreement. We'll have to step up our game if we want to help them navigate this mess. With a shared sense of determination, Hikari and Yuri began to brainstorm ideas to guide MC and Sayori through their budding relationship, determined to ensure a happy ending for their friends, no matter the cost. But really what do expect from a guy who nickname is MC? Hikari said to Yuri as he looked at her. And his childhood best friend that me may or may not like. Yuri let out a soft chuckle at Hikari's remark, shaking her head in amusement. Fair point, she conceded, a hint of a smile playing at the corners of her lips. But still, you'd think they'd have figured it out by now. It's not exactly rocket science. Hikari grinned in agreement, nodding as he considered their friend's obliviousness. True, true, he replied, his tone laced with amusement. But hey, love has a funny way of clouding judgment, doesn't it? Yuri nodded in acknowledgement, a thoughtful expression crossing her features. Indeed it does, she agreed, her gaze drifting off into the distance. Sometimes, the heart sees what the mind cannot. As they pondered the complexities of human emotion, Hikari and Yuri shared a knowing glance, united in their determination to guide their friends toward happiness, 
even if it meant navigating the twists and turns of their tangled emotions. Okay, here to help. A last thought came as he finally arrived. So what do we do? Welcome, Alaster, Hikari greeted with a smile. We're just discussing our plan to subtly reveal MC's dream to Sayori. We thought it might be amusing to see their reactions. Alaster raised an eyebrow, intrigued by the mischievous scheme unfolding before him. Ah, uh, I see, he replied, a hint of amusement in his voice. Count me in. Let's make this as entertaining as possible. Yuri nodded in agreement, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Absolutely, she chimed in. The more, the merrier. Together, we can ensure that this plan goes off without a hitch. With their newfound ally on board, Hikari, Yuri, and Alaster set to work, brainstorming ideas and plotting their next move with gleeful anticipation. As they huddled together, their conversation filled with whispers and laughter, they devised a series of subtle hints and playful gestures to plant the seed of MC's dream in Sayori's mind. They agreed on a combination of carefully crafted remarks, strategic encounters, and shared activities designed to gradually lead Sayori to the realization of MC's feelings. With each detail meticulously planned, they felt a sense of excitement building, eager to set their scheme into motion and witness the unfolding drama firsthand. As they finalized their strategy, they exchanged knowing glances, confident in their ability to execute their plan with finesse and flair. All right, everyone, Hikari declared, a mischievous twinkle in his eye. Let's put our plan into action and watch the sparks fly. This is going to be one unforgettable ride. With a shared sense of determination and camaraderie, they set off to carry out their scheme, eager to see how the day would unfold and what surprises lay in store for MC and Sayori. As the day passes as the group watches MC grabbed Sayori, as everyone was excited as he was speaking. I had a weird dream about you. MC said to Sayori as everyone was excited. Don't think much about okay. I won't. Sayori said to MC. Plush it can't be that weird. In my dreams. MC said his face kind of blushing as everyone was looking at him. You were wearing a. He stopped himself. What was I wearing? Sayori said to MC. Tell me. A cow dress that looks like your pusu in your room. MC said to Sayori. At that moment Hikari, Natsuki, Yuri, and Alaster fell to THR ground like anime character, as THR Sis-10 if it had would have smacked his hand with its face. As MC and Sayori paused, locking eyes in a moment of quiet intensity, Yuri's frustration boiled over, her voice tinged with irritation. What anime moment was that? She exclaimed, her tone laced with exasperation. Just tell Sayori about the wedding dress already. Yuri's outburst startled the group, their laughter fading as they turned their attention to her. Hikari raised an eyebrow, his expression one of amusement. Yuri, calm down, he urged, attempting to diffuse the tension. We're just having a bit of fun. No need to get so worked up. Natsuki nodded in agreement, her tone more soothing as she addressed Yuri. Yeah, Yuri, take it easy, she chimed in, casting a sympathetic glance in her direction. We'll get there eventually. Let's just enjoy the moment, okay? Yuri's frustration simmered beneath the surface, but she begrudgingly relented, realizing that her outburst had dampened the mood. Fine, she grumbled, crossing her arms in resignation. But if you two don't talk about it soon, I'm going to lose my mind. With that, the group resumed their banter, though the tension lingered in the air, a reminder of the underlying dynamics at play. As MC and Sayori exchanged a meaningful glance, the unspoken question hung between them, waiting to be addressed. And though Yuri's impatience threatened to disrupt the moment, the group remained united in their shared goal of supporting their friends through whatever challenges they may face. As Natsuki pondered aloud, scratching her head in confusion, a sense of unease settled over the group. Hey, did we forget anyone today? She mused, her brow furrowing with concern. I feel like we forgot someone. Hikari waved off her concern with a dismissive gesture. If we did, it's probably not important, he replied nonchalantly, a hint of amusement in his voice. I mean, who could we have forgotten? Meanwhile, back at Monica's house, she lounged on the couch, idly flipping through channels on the TV. 
Suddenly, she sneezed, a peculiar sensation washing over her as if someone were talking about her. A shiver ran down her spine as she brushed off the feeling, chalking it up to a passing coincidence. But deep down, a nagging sense of unease lingered, prompting her to keep a wary eye on her surroundings. Chapter 32 As Hikari woke up as he goes to the washroom cleaning his face as he opens his eyes, he sees he had wolf ears on the top of his head he blicked for a bit. Ah! Hikari screams in confusion. What the? As then the door opens as it was not Suki as she had cat ear tail they were pink and she was looking like a cat girl. What the hell? Natsuki said Hikari. What is happening? As then Hikari moved away as she sees her animal parts as she also scream after a while Hikari was with his family as they all had different animal parts. As Hikari's family gathered in confusion, they exchanged bewildered glances, each sporting a unique set of animal features. His father had rabbit ears, his mother had a fox tail, and his younger sister had panda paws. What's going on? Hikari's father exclaimed, his rabbit ears twitching in agitation. I have no idea, Hikari replied, his mind racing with questions and uncertainty. But something strange is definitely happening. As they tried to make sense of their sudden transformation, Hikari's family brainstormed possible explanations, ranging from a bizarre genetic mutation to a mysterious supernatural phenomenon. Meanwhile, across town, similar scenes played out as people woke up to find themselves sporting animal features, sparking confusion and chaos throughout the city. As rumors and speculation spread like wildfire, Hikari and his family braced themselves for the unexpected journey ahead, determined to unravel the mystery behind their sudden transformation and find a way to restore their normal lives. But little did they know, this unexpected change was just the beginning of a much larger and more perilous adventure that would test their courage, resilience, and bonds of family like never before. Let just check news. His older sister said who had wolf ears like Hikari. Let's see. As the news reporter was saying how many people this morning around the world seems to have animal parts attacked to their body as they can fell like a normal body part. As the news report unfolded, Hikari and his family watched in stunned silence as the reporter detailed the widespread phenomenon of people waking up with animal parts attached to their bodies. The news broadcast showed footage of individuals across the globe exhibiting various animal features, from tails and ears to claws and wings. Authorities are still investigating the cause of this mysterious event, the reporter explained, her voice tinged with disbelief. But experts speculate that it could be the result of a viral outbreak, environmental contamination, or even some sort of mass hallucination. Hikari's family exchanged concerned glances, their minds reeling with the implications of the situation. What had caused this strange phenomenon, and how would it affect their lives moving forward? As they pondered the possibilities, Hikari's younger sister let out a nervous laugh. Well, this certainly makes for an interesting family reunion, she remarked, trying to lighten the mood. But beneath the surface, a sense of unease lingered, and Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that their lives were about to change in ways they never could have imagined. As they continued to watch the news coverage, Hikari and his family braced themselves for the challenges and uncertainties that lay ahead, determined to face whatever came their way with courage and resilience. After all, they were in this together, no matter what form they took. Meanwhile in Lucifer Place he was seeing the house and lapping his ass off. Oh father! He said to Lilith. This is great prank. As Lilith just looking at her husband. Your power creation you can do so much. She say frustrated. And you decide to give animal parts. Lucifer chuckled mischievously, his laughter echoing through the halls of their celestial domain. What can I say? Sometimes, a little chaos is good for the soul, he replied with a grin, thoroughly enjoying the spectacle unfolding below. Lilith shook her head in exasperation, her patience wearing thin. You and your pranks, she muttered, though a hint of amusement tugged at the corners of her lips. But remember, my dear, every action has consequences, even your playful antics. Lucifer waved off her concerns with a dismissive gesture. Oh, lighten up, my love. It's all in good fun, he reassured her, though his mischievous grin betrayed his true intentions. Besides, where's the harm in a little spontaneous transformation? Lilith sighed, knowing that arguing with Lucifer was often an exercise in futility. 
just remember to clean up your mess when you're done, she admonished, her tone laced with a mixture of annoyance and affection. As they watched the chaos unfold from their celestial perch, Lucifer and Lilith shared a moment of camaraderie, their bond strengthened by their shared history and enduring love. Despite their differences, they knew that together, they could weather any storm that came their way. Back with Hikari and Natsuki, they started to go to school wondering what animal parts that the club member got. As Hikari and Natsuki made their way to school, they couldn't help but feel a mix of curiosity and apprehension about the situation unfolding around them. With each step, they wondered what animal parts their friends and classmates might have acquired overnight. As they arrived at school, they were greeted by a flurry of whispers and murmurs, the air buzzing with excitement and uncertainty. Students wandered the halls, some flaunting their newfound appendages with pride, while others tried to conceal them beneath clothing or accessories. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged curious glances as they made their way to their classroom, wondering what surprises awaited them inside. As they entered the room, they were met with a sight that took them both by surprise. Several of their classmates sported animal features of varying kind scat ears, dog tails, bird wings, and even more exotic additions like horns and scales. The room buzzed with chatter as everyone compared their transformations, some delighted by the changes while others seemed bewildered or even frightened. Hikari and Natsuki found their seats, unable to tear their eyes away from the spectacle unfolding around them. They exchanged nervous smiles, unsure of how to react to the unexpected turn of events. As the day progressed, they couldn't help but wonder what had caused the sudden surge in these bizarre transformations and what implications it might have for their lives going forward. But for now, all they could do was navigate the strange new reality they found themselves in and wait for answers to reveal themselves in due time. As they go to club after the class ended they saw Yuri she seemed to have bird wings. Oh hi guys. Yuri said looking at them. Cat girl and wolf boy hun. She says to Natsuki and Hikari. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged amused glances at Yuri's playful greeting, noticing the elegant bird wings sprouting from her back. Hey, Yuri, Natsuki replied with a grin. Looking pretty fly there with those wings. Yuri chuckled at Natsuki's pun, her wings fluttering slightly with her amusement. I must say, your cat ears suit you quite well. Hikari smirked, nodding in agreement. Yeah, you're really rocking that bird aesthetic, Yuri. Yuri's cheeks tinted pink with a blush at the compliment. Well, I suppose it's only fair since everyone seems to be getting in touch with their inner animal today. As they settled into the clubroom, they couldn't help but marvel at the diversity of their transformations and the unique quirks each member now possessed. Despite the initial shock, they found themselves embracing the novelty of their situation, eager to see how their newfound abilities would influence their lives and friendships in the days to come. As Monica's walked into the club as Yuri, Natsuki and Hikari saw that she had peacock tail. Yuri, Natsuki, and Hikari's eyes widened in surprise as Monica entered the clubroom, her graceful movements drawing their attention to the vibrant peacock tail fanning out behind her. Whoa, Monica, is that? Natsuki began, her voice trailing off in astonishment. A peacock tail. Yuri finished, her expression a mix of awe and curiosity. Monica chuckled, her gaze sweeping over her friend's reactions. Yep, you're seeing it right, she confirmed, a hint of amusement in her tone. Seems like I'm joining the animal club too. Hikari grinned, unable to resist a playful jab. Guess you wanted to stand out even more, huh, Monica? Monica rolled her eyes, though a smile tugged at the corners of her lips. Oh, like you two aren't already making a statement with those ears and wings. Also Jess who? Monica said as Alastair comes to the club as he has deer antler and ears. I mean check him out. At let's it not dog. Alastair said to the group. I rather have this than dog. The club members turned their attention to the newcomer, their eyes widening in surprise as they took in Alastair's unique appearance. Whoa, Alastair, you've got. Dear Antlers. Natsuki exclaimed, her disbelief evident in her voice. And ears, Hikari added, grinning at his friend's unexpected transformation. Looks like you're joining the animal club too. Alastair chuckled, a wry smile playing on his lips. Seems like it, he remarked, running a hand through his antlers. Though I have to say, 
I'm not complaining. Beats having a dog tail, that's for sure. As they shared a moment of laughter and camaraderie, the club members couldn't help but marvel at the unpredictability of their situation, finding comfort and amusement in their shared experiences. Despite the strangeness of their transformations, they were determined to make the most of it and embrace the newfound quirks that had brought them together. Hey guys. Sayori walked into club. Wow you guys look good. As Sayori seemed to have fox tail and ears like a fox girl, as then MC enters as he is looking like a wolf boy. Whoa, Sayori, you've got fox ears and a tail. Natsuki exclaimed, marveling at her friend's new appearance. Yeah, you look adorable, Yuri added, smiling warmly at Sayori. Sayori blushed at the compliments, her fox ears twitching with excitement. Thanks, guys. It's definitely. Unexpected, she admitted, a hint of amusement in her voice. As MC entered the club, sporting wolf ears and a tail, the group's attention shifted to him, their expressions filled with curiosity and surprise. MC, you too. Hikari exclaimed, grinning at his friend's transformation. Looks like we've got a whole menagerie going on here. Hey, at least we'll never be boring, Alastor remarked with a chuckle, his dear ears twitching in amusement. As the club members shared in their newfound quirks and embraced the unexpected changes, they couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie and unity, strengthened by their shared experiences and unique transformations. So can you also do this? MC says as then Tentacle came out his back as he grabbed the book next to Yuri. Are you also part octopus like me Hikari? Hikari's eyes widened in surprise as he watched the tentacle emerge from MC's back, reaching out to grab the book beside Yuri. He blinked a few times before responding, um, no, definitely not part octopus. That's a new one for sure. MC chuckled nervously, scratching the back of his head with one hand while the tentacle retracted back into his body. Yeah, it's, uh, something unexpected, he admitted, feeling a mixture of curiosity and uncertainty about his newfound appendage. The rest of the club members exchanged curious glances, pondering the implications of their sudden transformations. As they navigated this strange new reality, they couldn't help but wonder what other surprises awaited them. So we can be more than one animal type. Alastor said looking at MC. Instead that interesting. Yeah, seems like it, MC replied, still processing the implications of his newfound abilities. I guess there's a lot we still don't know about these changes. It's definitely going to take some getting used to, she admitted, her cat-like ears twitching slightly as she spoke. Yuri, adjusting her bird wings, chimed in, at least we're all in this together. We can help each other figure things out. Hikari glanced around at the group, a sense of camaraderie forming among them despite the unusual circumstances. Yeah, we'll just have to take it one day at a time, he said with a reassuring smile. As they discussed their transformations and speculated about what the future held, the club members found solace in each other's company, united in their shared experience of this unexpected change. As the club members continued to discuss their newfound abilities and speculate about the cause of their transformations, their conversation was filled with a mixture of confusion and curiosity. Does anyone have any idea how this happened? Natsuki asked, her cat-like ears twitching with uncertainty. I have no clue, Yuri replied, her bird wings rustling as she shrugged helplessly. It's like something out of a fantasy story. Hikari ran a hand through his wolf-like ears, frowning in contemplation. It's definitely strange. I can't think of any logical explanation for waking up with animal parts. Alastor, with his deer antlers and ears, leaned back in his chair, his expression thoughtful. Perhaps it's some kind of genetic mutation or a side effect of something we were exposed to. Sayori, her fox tail swishing nervously behind her, shook her head. But why would it happen to so many people all at once? It's like a worldwide phenomenon. Monica, with her peacock tail fanned out behind her, listened to the discussion with a furrowed brow. Whatever the cause, we need to stay calm and figure out our next steps, she said, her voice steady despite the uncertainty in the air. As the club members exchanged theories and shared their experiences, they couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the back of their minds. With more questions than answers, they resolved to work together to unravel the mystery behind their unexpected transformations and find a way to return to normalcy. 
It could be a magic spell. Hikari said to the group. We all are living in world of magic so that would explain why it is happening to everyone. That's an interesting theory, Natsuki chimed in, her cat-like ears twitching with curiosity. But who would cast such a spell, and why? Hikari shrugged, his wolf ears perking up as he pondered the question. It could be someone with a grudge or a prank gone wrong, he suggested. Or maybe it's just a freak accident of magic. Yuri nodded in agreement, her bird wings fluttering slightly. Regardless of the cause, we need to find a way to reverse the spell, she said, her voice tinged with concern. Having animal parts attached to our bodies could cause all sorts of problems. Alaster, his deer antlers twitching thoughtfully, spoke up. We should start by researching similar occurrences in magical literature, he suggested. There might be clues or spells that could help us understand what's happening. Chapter 33 As Hikari woke up his wolf ears and tail moving as he was naked, he looked to the side only to see Natsuki getting up as she was also naked her cat ears tails moving. Well that was fun night. Who knew animal parts can be so fun when having sex? Hikari then kisses Natsuki, as get up, as they go to the shower cleanups dn get dressed today was of day so they decide why not hang around with everyone in the group. As Hikari and Natsuki got dressed and prepared for the day, they decided to join their friends from the group. They headed out together, their animal parts still visible but now covered by their clothes. When they arrived, they found Yuri, Alaster, Monica, Sayori, and MC already gathered in the clubroom. The atmosphere was lively as everyone chatted and laughed, seemingly unfazed by their newfound animal features. Hey, glad you two could make it. Sayori greeted them with a warm smile, her fox tail swaying gently behind her. Good morning, everyone. Hikari greeted back, trying to ignore the awkwardness of their current situation. Morning. Natsuki chimed in, her cat ears perking up as she spoke. As they settled into the room, the conversation turned to the events of the previous night and the mysterious appearance of their animal parts. So, any ideas on how this happened? Alaster asked, rubbing his deer antlers thoughtfully. Yuri, ever the analytical one, spoke up. It's possible that it's some form of magic or enchantment, she suggested, her bird wings fluttering slightly as she gestured. Perhaps someone cast a spell that affected all of us. Monica nodded in agreement. That would make sense. We do live in a world where magic exists, after all. But who would do such a thing, and why? MC pondered aloud, his wolf ears twitching with curiosity. The group fell into discussion, speculating on the possible motives behind the strange phenomenon and brainstorming ways to reverse it. As they talked, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie among them, despite the unusual circumstances. Despite their differences, they were all in this together, and together, they would find a solution. And so, with determination in their hearts and animal parts on their bodies, they embarked on a new adventure, united as friends in the face of the unknown. You know, Hinkari. MC says to Hikari. I'm just gonna say, you're kind of lucky you're only a wolf hybrid, because God, being a wolf-octopus hybrid kind of sucks. You don't know the set I had to deal with getting up this morning. Hikari chuckled at MC's remark. Yeah, I can only imagine. Tentacles sound like they could be quite tricky to deal with. He glanced over at MC's wolf-octopus hybrid form with a mix of sympathy and amusement. But hey, at least you're unique, right? And who knows, maybe there's some advantage to having those tentacles. Like, can you reach things from far away now? MC laughed. Well, I guess you could say that. It does come in handy sometimes, I suppose. As the conversation continued, the group found humor in their predicament, finding solace in each other's company as they navigated this unexpected twist in their lives. Are we going to talk how wrong that sounded? Yuri says to everyone. I mends out of context of what Hikari said the and who knows maybe there's some advantages to having those tentacles. Yuri said as she was blushing. Like is it just me or? Hikari blushed, realizing the unintended implication of his words. Oh, uh, I didn't mean it like that, he stammered, trying to backtrack. I just meant, you know, in a practical sense. Like, for reaching things. Not, um, anything else. 
Natsuki giggled, finding the situation amusing. Sure, Hikari, whatever you say, she teased, nudging him playfully. Yuri's blush deepened as she tried to suppress a laugh. Right, right, she replied, though her expression betrayed her amusement. Let's just focus on figuring out how to deal with our unique situation, shall we? Meanwhile, Sayori and MC Face were tomato red, after what Yuri said, and so was Monica, and Alastair just didn't care. Sayori fidgeted nervously, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment. Um, yeah, let's, uh, focus on that, she mumbled, avoiding eye contact with anyone. MC scratched the back of his head, his own face beat red. Why yeah, definitely, he stuttered, trying to regain his composure. Monica cleared her throat, attempting to steer the conversation back on track. Right, well, um, any ideas on how to, uh, reverse this? Condition? She asked, her cheek still tinged with pink. Alastair merely shrugged, unaffected by the awkward atmosphere. Beats me, he remarked nonchalantly, his demeanor as relaxed as ever. So, um. Do you guys want to go on arcade and hang out while, we let the official mages deal with this animal problem we are just students in high school? That sounds like a plan, Natsuki chimed in, eager to distract herself from the awkwardness of the situation. A little fun at the arcade might help take our minds off things. Yuri nodded in agreement, grateful for the opportunity to shift their focus away from their unusual predicament. Yes, let's enjoy ourselves while we leave the experts to handle the magic stuff, she suggested with a smile. Sayori beamed at the suggestion, her earlier embarrassment forgotten in the excitement of the outing. I love arcades. Count me in, she exclaimed, her enthusiasm infectious. MC nodded in agreement, relieved to have a light-hearted activity to look forward to amidst the chaos. Sounds good to me, he said with a grin, eager to make the most of their time together. With their plan set, the group prepared to head out to the arcade, ready to embrace the fun and camaraderie that awaited them. As they made their way to the arcade, the group's spirits lifted, the excitement of the upcoming games overshadowing the strangeness of their newfound animal parts. Laughter and chatter filled the air as they entered the colorful, bustling arcade, greeted by flashing lights and the sounds of various games. Hikari led the way, his wolf ears twitching with anticipation as he scanned the array of arcade machines, searching for the perfect game to start with. Natsuki followed closely behind, her cat-like agility evident in the way she moved with grace and precision. Yuri, with her elegant bird wings tucked neatly against her back, marveled at the sights and sounds around her, her curiosity piqued by the variety of games on offer. Sayori bounced excitedly beside her, her fox ears perked up in anticipation of the fun to come. Monica and Alastair trailed behind, their peacock tail and deer antlers attracting curious glances from other arcade goers. Despite their unusual appearances, they remained unfazed, focused on enjoying the company of their friends. As they explored the arcade, trying their hand at various games and challenges, the group found themselves immersed in a whirlwind of excitement and competition. They laughed and cheered, reveling in each other's company in the joy of friendly competition. With each game they played, their worries and insecurities melted away, replaced by the simple pleasure of being together and having fun. For a moment, the strangeness of their situation faded into the background, overshadowed by the bonds of friendship and the shared experience of adventure. As the day drew to a close and they prepared to leave the arcade, the group exchanged smiles and high fives, grateful for the memories they had created together. Despite the challenges they faced, they knew that as long as they had each other, they could overcome anything that came their way. With their spirits lifted and their hearts full, they bid farewell to the arcade, ready to face whatever the future held with courage and determination. And as they walked home together, their laughter echoed in the night, a testament to the strength of their friendship and the power of unity in the face of adversity. I got here this time. Hikari said to MC. I am going to win. As they were playing Tekken 10. Hikari grinned triumphantly as he executed a flawless combo, sending MC's character flying across the screen. Ha! I told you I'd win, he exclaimed, pumping his fist in the air. MC chuckled good-naturedly, his wolf-like grin evident even in the midst of defeat. Okay, okay, you got me this time, he admitted, setting his controller down with a playful sigh. But let's see if you can handle me in the next round. 
the two friends exchanged competitive banter as they prepared for their rematch, their laughter blending with the sounds of the arcade around them. As the game loaded up for another round of intense combat, they both knew that no matter who emerged victorious, the true prize was the camaraderie and friendship they shared. As then Hikari felt something and MC got a system notification. As Hikari felt a demon and MC saw the system said demon nearby as then the light in arcade started to go out but keep coming back as demon came out of a game this was no normal demon but mid-class technology demon. As the demon emerged from the game, its sinister presence filled the arcade, sending a shiver down Hikari's spine. He instinctively reached for his latent powers, ready to defend himself and his friends. MC glanced at his system notification, confirming the presence of the demon nearby. With a sense of urgency, he grabbed Hikari's arm, pulling him back. We need to get out of here, he urged, his voice tense with apprehension. The group exchanged alarmed glances as they realized the gravity of the situation. They swiftly made their way towards the exit, their hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline. As they fled the arcade, they knew that they were about to face a threat unlike any they had encountered before. Sun Sword Hikari said as he pulled out his sword. Let's do this. Seeing this MC just sigh as pulled out his new sword he bought as Albion came out next to Sayori to protect her, as Prism came next to Hikari. I am here master. Prism said to Hikari. Let deal with this demon. With their weapons drawn and their companions at their side, Hikari and MC prepared to confront the demon. Albion stood protectively beside Sayori, his towering presence serving as a formidable barrier. Prism, imbued with loyalty and determination, emanated a radiant glow as he pledged his allegiance to Hikari. Together, they formed a formidable team, ready to face whatever darkness lurked within the arcade. As the demon advanced, its malevolent aura pulsating with dark energy, Hikari and MC exchanged a determined glance. With a swift nod, they charged forward, their blades gleaming in the dim light. The battle against the technology demon had begun, and Hikari and his friends were prepared to fight with all their strength to protect each other and rid their world of this newfound threat. What just happened? Yuri said seeing Hikari and MC Figthig the demon. Since when have they become demon hunters? She said to Monika, Sayori, Natsuki, and Alastor. Yuri's question hung in the air, reflecting the shock shared by the rest of the group as they watched Hikari and MC engage in battle with the demon. Monika, Sayori, Natsuki, and Alastor exchanged perplexed glances, their expressions a mixture of concern and curiosity. It's like they've become some kind of Demon hunters, Monica mused, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Sayori nodded slowly, her eyes wide with astonishment. I never knew they had this side to them, she whispered. Natsuki furrowed her brow, her mind racing to make sense of the unexpected turn of events. But why now? And how did they even know how to fight demons? She wondered aloud. Alaster, ever the composed one, observed the scene with a calm demeanor. Perhaps there's more to them than meets the eye, he suggested cryptically, his gaze fixed on the intense battle unfolding before them. As the group continued to watch in awe, the realization dawned on them that their friends possessed abilities and knowledge beyond what they had ever imagined. With each strike of their swords and each display of their newfound power, Hikari and MC proved themselves to be formidable allies in the face of darkness. And as they fought side by side, it became clear that they were not just ordinary high school students they were warriors, destined to protect their world from threats unknown. As the group watched the intense battle unfold, Natsuki and Sayori exchanged knowing glances, their secret understanding hidden beneath the facade of concern. Sayori, aware of MC's missions to hunt demons assigned by his system, and Natsuki, cognizant of Hikari's divine nature and responsibilities, maintained their charade of worry while silently acknowledging the truth. Their shared knowledge bound them together in a silent pact, each girl hoping that their friends wouldn't uncover their deception. For Sayori, it was the desire to protect MC's secret and shield him from unnecessary scrutiny. And for Natsuki, it was the understanding that Hikari's godly duties were not to be taken lightly, their true nature known only to a select few. As the battle raged on, Natsuki and Sayori remained on the sidelines, their concealed truths adding another layer of complexity to the unfolding events. And as they watched Hikari and MC fight with valor and determination, 
they couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden beneath the surface of their seemingly ordinary lives. With their swords drawn and their companions by their side, Hikari and MC faced off against the formidable technology demon that emerged from the arcade game. The demon, with its menacing presence and advanced weaponry, posed a significant threat. Hikari swung his sun sword with precision, the blade gleaming as it sliced through the air, while MC's Albion hummed with power as it clashed against the demon's metallic limbs. Their movements were fluid and coordinated, a testament to their experience in battling supernatural foes. As the demon launched a barrage of attacks, Hikari and MC deftly dodged and countered, their teamwork seamless and efficient. Albion's magical abilities and Prism's protective aura proved invaluable, shielding them from the demon's onslaught. Meanwhile, the rest of the group watched in awe and trepidation, their hearts racing with each clash of metal and burst of magic. Yuri, Sayori, Natsuki, Monika, and Alastor stood ready to assist if needed, their determination to protect their friends evident in their eyes. The battle reached its climax as Hikari unleashed a powerful blast of divine energy, weakening the demon's defenses, while MC seized the opportunity to deliver the final blow with Albion. With a resounding clash, the demon dissipated into a cloud of dark energy, vanquished by their combined efforts. Breathing heavily, Hikari and MC lowered their swords, their adrenaline still coursing through their veins. The arcade was silent once more, the only sound the echoing remnants of the battle that had just taken place. As the group gathered around them, relief washed over their faces, mingled with admiration for their friend's bravery and skill. The demon may have been defeated, but the memory of the encounter lingered, a reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows and the strength that lay within them all. So you named your new sword after your dragon. Hikari said to MC as he saw MC. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, MC chuckled, wiping sweat from his brow. I guess you could say it was a bit of both. Albion has always been there for me, so naming the sword after him felt right. He glanced at the shimmering blade, a fond smile playing on his lips. Besides, it's a tribute to his strength and loyalty. As then both Sayori and Natsuki came next to the two before punching them in the head. What were you thinking? If you die what would I have told your parents not just that what do you think I would done without you? That was dangerous. Sayori said to MC in considered. You could have badly gotten hurt. Hikari rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry, Natsuki. I got carried away. But you know me, I always manage somehow. MC nodded, his expression serious. I know, Sayori. I'll be more careful next time. Promise. Both girls sighed, exchanging glances before hugging their respective partners tightly. Just. Don't scare us like that again, okay? Natsuki murmured, her voice tinged with worry. We care about you guys, Sayori added, her eyes reflecting genuine concern. Please be safe. Why did we just watch? Yuri said to everyone. Because I am confused. I think Zeke saw two girlfriends yawling at their respective boyfriend. Alastor said confused. I am confused because Sayori and MC are not dating wait are they dating? Hikari scratched his head, a sheepish grin on his face. Yeah, sorry about that. Natsuki and I sometimes get a bit carried away. MC chuckled nervously. Yeah, it's just. Normal couple stuff, I guess. Sayori blushed, casting a shy glance at MC. Um. Well, we're not officially dating, but. Maybe someday. Natsuki rolled her eyes, elbowing Hikari lightly. You two are hopeless, she teased, though there was a fondness in her tone. Alastor raised an eyebrow, his expression one of amusement. Well, if you're not dating yet, you might as well be. You practically act like a couple already. All right, enough. Monica says to the whole group, now, let's go. Get out of here before the authorities come and arrest us for using our magical abilities in public. Monica says to the whole group, even though we did it in self-defense. God, I hate this stupid law. The group nodded in agreement, understanding the need to leave before attracting unwanted attention. Monica's right, Hikari said, sheathing his sword. Let's get out of here. As they exited the arcade, 
they dispersed into smaller groups, making their way home discreetly, hoping to avoid any further trouble with the authorities. Chapter 34 As Hikari woke up, he stretched his limbs, feeling a bit sore from the previous day's events. He glanced over at Natsuki, who was still asleep beside him, her peaceful expression contrasting with the chaos of the day before. Hikari quietly got out of bed, careful not to wake her, and headed to the bathroom to freshen up. After a quick shower and getting dressed, Hikari made his way downstairs to find his family already up and about, preparing breakfast. He exchanged greetings with them and joined them at the table, feeling grateful for their presence and support. As they ate breakfast together, Hikari couldn't help but think about the demon encounter at the arcade. It was a stark reminder of the dangers lurking in their world, and he knew they couldn't afford to let their guard down. After breakfast, Hikari decided to visit Lucifer's fighting ring. Despite the recent incident, he felt drawn to the adrenaline and excitement of the fights. Plus, he wanted to check on Lucifer and see how he was doing after the chaos. Arriving at the fighting ring, Hikari was greeted by the familiar sights and sounds of the bustling arena. He spotted Lucifer in his usual spot, overseeing the matches with a keen eye. Approaching him, Hikari exchanged greetings and asked how things were going. Lucifer filled him in on the latest happenings at the fighting ring, including upcoming matches and new fighters joining the fray. Despite the recent setback, Lucifer seemed determined to keep the fights going and maintain order in his domain. Feeling a sense of camaraderie with Lucifer, Hikari offered his assistance in any way he could. Whether it was helping out with security or participating in the fights themselves, he was eager to contribute and be part of the action. As the day progressed, Hikari found himself drawn into the energy of the fighting ring once again. Amidst the adrenaline and excitement, he felt a sense of purpose and belonging, knowing that he was fighting not just for himself, but for the safety and well-being of those around him. So your girlfriend won't join to see the fight. Lucifer said to Hikari. How odd you two are almost glowed together also good luck using your wolf parts in the fight just hope no one grabs your tail. Hikari chuckled at Lucifer's observation. Yeah, Natsuki's not really into the whole fighting scene. But she's supportive in her own way. He shrugged, acknowledging the quirks of their relationship. As for his wolf parts, Hikari nodded. Thanks for the heads up. I'll keep an eye on my tail. He smirked, feeling a surge of confidence as he prepared for the fights ahead. As Hikari was in front of a human with animal part as well Hikari knew he was not from his world seeing the outfit he was wearing it seemed he was from fantasy world, as the fight started. Hikari squared up, ready to face off against his opponent from the fantasy world. Despite the unfamiliar surroundings, he remained focused, relying on his instincts and combat training. The opponent lunged forward, their animal-like agility evident in every move. Hikari dodged and weaved, using his own wolf-like reflexes to stay one step ahead. As they exchanged blows, Hikari felt a surge of adrenaline, relishing the challenge of combat. With a swift counterattack, Hikari gained the upper hand, delivering a decisive blow that sent his opponent reeling. The crowd erupted into cheers as Hikari emerged victorious, his confidence bolstered by the taste of victory. The next day. God that was a good match. Hikari said remember the match from yesterday. Let's go again today. He sighed ready to go to the ring again. Hikari's enthusiasm for another match was palpable as he prepared to step back into the ring. With the thrill of the previous victory still fresh in his mind, he was eager to test his skills once more. As he made his way to the ring, anticipation coursed through him. Each step brought him closer to the exhilarating rush of combat, and he relished the challenge that awaited him. With determination in his eyes, Hikari took his place in the ring, ready to face whatever opponent crossed his path. Whether it was a new challenger or a familiar face, he was prepared to give it his all and continue honing his fighting prowess. Meanwhile Natsuki had joined him as she was seating next to Lilith. Did he had to come so early? Natsuki said looking at her boyfriend. Like a few please next time. He said to herself. As she was in the VIP room with Lilith. Natsuki's frustration was evident as she voiced her irritation at Hikari's punctuality. Sitting beside Lilith in the VIP room, she couldn't help but express her annoyance at her boyfriend's eagerness to arrive early. I wish he'd learned to arrive fashionably late for once, Natsuki muttered to herself, 
glancing over at Lilith with a wry smile. Despite her exasperation, she couldn't help but find humor in the situation, knowing that Hikari's enthusiasm was simply a part of who he was. Lilith chuckled softly, understanding Natsuki's sentiments. Men and their eagerness, always wanting to be the first ones in line, she remarked with a playful grin. But you have to admit, it's endearing in its own way, isn't it? Natsuki rolled her eyes good-naturedly. I suppose so, she conceded, a fond smile tugging at the corners of her lips. Though sometimes, I wish he'd just relax a bit and enjoy the moment without rushing into things. As they waited for the fight to begin, the two women exchanged knowing looks, sharing a silent understanding of the quirks and idiosyncrasies of their respective partners. Plush Lucifer was like that when he first made the ring. Lilith said to Natsuki. I mean do you know how many times I had to stop from just starting a fight with someone random in his early days? Natsuki chuckled, finding common ground with Lilith. I can only imagine, she replied, shaking her head. It must have been quite the adventure keeping him in check back then. But hey, at least now you two can sit back, relax, and enjoy the show without worrying about him starting any trouble, right? As Hikari entree the ring he saw someone it was very goodly build man, as he seemed to be an adult as just like Hikari was wearing a mask so was he but he was wearing a bat mask. Hikari sized up his opponent, noting the man's imposing physique and the mysterious bat mask. Despite the initial challenge, Hikari remained focused, ready to give it his all in the upcoming fight. As the bell rang, signaling the start of the fight, Hikari and his opponents circled each other in the ring. The crowd roared with anticipation as they watched the two combatants. Hikari moved with agility, dodging his opponent's initial strikes, but the man in the bat mask was relentless. With powerful punches and swift kicks, he quickly gained the upper hand. Despite Hikari's best efforts, he found himself on the defensive, struggling to keep up with the relentless assault. Blow after blow landed, each one taking its toll on Hikari's stamina. As the match wore on, it became clear that victory was slipping out of Hikari's grasp. Despite his determination, he couldn't match the sheer strength and skill of his opponent. Eventually, after a grueling exchange of blows, Hikari stumbled and fell to the canvas, defeated but not broken. The referee counted him out, declaring his opponent the winner to the cheers of the crowd. Hikari rose to his feet, bruised and battered but unbowed, ready to face whatever challenges awaited him in the future. What the hell? Hikari said on the floor. Who are you? You may not know this world doesn't know me. The bat mask man said. But name is Brooke Wayne. As Hikari processed the name, the realization hit him like a ton of bricks. Bruce Wayne. As in. Batman. He muttered incredulously, staring up at the imposing figure standing over him. That's right, Bruce affirmed, his voice carrying a hint of amusement. But here, in this realm, I go by a different name. Call me the Dark Knight. Hikari couldn't believe his lukier lack thereof. Fighting against someone of Batman's caliber was a daunting prospect, to say the least. Yet, despite the odds stacked against him, a glimmer of determination flickered in his eyes. Looks like I've got my work cut out for me, Hikari remarked, pushing himself up from the mat with a grimace. Round two, then. Bruce nodded, a silent acknowledgement of the challenge ahead. As the crowd roared with excitement, signaling the start of the next round, Hikari braced himself for the fight of his life, knowing that victory against the Dark Knight would be no easy feat. You but him agents Batman. Lilith said to Lucifer. Really? No he is the original Batman. Lucifer said to Lilith. But a varios of him. I am sorry is Batman. Natsuki asked confused. I don't recognize him. Right you know him my different name. Lucifer remembered that in this universe DC and Marvel are one company which meant that their heroes were also a fusion. You know by the wolf bat. Lucifer remembering that in these comic and show he was combination or Batman and Wolverine. Natsuki glanced at the ring where Hikari was preparing for his rematch. Well, I suppose that explains his opponent, she remarked, concern lacing her voice. But I hope he's ready for it. Meanwhile, in the ring, Hikari faced off against the enigmatic figure of Wolf Bat. As the crowd watched with bated breath, the clash between Wolf and Bat unfolded once more, the outcome uncertain. 
Back in the VIP room, Natsuki mulled over the scene. So that's Wolf Bat, she mused, remembering the character from the combined DC and Marvel universe. It's like a different version of Wolf Bat, isn't it? So in this universe my comic self is called Wolf Bat. Brooke says to Hikari. Odd. Not really once you consider that your university -er and DC universe have combined into one. Hikari says to him. I mens it fun like this we have Iron Beetle fusion of Iron Man and the Secant Blue Beetle, Super Captain, Superman and Captain America fusion, the comic are fun to read. Brooke nodded thoughtfully. I see, it's an interesting twist on things, he conceded. Although, I must admit, it's strange to hear myself referred to as Wolf Bat. Hikari grinned, sharing the excitement of the crossover universe. Yeah, it's a whole new world of possibilities, he agreed. Who knows what other fusions we might encounter. As the conversation unfolded, the fight in the ring intensified, with Hikari and Wolf Bat locked in a fierce battle of strength and strategy, each determined to emerge victorious. As the fight raged on, Hikari found himself struggling to keep up with Wolf Bat's relentless assault. Despite his godly powers, Hikari lacked the years of training and experience that Wolf Bat possessed. With each strike and counterstrike, Hikari could feel his energy draining, while Wolf Bat seemed to only grow more determined. The crowd cheered and jeered, caught up in the intensity of the battle unfolding before them. Despite his best efforts, Hikari found himself on the defensive, unable to land a solid blow against his skilled opponent. As the final moments of the fight approached, Hikari knew that victory was slipping further and further from his grasp. As the fight reached its climax, Hikari summoned every ounce of strength he had left, determined to give it his all until the very end. With a fierce roar, he lunged forward, aiming a powerful strike at Wolf Bat's defenses. But Wolf Bat was ready, swiftly dodging Hikari's attack and countering with a devastating blow of his own. Hikari staggered backward, feeling the impact reverberate through his body. The crowd erupted into cheers as Wolf Bat pressed his advantage, unleashing a flurry of precise strikes that left Hikari struggling to keep up. Despite his valiant efforts, Hikari soon found himself overwhelmed by the sheer skill and experience of his opponent. With a final, decisive blow, Wolf Bat knocked Hikari to the ground, leaving him defeated but not broken. As Hikari lay there, catching his breath, he couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration for his adversary's prowess in combat. Despite the loss, Hikari knew that he would learn from this experience and come back stronger in the future. For now, he could only accept defeat gracefully and strive to improve in the battles yet to come. As Hikari rose to his feet, he couldn't help but feel a sense of respect for his opponent. Despite the intensity of their battle, Batman had shown him a measure of kindness and sportsmanship that Hikari hadn't expected. Thanks, Hikari replied, offering a nod of gratitude. You're not bad yourself. With a faint smile, Batman clasped Hikari's shoulder before stepping back, allowing Hikari to gather himself after their fierce bout. As Hikari left the ring, he knew that this encounter had taught him valuable lessons that he would carry with him into future battles. And as he glanced back at Batman, he couldn't help but feel a newfound sense of determination to continue honing his skills and pushing himself to new heights. So. He said looking at Batman. How did Lucifer get you join this ring? Batman chuckled softly, adjusting his mask before responding. Let's just say, Lucifer has a way of making persuasive arguments. Plus, I've been known to seek out unconventional challenges now and then. This fighting ring seemed like an interesting diversion from my usual pursuits. Hikari nodded, impressed by Batman's nonchalant demeanor. Well, whatever the reason, it was an honor to spar with you. Likewise, Batman replied with a nod of respect. Keep training, Hikari. You've got potential. With that, Batman turned and disappeared into the crowd, leaving Hikari to contemplate their encounter and the lessons he had learned from facing such a formidable opponent. I have questions. He looked at him knowing this question will either break or prove his theory. Do you have a no-eliminate rule? No. Batman said leaving. That rule is bullshit. Hikari sighed this proved his theory this was not the Batman from the main DC comics probably from a fanfic instead. Hikari pondered Batman's response, realizing that this version of Batman differed significantly from the one he had read about in the mainstream DC comics. 
It seemed that in this universe, Batman operated by different principles, perhaps shaped by alternative experiences or circumstances. As Batman walked away, Hikari's curiosity deepened. This encounter only added to the intrigue surrounding the diverse characters and realities that coexisted in the merged DC and Marvel universe of the fanfic world. As then goes to the VIP room as he does he hears Lucifer clapping for him, as he had a playfully smirk. Hikari approached Lucifer, intrigued by his reaction. Enjoying the show. He asked with a raised eyebrow, noting the playful smirk on Lucifer's face. Lucifer chuckled softly, his eyes gleaming with amusement. Oh, immensely, he replied, clapping Hikari on the shoulder. You put on quite the performance out there. A valiant effort, I must say. He leaned in closer, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial tone. But alas, even the mightiest fall sometimes, wouldn't you agree? Mind doing something for me, boy? Lucifer said to Hikari, as he looked at him with his eyes burning. I would like you to hunt me down a demon, a certain demon in Africa. What would you say of becoming this world's John Constantine? Hikari blinked in surprise at Lucifer's request, his mind racing with the implications. You want me to hunt down a demon for you? He asked, his voice laced with curiosity. And you're comparing me to John Constantine? He paused, considering the proposition carefully. I suppose I could give it a try. But what's in it for me? It's your choice if you want or not want, Lucifer said looking directly at Hikari. And if you don't want to be my little demon hunter, it's your decision. After all, you're still the god of this world, even though you're weaker than me. Much, much weaker. Plus, you should start practicing some more. You have a good amount of magical abilities and powers, he says looking directly at Hikari's soul, but you still haven't tapped into the reality powers you have. Hikari nodded thoughtfully, considering Lucifer's words. I understand, he replied, meeting Lucifer's gaze evenly. I'll take some time to think about your offer. As for practicing and tapping into my reality powers, I'll work on that. He took a deep breath, feeling a surge of determination. Thanks for the advice. I'll let you know my decision soon. With that, he turned and walked away, his mind buzzing with possibilities and decisions to make. Let's go Natsuki, Hikari said to Natsuki. We don't want to make everyone worry do we? Natsuki nodded in agreement, her expression a mix of concern and curiosity. Yeah, let's go, she said softly, falling into step beside Hikari as they left the VIP room behind. As they walked, she glanced at Hikari, wondering what he was thinking after his conversation with Lucifer. Chapter 35 Hikari sat in his room, contemplating Lucifer's offer. Becoming a demon hunter in this chaotic world was not something he had ever imagined himself doing, but the idea intrigued him. As the god of this world, he had a responsibility to protect its inhabitants, and if hunting demons was what it took to fulfill that duty, then perhaps it was worth considering. Natsuki entered the room, concern etched on her face. What did Lucifer want? She asked, sitting down beside Hikari. He wants me to become a demon hunter, Hikari replied, his voice tinged with uncertainty. He thinks I have the potential to be this world's John Constantine. Natsuki's eyes widened in surprise. That's unexpected, she said, trying to process the revelation. What are you going to do? Hikari sighed, running a hand through his hair. I'm not sure, he admitted. On one hand, it could be an opportunity to use my powers for good and protect the people of this world. But on the other hand, it's a dangerous path, and I don't know if I'm ready for it. Natsuki placed a reassuring hand on Hikari's shoulder. Whatever you decide, I'll support you, she said softly. Just remember that you're not alone in this. We'll face whatever comes our way together. Hikari nodded, grateful for Natsuki's unwavering support. With her by his side, he felt a renewed sense of determination. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew that they would face them together, as a team. So where is the demon? Where is it? Africa. Natsuki said sigh. Pulso they are people I don't even know. Hikari nodded, understanding Natsuki's apprehension. I know, but sometimes we have to do things we don't want to in order to protect others, he said, his voice tinged with resignation. 
and if this demon poses a threat to innocent lives, then it's our responsibility to stop it. Natsuki nodded, her expression serious. You're right, she said. We can't let our personal feelings get in the way of doing what's right. With a determined nod, Hikari stood up, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them. Let's go, he said, his voice firm. We have a demon to hunt. Together, they made their way to Africa, prepared to confront the darkness that lurked in the shadows. Here let me just call Lucifer. As he rigged up his which was 666666666666. So, um about your offer. As Hikari dialed the number, he felt a surge of anticipation mixed with apprehension. After a few rings, Lucifer's smooth voice answered on the other end. Ah, Hikari, Lucifer said, his tone laced with amusement. I was wondering when you'd call. Have you made a decision about my offer? Hikari took a deep breath, steeling himself for what he was about to say. Yes, he replied, his voice steady. I've decided to accept your offer. I'll hunt down the demon in Africa. Lucifer's laughter echoed through the phone. Excellent choice, my boy, he said, his voice tinged with satisfaction. You won't regret it. I'll send you the details of the demon's whereabouts. Happy hunting. With that, the call ended, leaving Hikari and Natsuki to prepare for their dangerous mission ahead. You should stay. Hikari said looking at Natsuki. You should stay here and stay safe. Natsuki nodded, her expression a mix of concern and determination. I understand, she said, her voice firm. But promise me you'll be careful, Hikari. I don't want to lose you. Hikari reached out and took her hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. I promise, he said, his eyes meeting hers. I'll be back before you know it. Just hold down the fort while I'm gone. With a final embrace, Hikari and Natsuki parted ways, each filled with their own worries and hopes for the journey ahead. As coin fall on Hikari hand as it had the 666 number on Hikari flipped as then he was seen falling from the sky. You Lucifer. He screamed as using his power he landed to the ground. Now where thee is that demon? As Hikari was now in Africa. Hikari surveyed his surroundings, the unfamiliar sights and sounds of Africa greeting him. With determination in his heart, he set off in search of the demon Lucifer had tasked him with hunting down. As he ventured deeper into the wilderness, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The air seemed charged with energy, and the sounds of the jungle echoed around him, heightening his senses. Suddenly, a rustling in the bushes ahead caught his attention. Hikari tensed, readying himself for whatever might emerge. Sweat beaded on his brow as he prepared to face the unknown, his resolve unwavering in the face of danger. As the multiple people with spears in their hand came to attack him, him as they seemed to be using plant magic, a common but rarely used type do magic. Hikari assessed the situation quickly, recognizing the danger posed by the armed group advancing towards him. With a swift motion, he summoned a protective barrier around himself, deflecting the spears aimed his way. As the attackers closed in, Hikari unleashed his own magic, channeling his powers to manipulate the elements around him. Vines erupted from the ground, ensnaring his assailants and immobilizing them before they could strike again. With the immediate threat neutralized, Hikari pressed onward, his senses attuned to any signs of the demon's presence. He knew that the real challenge lay ahead, but he was prepared to face whatever obstacles crossed his path in his quest to fulfill Lucifer's request. Wow wow wow! He said to THR group. I am not here to fight. He said to them. Oh what am I saying I am a Japanese team talking to African tribe people. Hikari realized the cultural gap between him and the tribe, making communication a challenge. He decided to approach them cautiously, using gestures and a friendly demeanor to convey his peaceful intentions. I come in peace, Hikari said, trying to convey his message through gestures. I seek no harm, only to find and deal with a dangerous entity that threatens both our worlds. Though unsure if his message was understood, Hikari hoped his sincerity would bridge the gap between them and prevent any further conflict. As Hikari continued to gesture and attempt communication, the tribe's demeanor began to shift from hostility to curiosity. Some members of the tribe exchanged looks of uncertainty, while others seemed intrigued by Hikari's presence. 
Sensing an opportunity to establish rapport, Hikari retrieved a small gift from his pocket a trinket from Japan and offered it to the tribal leader as a gesture of goodwill. I bring a token of friendship, Hikari said, holding out the trinket. Please accept this as a symbol of my peaceful intentions. The tribal leader hesitated for a moment before accepting the gift, examining it with interest. Slowly, a tentative smile spread across his face, indicating a willingness to engage in further communication. Encouraged by this progress, Hikari attempted to convey his purpose once more, hoping to gain the tribe's cooperation in his quest to confront the demon threatening both their worlds. Do you speak English? The leader said to Hikari. If so speak boy. Yes, I speak English, Hikari replied, relieved to find a common language. I come in peace. I seek your assistance in dealing with a dangerous creature that threatens our worlds. The leader narrowed his eyes suspiciously. What creature do you speak of? Why should we trust you? Hikari sighed, knowing he had to choose his words carefully. I am a guardian of this world, and there is a creature. The leader narrowed his eyes suspiciously. What creature do you speak of? Why should we trust you? Hikari sighed, knowing he had to choose his words carefully. I am a guardian of this world, and I am here to deal with a dangerous demon that threatens not only your people but the entire world. If you can help me, we can protect our world together. As Hikari explained, the leader seemed to consider his words carefully. After a moment of silence, he nodded slowly. We have heard rumors of this demon, the leader said cautiously. It has been causing chaos and destruction in our lands. If you truly seek to stop it, then we will aid you. Relief flooded through Hikari as the tribe members lowered their weapons and began to discuss their plan of action. You say your guardian. Another voice said as it seemed to the leader son. Don't lie there is only four guardians protecting the four direction, the dragon, the phoenix, the wolf and turtle. He said looking at Hikari. And you are just human. Hikari remember these name he had learned them in class but he didn't pay attention when it was brought up, he crushed his past self. Hikari swallowed nervously, realizing his mistake. I am not a guardian, he admitted. But I possess certain abilities that may help in defeating this demon. The leader's son narrowed his eyes, studying Hikari intently. Very well, he said finally. We will accompany you on your quest, but remember, if you deceive us, there will be consequences. As they ventured deeper into the jungle, Hikari couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. The dense foliage seemed to close in around them, and the sounds of the wildlife grew eerily silent. Suddenly, a menacing growl echoed through the trees, sending shivers down Hikari's spine. There it is, the leader's son whispered, pointing ahead. Hikari's heart raced as he prepared to face the demon lurking in the shadows. With the tribe's help, he knew they stood a chance, but the outcome was far from certain. As they cautiously approached the source of the growl, Hikari could feel the tension in the air thickening. His senses were on high alert, every rustle of leaves and snap of twigs sending adrenaline coursing through his veins. Suddenly, the foliage parted, revealing a massive creature with glowing red eyes and razor-sharp claws. It snarled menacingly, its breath hot and foul. Hikari braced himself, ready to unleash his powers against the demon. But before he could act, the tribe's warriors sprang into action, launching a coordinated attack. Arrows flew, spears thrust, and magic crackled through the air as the battle raged on. Hikari fought alongside the tribe, his own powers blending seamlessly with theirs. Despite the ferocity of their opponent, they fought with unwavering determination, refusing to back down. Inch by inch, they gained ground, pushing the demon back with each strike. Finally, with a mighty roar, the creature staggered, its strength waning. Sensing victory within reach, Hikari summoned all his remaining power and delivered the final blow. As the demon fell, defeated, a wave of relief washed over Hikari and the tribe. They had emerged victorious, their home and loved ones safe once more. With grateful smiles and heartfelt thanks, the tribe bid farewell to Hikari, their newfound hero. And as he watched them disappear into the jungle, Hikari knew that his journey was far from over. There were still demons to hunt, and battles to be won, but with his newfound allies by his side, he was more determined than ever to face whatever challenges lay ahead. 
As then the demon got back up Hikari knew it was not going it easy this demon had multiple lives like in a video game. Sun Sword. Hikari said pulling out the sword. Prism. Prism materialized beside Hikari, her radiant form pulsating with energy. I'm ready, master, she said, determination gleaming in her eyes. Together, Hikari and Prism charged at the demon, their combined powers blazing bright. The creature roared in defiance, its red eyes gleaming with malice as it prepared to unleash its fury once more. But Hikari and Prism fought with unparalleled skill and coordination, their attacks coming in swift and relentless waves. With each strike of the sun sword and burst of Prism's energy, they chipped away at the demon's strength. As the battle raged on, Hikari could feel his own energy waning, the strain of the fight taking its toll. But he refused to give in, drawing on every ounce of strength and determination within him. Finally, with one last mighty blow, Hikari and Prism delivered the finishing strike, plunging the sun sword deep into the demon's heart. With a deafening roar, the creature collapsed to the ground, its form dissipating into wisps of dark smoke. Breathing heavily, Hikari and Prism stood victorious, their chests heaving with exertion. The jungle around them fell silent, the threat of the demon finally vanquished. Good job, Prism, Hikari said, offering a grateful smile to his loyal companion. We make quite the team. Prism nodded, her ethereal form glowing with pride. Indeed, master. Together, we can overcome any challenge. With the battle won and the jungle once again at peace, Hikari and Prism prepared to continue their journey, ready to face whatever dangers lay ahead. For in the world of demon hunting, their courage and determination would always prevail. As then the demon got back up once as again. How many lives do you have Hikari said frustrated. Let's just do thus. As the demon rose once more, its eyes burning with fury, Hikari and Prism braced themselves for another round of combat. The air crackled with tension as they prepared to face their formidable foe. With a fierce battle cry, Hikari charged forward, his sun sword gleaming with radiant energy. Prism unleashed a barrage of dazzling light projectiles, each one aimed at weakening the demon's defenses. The demon countered with a barrage of dark energy, lashing out with tendrils of shadow that snaked through the air with deadly precision. Hikari narrowly dodged the attacks, his reflexes honed by years of training. Prism wove intricate patterns of light, creating barriers to deflect the demon's onslaught. Her energy crackled and surged with each movement, casting a brilliant glow across the battlefield. Despite their best efforts, the demon proved to be a relentless adversary, shrugging off their attacks with unnatural resilience. Its claws slashed through the air with terrifying speed, forcing Hikari and Prism to constantly evade its strikes. With each passing moment, the battle grew more intense, the clash of light and darkness echoing through the jungle. Hikari's muscles burned with exertion as he pushed himself to the limit, determined to overcome the creature before him. Prism's energy surged, amplifying Hikari's attacks with her own radiant power. Together, they unleashed a devastating combination, their coordinated assault driving the demon back with sheer force of will. But the demon refused to yield, its twisted form twisting and contorting as it summoned forth dark energies from the depths of the abyss. Hikari and Prism gritted their teeth, steeling themselves for the final showdown. With a thunderous roar, Hikari charged forward, his sun sword blazing with blinding light. Prism's energy enveloped him, amplifying his strength and speed as he launched himself at the demon with all his might. In a flurry of steel and magic, Hikari and Prism unleashed their most powerful attacks yet, their combined force overwhelming the demon's defenses. With a final, desperate cry, they struck the killing blow, shattering the creature's form and banishing it back to the darkness from whence it came. As the echoes of battle faded, Hikari and Prism stood victorious, their bodies battered but unbowed. The jungle around them fell silent once more, the only sound the soft rustle of leaves in the breeze. Breathing heavily, Hikari and Prism shared a weary smile, their bond stronger than ever after facing such a formidable challenge. With the demon defeated and the jungle restored to peace, they prepared to continue their journey, knowing that whatever trials lay ahead, they would face them together, as a team.